Durham smash 500 to take full control. Durham will be delighted with their first day of play at Emirates Riverside. Their final home game of the campaign started with an impressive bowling performance. Glamorgan skittled for 97 before the hosts had taken advantage. The score up to 223 for 3, the lead 126 with plenty of time for them to put on more. David Beddingham had started the day six runs shy of a 50, but wouldn't be able to make it. Out for 47 early in the day, bowled by a Hogan beauty. He'd have to wait to be the first batsman to 1,000 runs this season. Dixon's injury wouldn't prevent the pair putting on another entertaining partnership. 50 runs scored off 66 balls, and the score now headed towards 300. They brought that total up with another boundary, Durham disappearing into the distance, the lead now well over 200. Hogan ended Dixon's knock soon after, yorked on 46, thanks to another great nut. Eckersley, though, wouldn't be so unfortunate. He found his way to 50 with two off Hogan, the mark reached off 68 balls. Durham played their way through to lunch soon after, the score 332 for 5, the lead a massive 235. Eckersley wouldn't be able to build on his 50 after the break, well held by a diving Nick Selman off the bowling of Lucas Carey. Ben Rain fired his side to 350 with a boundary, another bonus point on the board for the hosts. But he'd lose his partner, Coughlin out to van der Hoekten. Selman's catch much more straightforward this time round. Travaskis joined Rain, and the pair wasted little time. Still an opportunity for another batting bonus point on offer, with 400 just on the horizon. And they got there in time. Rain found the single needed with an over left to spare, maximum batting points sealed to go with their haul of those earned with the ball. Rain had a personal milestone to celebrate too. 50 runs up off 78 balls, with a lovely drive off Douthwaite for four. He wasn't done there though. Salter got the treatment. Six runs from Rain's bats took the score past 450. Salter removed Rain late in the session, out for 74, looking for another boundary. But Glamorgan wouldn't be able to follow it with another wicket before T. The score at the break, 475 for 8, the lead now 22 shy of 400. With a 4 off Salter after the break, Chavaskis went to his 50 off 80 balls, the boundary his 7th. Potts took Salter on 2, and Durham quickly raced towards 500. A final Potts 4 took them to the mark, and Borthwick waved them in. No need for any more, their lead was 406, time for a go with the ball. It had been a ruthless performance from Durham with the bat, and probably had given them the luxury of not having to bat again for the rest of the match. Jones at the top of the order had put on 81, but every batsman had fired with five half centuries across their lineup. And there was more for them to enjoy after tea. David Lloyd the first to go, out for six to Potts. Selman followed with the score still shy of 40, caught behind for four off Coughlin. Byram and Rutherford would inch Glamorgan past 50 and would finish the day 71 for two, but still a long way behind in the game after that monstrous first innings from Durham. The plan tomorrow is simple, just bat as long as they can. For Durham, the target will be the eight remaining wickets for an innings win. Well, Liam, been a cracking couple of days from a Durham point of view. It has, yeah. We're, we're in a good position in this game, so come back tomorrow, put the hard yards in and, uh, yeah, hopefully take the next eight wickets. Uh, difficult conditions this morning after the rain and the gloominess and then David Beddingham going early might have had a few people worrying, but the, the rest of the players who came in did a job. I mean, five half centuries in the one innings as well, that's quite an unusual occurrence. Yeah, for someone not to get the three figures was maybe a little bit strange getting the getting the big score on the board. In terms of that first sort of hour, we knew they, they were going to come hard, they had to. Uh, it was going to be a little bit in the pitch with the with that early weather and they hopefully they were hoping to get a couple before that new ball came, but yeah, the lads, lads did well. What was the situation with Sean Dixon? Because he needed a runner, didn't he? He hurt, him, hurt his leg or his foot on about 12, was it his Achilles? Or uh, he did? I, th I think it's his calf, I'm not 100%. Right, but so yeah, I uh, think it's his calf. Okay, so you then had to come in, and uh, yourself and Ben Rain did a job after he'd gone and Ned Eckersley had gone, just carry that uh, score up and beyond 500. I mean, it's not often that Durham score 500 either. No, it's the first time I've been involved in 500 in a, in a first team game anyway, so yeah, it's good, good from the lads, really. Got a big score on the board, we've bowled really well on, on day one to get ourselves in this position, so yeah, just in a good place and got a over 400 league going, going into this uh, innings. Yeah, I was asked on air just a few minutes ago because I remember the last time five Durham players got half centuries in the one innings. I mean, it, it's not off the top of my head, but I do recall 
in 2016 the first five at the oval did on a, on a fairly flat track but it, it's unusual for something like that to happen here and I, I, I suppose you probably haven't got those statistics at hand it's something that probably wasn't discussed at the dressing group yeah I just I'll take your word for it there that's not something that I know obviously 2016 was before I'd played so yeah I'll take your word for it mm. And nice to get a game in the championship as well after you featured so heavily in the T20 and the One Day Cup. Yeah, absolutely. It was sort of first my first experience of this this year, which obviously is a good moment. I haven't played since sort of two years ago, which is exciting for me to to come in and try and put a sort of a hold on a position uh, in the first team. The lads have been going really well this year, uh, so yeah, exciting for me to come in. Uh, Poggers came back from injury, so that was really exciting to see him in ball well. Uh, yeah. Happy, happy as it can be, really. Yeah, I think it's only your 12th match, isn't it, in, the, in first class cricket? Yep, I think that's about right. Somewhere yeah. around there. Haven't played too much, but still only young, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully more to come. And uh, more to come in this game. You're in a really massively strong position. I think they're still 335 behind, two wickets down in their second innings. Um, definitely talk of a, a three day win. I mean, you have been in positions before where the pitch flattens out or whatnot, but surely Durham will be hoping they can wrap this up in three days. I've just got to go through the process really, keep building pressure. They're allowed to bat well, they've got some really good players in, in their dressing room and yeah, they're allowed to play well. We've just got to sit there for long enough and sort of, yeah, just create enough opportunities to, to win this game. Yeah, and, and patience sometimes comes into it, doesn't it? I mean, yesterday morning they were 63 for one, they had a, a decent partnership going and then a bit of patience and suddenly the wickets came your way again. Yeah, that's how the game goes really. Got off to a bit, little bit of a flyer really for what Riverside run rates usually are and then Pegged it back, a couple of wickets, and they were walking off with them. It was a 97, 97 all out, so couldn't couldn't have been uh, couldn't have been a better first day really. Mm. One thing that could happen tomorrow is uh, Chris Rushworth getting his 50th wicket of the season, which would be yet another landmark for him. He's been a talisman for Durham for such a long time now. Yeah, world class in my opinion. Uh, just keeps doing it year on year on year. Keeps breaking records. Turns up, balls the overs, puts the yards in. Just keeps taking polls, really. Just, uh, just one of the best bowlers in the country.
I, for the first five Durham batsmen, got at least a half century. Um, in fact, it might have been the first time since they did it against. Uh, it was the first time since 1994 when they did it against Derbyshire and Chesterfield and North Hans at Hartleyville. So there you go. Yeah, that's a uh, nice bit of consistency to take into the last uh, couple of matches as these two teams fight for positions 7 through till 12 on uh, Glamorgan's form. It's more likely to be closer to 12. He's mentioning um, Chris Rushworth as well there, saying he's world class and you know one of the best bowlers in the country. And we've had that discussion many, many times on this uh, on our commentaries over the years. Why he didn't play for England? We don't know. He passed a thousand wickets for all teams at Durham this year, from the academy to the twos to the first. When he took uh, six for forty-nine at Derby, he started this match with forty-six championship wickets this year. Took three for twenty-six in the first inning, so he's looking for one. 450 for the sixth time and uh, his best season was 2015 when I think he got 83 championship wickets and ended up with 100 in all four mats. How, how long do you reckon he's likely to go on? I mean I say he came into first class cricket relatively late so he might have a few years yet? Well he did um, he, and, and then he was released by Durham and then he came back a few years later but he's really looked after himself in recent seasons. He's Real fitness fanatic. He stopped drinking alcohol for a whole year, um, and then took a load of wickets on the back of that. So, third, how old is he now? 34, 35, 35 on July the 11th. He was so you could easily get another two or three years out of him. Well, if Hogan's still yeah. going well, at 40, Hogan, yeah, Darren Stevens, Stevens <laughs> <Yeah>. at uh, <laughs> 500. And yeah, it just—I mean, it obviously depends how much, um, you know, how long a contract or am I prepared to continue to keep giving him I think he's just signed a, a recent deal but um, the thing with Graham Onions when they weren't prepared to offer him a two year deal and he left at the end of the 2017 season to go to Lancashire because Lancashire were prepared to offer him a, a, a two year deal and Durham had only been prepared to give him a red ball deal mm. with incremental payments if, if he played any white ball stuff and he felt he still had a, a lot to offer the game and as it was I think Lancashire got two and a half years out of him but he, he'd had a number of issues with his back and pins in his spine and all kinds of things so there was that balancing act but he still went and did a cracking job for Lancashire um, but at the time I think one of the other issues for Durham was they were cash strapped, they'd just been relegated and they were trying in their eyes to get as much for the money as they could i.e. a bowler who could bowl in all formats and would probably get through a full season and the one thing with Chris Rush with is is very rarely been injured hardly missed the match to injury um, they, don't, they haven't played him in the 2020 the last couple of seasons but he did play in the one day cup and did very well so he's um, he was also in that uh, season uh, when, when was his best season just looking through his stats here uh, So he got 88, it was in 2015 in the championship, in 100 in all formats. 15 for 95 in the match against North Hans, which was a Durham record in 2014, <laughs> including taking 9 for 52 in the first innings. There were a couple of batsmen in that innings who were, were out twice for ducks in the space of about an hour. Because <laughs> um, he rattled through them so quickly. So here we go then. And uh, it is Matty Potts who will start the day from the Lumley end. Yeah, shall I take that over so you can Go have Mr then. Rushworth? Yeah. That probably makes sense, doesn't it? Presumably Mr Rushworth will be opening up at uh, this Finkel end. It's uh, Potts then to bowl to Eddie Byram. It's 71 for two. Three slips. Glorious sunshine. Best weather we've had of the match so far. A bit of early morning moisture still around, maybe. There's Potts Bowls outside off stump. No shot played by Byron through to Eckersley. Two left-handers at the moment, so not too much changing round. What, are you, um, taken. what are you thinking in your water? It's going to go two ways, isn't it? They're going to actually they're going to grind out some runs, or they could well be rattled off pretty quickly. Be disappointed if. Uh, no one got a score in this innings, mm. given their better batting conditions. Wicket may have flattened out. Pots in, bowls, and Byram.
pushes it forward rather tentatively. Didn't know much about where it was uh, going, but it was perfectly safe as it rolled out on the on the leg side. I'd be pleasantly surprised if uh, we were back here this time tomorrow. What about half three this afternoon? Hmm, that might be about it. <laughs> you reckon? But uh, just depends on morale, really, yeah. and uh, and technique to a certain extent, obviously. As uh, Potts is in to bowl to Byram, who defends it out on the offside. I mean, Durham showed with the scores down the order that you were talking about that uh, it's a, a wicket even perfectly capable of survival yeah. and, and prospering on if you uh, they have they you get in. And they have flattened out here this year as well. So, but uh, this is only day three, of course. But yeah. it just needs one decent partnership to get going, and then yeah, it's it's a question of getting that within the next couple of wickets and uh, giving everyone else a, a lift mentally. Potts is in to bowl to Byram, allowed to go through outside off stump. Byram obviously very keen to make an, an early impression over these next couple of weeks and uh, give himself a decent chance of starting next season in the in the side. So signing that came uh, slightly out of the blue. Hadn't been on the rumour mill beforehand. 71 for 2, Glamorgan. As Potts is in to bowl to Byram, who's beaten <laughs> by that one. Pushing a forward. A little bit of movement. Just enough to beat the bat. Just too much to uh, take the edge. So a good start from Potts. Finding line and length. In a way that not all Glamorgan's bowlers did yesterday. There was too much loose stuff. And uh, you wonder whether Rory Smith will be back in contention for the next match after his injury problems. As uh, that last ball moves back in, actually, after it had been uh, allowed to go through outside off stump by Byram. Got a beautiful view of it. Went far, uh, reasonably far away from off stump, but then came back in and uh, keeper Eckersley ended up taking it directly behind the stump. So we start the day, day three, here on BBC Sport Online from BBC Radio Newcastle, BBC Sport Wales, with uh, a maiden over Glamorgan Remain on 71 for two as Chris Rushworth resumes his pursuit of that 50th wicket of the season. He finished off bowling from the Finkel end last night, so it was the turn of the next bowler from the Lumley end this morning, which is normally his favourite end, so he's bowling today from the Finkel end again, Apache war paint across his cheeks and his nose and um, he's the, he became the leading wicket taker for Durham this year as well, he's just broken all kinds of records 750 in all formats this season came up as well gone ahead of uh, Gray Onions who finished with 527 first class wickets for Durham and Simon Brown who finished with 518 Rutherford's on strike, rush with round of the wicket, balls to the Kiwi and it squirts off down towards third man, edge of the bat job, Lees is chasing it towards the top end of the castle stand and they get two runs. He was released by Durham in 2006 and ended up selling satellite systems for a while and working in a call centre. Re-signed in 2010, PCA player of the year in 2015. Has he ever said, you know, talked about why he, he thought he was released and then managed to recapture that form? Or it may be improved on his previous form? Well, I tell you, the man to ask that about will be Ash Thorpe later on, mm -hmm. who will be joining us, because Ash was his skipper at Sunderland Cricket Club. Ah. And uh, as Rushworth comes round the wicket here and balls, this is defended, and I think Ash will... You know, Chris will probably tell you. I think once he joined Durham as a professional player, he thought that was it. Uh. And then all the uh, the stuff that needed to come with the job, i.e., the fitness and everything else, wasn't part of his uh, philosophy back in those days. And and then after two or three years in the North East Premier League, he uh, realised there was still an opportunity, and he managed to get himself back on track. Rutherford's on 34. And he turns this to Jones at square leg. Absolutely gorgeous day, this. I mean, if you get here in 
in time for a day's cricket like this particularly when we know into September how many more nice days are we going to have mm. whole ground bathed in sunshine not a breath of wind either blue skies I think the suggestion is it could get to about 24 here today it's going to come over the wicket now to the left hander this is punched out through mid wicket collected by Potts one run I was watching the highlights of the tour of Britain last night they've come up through uh, Cornwall for the first time and then into Devon today they're in Wales mm. so they're going from Clandalo to the National Botanic Garden Centre it's not very far is it <laughs> well, it's a thought. team time trial uh. so it's a short fast time trial but I saw pictures of that National Botanic Garden Centre a while ago and what a beautiful looking place that is very nice Rush within again and balls. This is played to the cover area this time. No run there. Yeah, it'd be a good day for visiting today. So where uh, the Carrig Kennan Castle or is it Chenin? Do you say Kennan? Carrig Kennan. Carrig Kennan. So where is that then? Just north of Clanethley. Clanethley, Carnarvon, Clandido, that sort of area. So then you got the big stage tomorrow through the mountains up in the Oof, north. That's a that's a way. Last ball of the over. Rutherford defends on a length and it's played back to the bowler. End of the over. When we were in um, when we were in Mid Wales two or three years ago, it was um, February half term, and we we're in this little village called Abbey Come Here, where the where there used to be an abbey which was destroyed. And we took the girls one day through the Elan Valley and we got up onto the top of the Cambrian Mountains and found the only bit of snow that there was <laughs> they, they had their sledges in the car and they were over the moon this strip of snow was probably about 30 yards long if you were lucky but it was such a clear day you could see all the way north up to um, Snowdonia mm. and then all the way down towards the uh, the Brecon Beacons yeah. yeah here we are up with uh, Potts starting a new over to bowl to Rutherford on 36 and a wristy turn down to fine leg they go through for a single as the sun-hatted Rushworth does the fielding Eddie Baton on Twitter bemoaning red ball cricket being shoved in April and September difficult to provide a four-day deck well this has been a good one to be fair many your sense well obviously it is uh, for financial factors that the uh, county championship is by and large, uh, it's been that way for years. Pressed every to either year side. They complain about it. It's every been year. that way for yeah. years and years and years. As, uh, that's defended by Byram, but I, I suspect that this year that uh, England's batting headaches in the in the Test match might actually uh, uh, provide a, a bit of impetus to put a bit more red ball cricket in the middle of the season next year. Yeah. But that'll have a an it adverse effect on the T20 blast if that starts in that early May was or whatever. Was it Lords where they fell apart? Was the first? Where was the first test? They've fallen apart several times, didn't they? Now, <laughs> and none of hardly any of them have played any red ball no. for months, have they? No. As uh, Byram defending that one back down the pitch, but um, having said that, I think uh, Virat Kohli had not played any matches with well, a red ball for more. about nine years, apart from some trial game. Yeah, but well, the, the, yeah, the well they played a game here, didn't they? Don't Kohli played there, did he? I wasn't here, yeah. but um, it was the four India squad were here for a fortnight. Oh, yeah. But what I was going to say is they had played a test game in England more recently than England had, because <laughs> they played the test final against New yeah. Zealand, didn't they? Mm -hmm. In Southampton. Allowed yeah. to go through that one by uh, Byram, shouldering arms outside off stump. Uh, also. On Twitter, Fury Animal says, has a great day watching the seconds. Uh, yeah, Nick Morgan seconds. They're just over 300 against Yorkshire. Durham seconds also in action at uh, Hove Academy ground against Sussex. Give you some scores from those as they develop. Potts charging towards us. Balls to Byram. Uzanars from behind the stumps. I think he played deliberately inside the line that time. 
75 for two. It remains four runs added this morning, all of them to Rutherford. Byron will be well, not nervous, but uh, keen to get going this morning. So, a relatively sedate 17. Rutherford exuding an air of unflappability, hopefully from the Welsh point of view. As Potts bowls, and uh, again, past the edge, applause from the home crowd for another maiden over delivered by Maddy Potts, and it's 75 for two. The deficit is 331. Brian Halford, who's a cricket wider, mm. uh, writer who's followed Warwick for a long, long time and did some of the commentaries with us on the BBC yep. two or three years ago, he's just tweeted. <laughs> Bearing in mind Keith Parker used to play for Warwickshire, he said, I like Keith Parker very much as both a cricketer and a bloke, but he's starting to get on me nerves now. <laughs> so I thought, what's <laughs> going on there? <laughs> so Keith Parker for Hampshire's got 51 against his former team, still batting. And he probably got a boatload of wickets as well, didn't he? <laughs> As Rushworth comes in here looking for that 50th wicket, and that's not going to be from that delivery because that's a half volley which has been dispatched to the boundary past mid off to the County Durham stand. Yeah, he was uh, with Rochdale as a footballer, wasn't he? Was he with Walsall for a period as well? Or something like that? Um, oh, aye. Well, he was Durham's nemesis. He took about 50 wickets in the championship against Durham in about four seasons. <laughs> Ball eventually being returned by Ben Rain, wearing a similar hat to Chris Rushworth, when they're not bowling, that is. In comes Rushworth. Oh, nearly edged. They all thought that was the one in the slip cordon. They all went up, but they just didn't get the nibble. Barker, by the way, with the ball, took five for 43 <laughs> as well, so... <laughs> <laughs> yes. Player Pompey says rather understatedly, there seems to be a major problem with our batting. Clive Shepherd in uh, disgruntled mode says the end of county cricket stick to limited overs. Hmm. <laughs> I don't think so yet. Well if it's on forty is rush with balls. And this is played wide of the slip corner and down to the vacant third man area. Yes, he's a, seems efficient to Rutherford, doesn't he? The previous ball was dispatched through the covers with minimum fuss, and that one was just gently angled away, taking advantage of the lack of third man, but with 300-odd runs in the bank, Durham can afford to eschew the third man. Even Mr Bevan might agree with that. Mm. <laughs> Rutherford, 32 years, 16 tests for New Zealand, scored 171 on his test debut against England in Dunedin right. in 2013. Hasn't played a test match since he played Sri Lanka in 2015, though. This is his 113th first-class game, and he's now gone past 6,900 runs. Let's rush with balls again, and this is played off the back foot and away through the covers for four. Well, this is not part of the... Uh, the script, is it? Well, as I say, they've got a few to play with. I don't think they'll be hiking Rushworth off in a hurry. I'm sure he knows where he is in terms of uh, straying off line and length, and he's already beaten the bat in this over, so no doubt he'll keep probing away. This will be his 51st time that he's got past 50 in a first class match as Rushworth bowls and then is left alone oh and it's missed by the keeper and it comes off his finger ends and, uh, painful yeah put one down last night didn't he we, mm. we, we didn't hear anything we didn't hear a click on the, the headphones but his demeanour afterwards he was down on his knees staring at the floor the problem with Ned Eckersley is he's been in and out as the wicket keeper in recent months he's been Wicket keeper in the championship, and then for some T20 games, then not, and then for in the One Day Cup, it's been um, Cameron Bancroft. So rush within to Rutherford, played back to him by the batsman. Rutherford throws it over the batsman's shoulders uh, to the keeper end of the over. 
If you want to get in touch, we are cricket at yahoo.co.uk or at Marty Cricket on Twitter or at Nick Webber 2017. 2017. Brackets, all my financial woes are now over. Close brackets. <laughs> if only they had been. Dash open new brackets. No, they're not. Close brackets. Or it's uh, at Ed Bevan Cricket. Yeah, I can't have cricket in my handle because I do rugby as well. Mm. Which uh, hopefully I shall be resuming on behalf of BBC Sport Wales and BBC Radio Wales in, in a few weeks' time if selected. As the players always say if selected as uh, Potts bowls and Byram in behind that one playing it out on the offside still hasn't scored a run this morning Saturn admired Rutherford's boundaries from the other end when I used to do the um, the football commentaries it used to amaze me the amount of times we'd be offered particular players for interviews and you'd build a whole pre-match show around them and then they, <laughs> they wouldn't play there is that <laughs> yeah there is that. It's uh, 87 for two, Glamorgan. 16 runs out of this morning as uh, Rutherford has them all. And Byram plays another dot ball out. Yes, the trick there, I suppose, is to um, play them play the interview at the start of the Saturday afternoon sports show. And um, yeah. Oh, it's a report at the ground. Team news just in. Yes, uh, he hasn't, he's not playing. Never mind. We've, play, we've used the three minute in an interview. And uh, I don't find that hopefully too often in rugby these days. As that's outside off stump, a comfortable leave this time for Byram. I spent many a month every Thursday going to Newcastle Falcons to do the pre match interviews, but mm. never saw them play. Oh, cool. Because uh, yeah. our rugby commentator at the time, Kevin Williams, had another job, so I used to go up and he would tell me what had happened the previous match. I would make copious notes, do a bit of research, and then go up and do the interviews. And then, oh, it's 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 a unenviable task, though, isn't it? Doing these uh, press conferences from games you don't usually cover. Yeah. As uh, that's punched out to backward point by Byron, but still no run. As a scrambling stop by Michael Jones in that backward point position. Matthew's emailed. He says, Morning from a very sunny Shaftesbury in Dorset. Coverage yesterday was brilliant, as ever. I've got a week off work this week, so let's hope Durham can wrap this up today. Safe journey to your co commentators when the game is over. Thank you. Mr. Bevan is uh, heading off uh, sometime lunchtime ish. After he's uh, had his lunch, I would imagine. Potts is in to bowl round the wicket to Byron. It's uh, short of a length, and Byron just sways back and lets it go past at uh, chest height through to keeper Eckersley. Paul says, greetings from a sun-kissed, sizzling back garden in Costa del Hartlepool. Excellent performance by the Durham boys as the match stands, hoping for a Durham victory. Have fun. We got up just before seven this morning, op opened the curtains, and the sun was glistening on the river, and it was like a mirror. And then there was this huge black thing right outside our back door. I was thinking, what's that? Massive. P Potts is in to ball to Byram, who plays it out to mid on. And a third maiden over, delivered by Potts to Byram in succession. And uh, anyway, I looked at it. It was about 15 yards from our back door, the biggest seal I have ever seen in the river. Normally, you get well. little harbour porpoises and little harbour seals but this thing was massive must have eaten a lot of fish in recent weeks <laughs> beautiful day on the river today there's a fire engine just milling around outside the crowd as long as it's not heading our way yeah. second 11's then done 2.52 all out with uh, McIntosh getting nearly half of them 120 and George Drizal 58 Sussex in reply, 67 for two. Rushworth now, Rutherford again. Rutherford on 48. Rushworth round the wicket from the Finkel end. And that's gone through to... Well, it's gone back to him. Didn't see where the ball had yeah. gone there because it was obscured by Ian Blackwell, the Just umpire. At Newport, Glamorgan seconds... Uh, 3.21 for nine against Yorkshire, Tom Bevan, 67. Callum Taylor 59, Ticket Phillips 32, not out. 
Rushworth back to his mark. He's right in front of us. We're looking down the barrel of the gun. Round the wicket again to the left-hander. That's gone down the leg side and it bounces out the keeper's hands. Buys of some description will be signalled. And it is a buy. Ian Blackwell with the signal. So having a chat with him last night after the day's play in Blackwell. You're keeping yourself busy and <laughs> just like the rest of us. You said I've never stopped for weeks. <laughs> so uh, 50 runs the partnership just coming up there as well for these two. That's uh, the first first step of progress really for Glamorgan. Baller comes in again. Mm. And, uh, Byron watches it go by. It went skidding along the floor to the mm. keeper, didn't it? 54 partnership for the second wicket in the first innings, which is remarkable really, out of a a total of 97, you have a 54 partnership, but uh, it was quite the collapse which set the tone for the next day and two thirds. 118 balls, these two have been together, so the uh, partnership began after 9.5 overs when Selman was out for four last night. Byram on, strikers rush with balls. He's pushed away one handed to short mid wicket. Whoop. That's quite loud, isn't it? Well, that's working anyway. We're still we're going out. Yes. We're broadcasting somewhere. That's for sure via the uh, club websites and uh, the BBC Sport Online. It's a score eighty-eight for two. Rushworth bowls playing a miss from Byram. He's gone forward to try and drive and. The ball's left him beyond the off stump. <laughs> Looking at the uh, cricket scores on the BBC page today, top of the top of the list. Nepal against Papua New yeah, Guinea. Yeah. <laughs> Papua, Papua New, New Guinea, Guinea hundred and thirty four or something. Hundred and thirty four all out. Yeah. Nepal forty two without uh, loss. Oh, they need Garrett Jones back. Sell out that one. Need Garrett Jones back in the Papua New Guinea ranks. Yeah. Rush with the Byram again. And that's played back along the floor to the bowler. And he's just there. Uh, not getting the nibble and the luck he, ne he needs here, Chris Rushworth. And walks away, head bowed. Sure, we'll see another over or two from him, though, this morning before they might think of something else. Going Jones, the uh, Welsh. Australian born in Papua New Guinea, England wicket keeper. Yeah. Played for Papua New Guinea. Late in his uh, career, where he was born. I think I saw him get a century at Headingley against New Zealand in a test match a few years back. <coughs> Worked with him a couple of years back, and um, he was delighted to have been ID'd for buying alcohol at the age of 38. <laughs> yeah. Potts bounds in. Balls to Rutherford. Again, that whip of the wrist sends the ball backward of square on the leg side. Rushworth jogs round in front of the scoreboard and that is Hamish Rutherford's half century his first in first class cricket for Glamorgan to add to four in the one day cup it's come off 86 balls in a tad over two hours and he's struck seven boundaries and uh, he'll be wanting to dig in and turn that into a first century for Glamorgan Century against Glamorgan in the last game of uh, last season. T20 blast. Potts bowls. Outside off stump. No shot played. And uh, also took a century off Glamorgan in the championship for uh, Derbyshire at Chesterfield. One of those many Glamorgan matches in Derbyshire affected by poor weather. And uh, that one was to save a draw. Five hour century in wind swept, gale swept Chesterfield that year. 90 for two as Potts bowls. Rutherford drives straight back to the bowler. No run. Rutherford wanders down the track and has the obligatory suspicious prod at a uh, point not particularly near where that ball lands. 
Adds a few more prods to various parts of the wicket for good measure. 51st time he's got there. Three slips still. So there are some gaps in the field if he can find them. He drives, doesn't find a gap on that occasion as he's uh, rather scuffed it straight to Travaskis at cover and there's no run. 90 for two. It remains. So it could well be that the uh, an early result is at Chelmsford where Gloucestershire are 135 for eight in their second innings. Series of low scores on their cards. 1-1-0-0 one, one, nought, nought in the middle order. As the next delivery is chopped by Rutherford down into the gully, fielded by Jones, and there's no run. And a reminder that Gloucestershire are the visitors to Cardiff on Sunday with a 10.30 start. Northampton, which is where Durham are off next. Well, Surrey are in a fairly strong position there. They're 117 for five in their second innings, but that's a lead of 198 runs. So that might be uh, a decent contest at Northampton today. As Potts balls. Rutherford hits that one firmly through mid-wicket and will pick up four runs. He's beaten mid-wicket and mid-on. And it's uh, running away up towards Lumley Castle. 94 for two. Rutherford has all the runs this morning. He's moved from 32 to 54. All the runs off the bat, that is, because there's been uh, a bye as well. Byram has 17 not out still. Hasn't scored in nearly half an hour. That's a man after my own heart. <laughs> I do have a certain uh, relish in uh, admiring gritty strokeless batting. 94 for two. Deficit is 312 for Glamorgan here on BBC Sport Online with Martin Emerson. Myself, Nick Webb, and Edward Bevan will be uh, in the attack in an over or two. Uh, get through uh, Martin's 11 o'clock bulletin first, maybe. Do tell me to shut up if you hear the uh, cue. Haven't heard anything yet. Right, can Chris Rushworth get this wicket? Here he comes from the Finkel end. Byram is on strike on 17 as Rushworth bowls. That's played out into the covers to Travaskis. No run. Seventy balls he's faced now, Byram. But only nine against Chris Rushworth. Sorry, seven. Sorry, he's got eight runs against Chris Rush with from 17 balls. Rush with in again. Ball played to Travaskis once more in the covers. Just bobbles out on that offside. Rutherford has faced 46 deliveries from Rush with and scored 30 from him. Plenty of noise out there. <laughs> Chatting nonsense as usual. As all cricketers do. 94 for two here on the BBC. Rush with balls. That's left. It goes through to the keeper. Oh, there we are. Did you get a shot there, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> all right, the news has appeared in areas. Kept you awake, if nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of looked like you'd been tasered next to me there. <laughs> Rush within again, balls flicked away, one handed down towards the fine leg area. Now, has that come off the bat or the pad? It's come off the pad, it's a bye, your leg bye. Yeah, these uh, headphones do tend to be fairly uh, sensitive. So, just got it in the background so I can shut up at the appropriate time. As the uh, 
perspiring Rushworth wanders back towards us. Rutherford flicking a bit of uh, imaginary grit off the pitch. Rutherford defends this one from Rushworth. Do you think we'll get an ironic cheer when Byram gets off the mark? Do you think the crowd will notice that he hasn't scored this morning? Not off the mark, but off the mark for the day. Has he faced that many deliveries today? Faced a fair few off parts. It's a bat and pad job. And the ball loops away towards point. End of the over. Will we see Rushworth take a breather now? That's 13 overs from him, or will he try his hand one more time? Here's Scott Borthwick coming up to tap him on the shoulder, is he or not? No, he's not. No. He's coming up there. One more, I would have thought. Yeah. Are we going to get a change at the other? Lumley end. Paul Coglin is uh, wandering over towards the vicinity and looking interested. 24 overs they'd faced, hadn't they, by last night? Yes. 71 for two overnight. Update now. Well, we've seen a half century this morning for Hamish Rutherford. The 51st time he's done that in first class cricket in New Zealand, now on 54. He got there in 86 balls and included seven fours. He's also put on a 50 partnership with Eddie Byram. Now, Byram, by last night, was on 17 runs and uh, had faced 46 balls. He has yet to get off the mark today, so he's still on 17 and he's now faced 73. We're also waiting for Chris Rushworth to see if he can get his 50th wicket of the season in the county. Championship. If he manages that, it'll be for the sixth time. But Glamorgan at the moment are 95 for two and they trail Durham by 311. Beautiful sunny day here in Chesney Street. Commentary on the BBC website and the sports app. Remains that way as uh, Byram allows one to go through from Coglin outside off stump. 74 balls. Coglin in. Balls. Byron blocks it back down the wicket to the tall bowler. So when I say 46 balls he'd faced last night, so now 74 now, uh, is it? 75 and 75, counting. yeah. So 21 balls this morning without a run. That's patience. 29, I think. 20, uh, 40, 46 to 75. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coglin, end to bowl to Byram who defends it back down the wicket. Well, just keep that doing that for two days. Don't care with this seven, still 17 not out to 5.30 on Wednesday. The last time Durham got a, a big score like this here was against Leicestershire a couple of years ago, and um, Leicestershire just batted out the final day and a half for a draw. Conklin bowls again, allowed to go through outside off stump. They used the heavy roller and the pitch just deadened. Uh, and I remember an attempted bouncer, Mark Cosgrove, was batting. And he, All right. he just headed it. <laughs> <laughs> the ball just sat up and he just headed it away. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Yeah, entertaining fellow, Mark Cosgrove. He was a great uh, fan's favourite at uh, Glamorgan. Did really well in his uh, first spell with the club. As, uh, that's down leg side. Byram can't get anything on it. Through to Eckersley. Did come back then and play a season of just T20 cricket when he never really got much uh, momentum going. He was so much better when he was playing in, in all formats. Talking about the England uh, squad earlier, there'll be an announcement at midday for the next test. All right, that early. Coglin bowls and oh, I thought that was a run then. Has Byron punched it out into the covers? But there's a diving stop. It is another maiden over, seed off by Eddie Byron, Glamorgan's strokeless hero, 
Coughlin's bowled five overs, one for five. Durham, uh, 95, uh, Glamorgan, 95 for two. Uh, still, uh, 300 and, oof, it's disappeared off the board. 311 behind Durham, and uh, Martin Emerson will be joined by Edward Bevan. We'll get some work out of Edward before he hits the motorway. And uh, Martin will continue as uh, Rushworth will have another over. Yeah, that's right. Rain, uh, rain, rain he's, he's off. Oh, I better get cracking then, start doing some work. Rain, both uh, shaved heads. Rain and Rushworth. Here's Rain then, his first ball of the morning. He's round the wicket to Rutherford and bowls to him. And uh, it's uh, open face, but a good stop in the gully. He, uh, he does play a lot of those uh, glides down to third man and as there isn't a third man he's benefited by getting some boundaries what a glorious morning to, what a glorious area to be in a day like this two slips now and a gully three on the offside saving one a mid on a square leg and a fine leg as in comes Rain bowled off the back foot. This is punched into the covers, and uh, there is no run. I wonder if they're going to switch ends with Rushworth because he's only bowled four overs this morning. Yeah. So his figures last night at the close of play: none for 27 from nine, two maidens, and his uh, figures now: none for 42 from 13, four maidens. Rain turns at this end of Finkel End and comes in past the umpire. Bowls and this is driven back down the pit. And there is no run. Rain, two wickets, uh, three wickets in the first innings. It's Glamorgan. Uh, now just uh, two runs short of the total they scored, but they have eight wickets in hand. And putting up a bit of a fight here. Ben Rain passes umpire Blackwell and bowls again, and this is cut away on the offside, and that's four runs backward of square, far too wide for the man to stop. He's um, selective in his shots this morning. Anything offline, he's punished and defended accordingly when the need the need has been. So. Scoring very quickly is uh, is Rutherford, where his partner has not scored a run this morning. 58 to the New Zealander. Isaac Lamorgan move on to 99 for two. In comes Rain, bowls, brings Rutherford forward, pushes it uh, to short extra cover, and again there's no run. Smattering of uh, spectators, but uh, just don't realize how many people are in the ground. It's a, a very big ground, it's a, a lovely arena. Everything you need is here, basically. Even a little pub downstairs under the dressing rooms. Ben Rain is in again, bows to Rutherford. That's uh, Wide the off stump, but does nip back after it had passed the stumps. That's the end of the over. Glamorgan a 99 for two, and uh, no wickets have fallen in this uh, opening 40 45 minutes or so. It will be Coglin to continue, so Rushworth is, uh, is having a break. Byram looking for his first run of the morning. He's faced 39 balls, I think, isn't he? We're about 46, no, 33. Coglin bowling to him. Oh, he's got him. 34 Good. balls today, didn't get a run, and he's played on to Coglin, and he's gone for 17. 
And that is the end of the partnership on 61, and his stumps are a bit of a mess. Yep, he was looking to play that square on the offside, got an inside edge and bang into the stumps. And uh, Byron, as you say, has gone for... He did a good job there for 17. He did a, a useful job and just staying with Rutherford, but uh, he obviously wanted to get off the mark playing on his mind. So he departs for 17 now, and uh, Glamorgan lose their first wicket of the morning, 99 for three. Thick edge there. Looking to cut. First time he looked like he was trying to play a scoring shot on the day, really, wasn't it? Yeah, he's hit a few into the covers, but they've been uh, fielded straight at the fielder. As we, I know, read the two left-hand combina combination as uh, Kieran Carlson strides to the crease. Byram, 80 balls in all for his 17. What did I say he'd face last night? 36? 46. 46. 46. Right. So 34 today. So Cotton gets his uh, second wicket, having dismissed uh, Salmon last night. And to me, Martin, he's been the best bowler. I think he's been the, the threat in the side. Because he's got such a, he comes down from such a height. He must be what six four, six five. In play phase, as he's six three, but I suspect he's a bit more than that. We look a very useful second row or number eight in a rugby field. Kieran Carlson then, right-handed of course, will take guard, and uh, the slip cordon is reinforced. Three slips now. Three slips for the new batsman. Well, Coglin got a wicket last night with his fourth ball. He's got a wicket with his first ball today. Got four for 11 in the first innings. So six in the match now. Kieran Carlson holds the key, is the headline. As uh, Coglin bowls, Carlson digs out a ball full length on middle and leg and plays it past square leg for one. He's off the mark. Wasn't he the top scorer in the one day cup final? Really took the game away from Durham with the bat when he made 82. Yeah. Applause there for the 100 coming up for Glamorgan. 100 for 3. Yeah, he played extremely well, didn't he? But, uh, he's very positive in that uh, cup final. Got 170 not out earlier on against Lancashire. And I think it's third now, but things change by the day, of course. Third to uh, highest. Yeah, he's been third. He was third going into this round of matches. Bellingham and Libby. Yeah. And he's quite a way off them as well, to be honest. Yeah. Coglin now to Rutherford. That's left alone. So he came into this game and he had 811 runs. Beddingham had 945 and Libby 951. So what did Carlson get in the first inning? 17, was it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, he's got 828, 829 now. So he's still a long way off. He's about 170 off, something like that. This is defended by Rutherford off Coglin. Most people sitting around the sides and the far end because the sun is behind us. And uh, they're having the benefit of this uh, morning sunshine. 24 here, and most of the country are touching 30, which is quite extraordinary this time of year. Coglan to Rutherford, who drives at a half only outside of off stump, but only finds short extra cover now. And uh, Travaskis eventually picks it up. A bit of a hot potato. In the 2015 season, Chris Rushworth took 88 wickets. Five of those were against Durham Uni, so the rest, 83, was in the championship. 
This is cut by Rutherford to point, stopped by Jones. That's been his, uh, that was his most successful season. I'm sure we'll see him again at some point with a ball in hand in the not too distant future. Well, he needn't worry too much because he's got another two games to play. Well, he's in a battle with Luke Fletcher, isn't he? Trying to finish as the leading wicket taker in the country. Big Fletch. Yeah. <coughs> Our colleague Dave Bracegirdle will be you know about keeping his fingers crossed that Fletch does finish as the leading wicket taker in the country because that might help some book, book sales. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll be seeing Brace at the Cricket Writers Dinner in London on October the 5th and I wonder who may be up for Player of the Year by then. I think David Beddingham will be in the the offing. Could uh, Fletcher and Rushworth be there as well? Here's Ben Rain to start another over. Ball into the right-handed Carlson. Balls to him and Carlson is beaten with a good delivery. Which pitched, kept its line and uh, went through to wicketkeeper Eckersley. Spoke to Matthew Maynard last night and... Uh, he was saying he felt this was an excellent pitch. And, uh, James Franklin, coach here at Durham, said the best that uh, they've had the, this year. Rather a shame there won't be any more cricket here. Yeah, it is. Uh... It's uh, rain again and bowls, and uh, this time it's driven nicely through the covers. It's going to be a, a chase. There's uh, certainly two, and I think it's certainly going to be three, if not four. No, it's pulled in. Just a couple of metres inside, but it's a comfortable three runs as uh, Carlson is immediately on to the attack, on the attack as is his want. And uh, moves Glamorgan now on to 103-4-3 with uh, Rutherford leading the way. Tony, to the ground staff yesterday, they've got a couple of women's games back end of this week and over the weekend and that's it for them for this year here yeah. so they're already into winter maintenance by the end of this week there was a lot of work to do last year because they dug up the whole square and relayed it and then there were worries that it wouldn't bed in in time because of all the cold weather we had in it was a very cold spring Rain is going round the wicket to, to Rutherford and the button pad there you might have heard in our effects microphone as he pushed forward. Rain certainly getting some movement, uh, mainly off the pitch here, and keeping and containing the batsman, keeping a good length, good line. If you made out away to our left, is uh, going to take someone into the nets away to our right. Waiting for this over to finish. I think it might be David Lloyd. In comes Rain, bowls again, Rutherford is forward, plays it uh, into the covers, and uh, there's no run. Yeah, I was due to return this morning, but uh, with this weather, I thought, yes, it's going to be lunchtime, which I hope I will not be uh, into rush hour traffic and trying to work it. But thanks to Martin here, yeah, I'm going to miss the uh, Sheffield Nottingham and go down the M18. Well, you will get the Nottingham stretch, but... Yeah. In comes the next ball. Clipped away to mid-wicket and uh, smartly fielded there. What I have found in just the last three or four years is the... Um, at one time, if it was late afternoon passing Ferry Bridge where the three lanes of the motorway go into two, yeah. you would expect to hit a queue. But these days, early afternoon and on a Friday, late morning... So Friday all day. Yeah. It is down with us on, on a Friday in the yeah. summer. It's hopeless. Ben Rain is over the wicket and bowls a Rutherford and Rutherford has to adjust at the last moment and pushes it away back out of square on the offside. That's the end of the over. Glen Morgan, I'm now one hundred and three for three. Just try trying to identify Nick who uh, the Glamorgan coach has got with him. David Lloyd, I don't know. Lloyd's a bit slighter than not Lloyd. Might be Byram. We shall try and identify him. He's going to have a bit of practice. And uh, 
We aren't armed with the probably the dog catcher. We hurl it down at him. Yeah, he's got the mitt there, ready for a, a little session. Coglin to Carlson from the lovely end. Carlson late to that one, and it comes off the bottom corner of the bat and shoots out towards point. He was nearly yorked. I think your issue today, Ed, will be the um, getting round Birmingham probably. If you don't set off well, until early afternoon, you're going to hit the yeah, it, traffic round there. I hit it coming back. Well, I didn't hit it, which I thought it was when I came back from uh, Derby. We didn't bowl a ball in the morning, so we went at lunchtime, and I didn't hit it then. So Ooh. that's a big shout. That's a big inside shout. Inside edge, inside edge from Carlson facing that one from. Coglin, Coglin's causing a few problems here, isn't he, with his extra bit of height and pace? This is it, that's why I, I mentioned I, yeah. I thought he's bowled as, as well as anybody in this game. Just managed to get a bit of bat on that there. Showing aggressive instinct again. Here's Carlson. Coglin in. Carlson firmly behind that one and pushes it back to the bowler. But move at the last moment into a just at the last moment there, so he's getting late movement. Okay, that came off the splice of the bat looking at it on the camera there and it looped back towards Coglin, which wasn't obvious from our angle because the way Carlson's standing and we're right behind him, as he played that ball, I couldn't see the track of it at all because his body was blocking the line. And the feed's a few seconds behind our commentary, so Coglin wants more balls. This goes off down towards Long leg for one, oh, and a misfield. They have Alfie Taylor, yeah. is it? The they, twelfth man. They didn't. They do say run the first one hard. If they hadn't ambled that, you don't often expect one to misfield in such a lovely outfield as this. But if they kept an eye on it, they would have easily got two. It's a bit of spin on it, wasn't it? Is that the numberless man, the twelfth man? Yeah. Well, um, I wrote it down. Is it was it Alfie Taylor, Taylor or somebody? Did we say? Taylor Clark. Alfie Taylor Clark. He was fielding because Sean Dixon hurt his leg. Coglin to Rutherford. Rutherford turns this round the corner to fine leg. To uh, Taylor Clark once again. Sun continues to shine here in Chester Street. It is a gorgeous day. I wish we were outside on deck chairs right now. Problem with this room is it uh, faces north so we never get the sun on us until late evening on a, yes. a T20 day in the past in the uh, portable cabin at the far end of the ground it was just used to be like being on the set of Tenko as uh, Carlson defends this one and a day like this would melt in there and the problem was we were never far off the corner of the square really and there were little air window vents I don't know if you remember this I do very you could, well you could open them but they would deflect the the sun so back towards the square yeah. so then the batsmen would co complain that uh, it was putting them off so we had to close the windows try and leave a door open but in inevitably the door would close as well and it used to get rather hot and s sticky in there I remember once or twice we had to take care uh, well, didn't have to but we went outside and uh, we didn't used to do ball by ball then in no. the States. We just would go outside and uh, and do it in there because it was, you had the press in as well. Yeah. It was stifling hot. Here's Ben Rain then to start another over. Bowls to the left handed Rutherford who gets down on that as it comes back in from the outside the off stump and plays defensively. They built this media centre about seven or eight years ago and initially they had everybody in this room and they had this big auditorium upstairs and like, why, why is everyone in the radio room and they crammed us all in here for a while and then after a while the written press moved upstairs a few months later but the portable cabin with all of its uh, phone lines in it and ISDN lines was then towed off to the Grange at Edinburgh for Scottish cricket <laughs> in comes uh, rain bowls and then that's a good, another good length ball which is pushed back down the track so there's a, they used to have a a members magazine here called the Riverside Review and they did a feature on the the old press box and I wrote some stories about some of the funny incidents that had happened in there not least one day when a load of wasps came in and <laughs> there was a battle battle to the death with these wasps a swarm of wasps came in rain 
Bosa Rutherford, I like thought no, but a big shout for LBW and Rain, uh, very enthusiastic there and pleading with Umpire Blackwell to give that in the affirmative. But I wonder is he appealing for a caught out, behind caught there, you know? Because he, he, where he's standing, his line, his legs outside the line of off stump, but that came right through him and across him. I thought it just flicked the pad on the way, right. and it was one of the double appeals, but it yeah. did go through. But uh, Ben Rain, that's why I think the decision was not given, and I think he was asking. He could have asked for two, couldn't he? Yeah. How is that, and how is that? Not out, not out. <laughs> Rain. Good over this. Bows to Rutherford. Rutherford clips this away, but uh, it's to mid on and there's no run. The other thing with that um, portable uh, press box was there was some aluminium steps up into it and whenever somebody was coming up the steps the whole thing used to rock. And you couldn't tell who they were because you couldn't see through the door, but you could tell who it was generally by the way that rocked as to the weight of them and <laughs> who was likely to walk through the door. I can tell you some stories of places where I've done commentary. Oh. Yeah. Next ball is played out into the covers, and uh, again, there's no run. We went down for a cup match at Chelmsford many years ago, mm -hmm. and the line had been booked. We were told, well, you can't go in there because five live are there. You can't go in there, Radio Essex. Are there. Well, can you please tell me where I can go? Well, no, you, it's a sellout. You can't sit anywhere. <laughs> and we ended up sitting on the roller, Andrew Hignall was scoring for us then, and uh, Don Chabon and myself sitting in boiling heat on the roller way to the left, under the scoreboard. You uh, couldn't see the scoreboard, thankfully we had Andrew to score. How did you commentate? With, with great difficulty as this next ball is driven and uh, well fielded on the offside, but they do scamper through for a single. But how did you get on air though, with, on a, with a really um, long line? Very, very long line. We had our line, the drum, plus the radio airstrikes to connect, so it was... Uh, yeah. And the funny thing is, we didn't go off air. Yeah. At times, I was hoping we would. Cause, uh, um, well, that's all the worry. It's always the worry at outgrounds when we have to commentate using Wi-Fi or um, the internet, you know, broadband, rather than ISDN, which is what we normally use. I mean, this ISDN system's lasted a long, long time. It, it was a high-tech phone line that could carry lots of information, which the, the big supermarkets and chain stores used to use to send all of their sales figures back mm. and forth to HQ, and then somebody worked out you could broadcast on it as well. Many hotels have them too. We used yeah, to yeah. work from the hotels. Yeah. Coglin to Rutherford from the Lumley end. That one's off down a fine leg for one. I remember once... Sunderland were playing away in a cup tie at Bolton or somewhere like that and they went to stay at the Marriott Hotel at Worsley on the outskirts of Manchester and decided to hold their pre-match press conference there at something like nine o'clock on a Friday morning so I had to leave home at about six to get down there did the interviews and then we were told they'd set up an ISDN line so we could send back stuff from one of the rooms in the hotel and it, and it didn't work so I had to go into the basic the phone exchange in the hotel yeah. Coughlin balls oh that's rammed off Carlson's hand and he's in a lot of pain there gives yeah. it a big big waft let's hit the bottom handle against the well, the bottom hand against the handle of the bat anyway the thing with that was I couldn't then get a phone signal inside the gunnels of the <laughs> hotel so I had to connect my line run out to the reception get our um, sports reporter at the other end to set everything up and then run back in and hit play and hope he got it all. Yeah. That was fun. Edged and uh, oh, oh dropped. Stop. Carlson That's dropped by Bellingham at first slip. It was a fairly rudimentary chance as well. Oh. That was should have been snaffled by Bellingham. That's a poor piece of fielding there. Yep, straight in, straight out. Yeah. Yeah. Very impressive with Coglin. Very impressive. So he got done on the hand, and then the next one he edges to first slip. <laughs> Coglin in again. Will it count? Will it be costly? That's gone to point no run. Nick has just shown me a picture on his iPad. It's a great picture. Uh, at Long On or Long Off down at the St Lawrence ground in Canterbury. A big, big banner 
a big picture of uh, Stevens, down at Stevens, and under the um, St. George Cross flag, saying, Stevo is God. I suspect he might be, too, at the age of 46. Coglin to Carlson again. Carlson defends this time. It's just around about off stump length ball, played back to the bowler. The thing is that with with the Darren, he looks uh, rather portly, and uh, he's you know he gets runs, he gets wickets, could bowl 20, 30 overs in the day sometimes when they when they feel in, and uh, he catches it slip. And uh, I was reading an article about him. He does keep himself fit. He says he never fails to have a, a couple after the game. Coglin in again. I once more, Carlson's equal to that one. I don't mean T. Mm -hmm. Good over, wasn't it? What a very good over from uh, Paul Co Coglin. Hundred and seven for three, Glamorgan, and uh, the bulk of the scoring is done by Rutherford this morning. He's moved on to 61, Carlson's on 5, and the wicket to fall, Ed Byram, uh, played on, having not scored a run in the first 40 minutes. He was bowled for 17, that was his overnight not-out score, but bowled um, by Coglin, and uh, he has been very impressive. So in the first hour, there has been just the one wicket to fall. The Morgan putting a far better fight of it. Thanks, in the main, to uh, Rutherford. Neck is back. Here we give Martin a, a token break for the <laughs> morning. Up until the top of the hour, as they say in Radio Land, as uh, rain is in, bowls, and uh, Rutherford is for defending it back to the bowler, who flicks it to cover, and thence onwards, onwards to Rushworth for polishing duties. Very lovely morning here in Chesterler Street on what may be the last day of male professional cricket here this season with the women's action to follow 107 for 3 the, uh, Glamorgan as rain comes round the wicket balls Rutherford drives down the ground but uh, fielded at mid on and there's no run this is the advantage of having four very good seamers in your side. You know, Rushworth and, and Potts and you know, Coglin and, and Rain not giving an inch here as the backup bowlers. Now, I suppose if this goes on and Glamorgan don't lose another wicket for a while or two wickets, you might see the leg spin of Borthwick just to change things around. And Travascus has another bowl in the match nope. yet either. As that sees Rutherford driving out on the offside to see. Diving attempt by Travaskis at uh, cover to stop it. It doesn't matter <laughs> because it's run up to mid-off anyway. And Travaskis strikes a, a mock pose towards, I think, uh, one or two of the coaching staff on the boundary to big up his, uh, his efforts. 107 for three. Rutherford, 61. Carlson perilously on five. As... Next delivery is flicked away on the leg side by Rutherford, but uh, straight to Jones at mid-wicket, and there's no run. Uh, Scott Borthwick must be uh, pleased with his field setting this morning, I think, because there's been a lot of uh, deliveries struck straight to fielders. And Byram certainly wasn't able to get away. Didn't add a run in half an hour this morning before he dragged on a widish delivery from Cotlin off a very big inside edge. Rain into Rutherford, two slips in the gully, and uh, Rutherford defends. A very wide of the crease there, the very last moment. Something which Tim Gunder Guten does. Trying to vary the angles and... Uh, yeah, it's a good battle. ...disrupt the uh, fairly unflappable Rutherford. It does remind me so much of, uh, I think I've said this before, Matthew Elliott, who played for Glamorgan. Mm. Great distinction back in the 2000s. As Rain is into ball to Rutherford, who drives on the leg side. There's no run. 
Rutherford's highest score in the One Day Cup was 86. That was one of four times out of nine innings that he passed the half-century mark. So far in the championship, scores of 31, naught, 43, and now 61. So it's consistency. In yeah. fairness to him, he's been he's certainly worth what. Uh, what he's paid for, I'm sure, because um, the Morgan have in the past uh, signed some people who've done absolutely nothing. He's very unshowy, isn't he? Yeah. It doesn't. Um, it's not maybe as uh, easy on the eye as some left-handers, but just goes about his business, accumulating and hits the ball, bad ball, invariably for four. Bellingham at uh, Bellingham's first slip at his hands on his hips as if to say, how did I drop that catch? Well, he's had an opportunity again as Cogling comes in. Ball to Carlson, who clips this away down towards fine leg, and they'll go through for the single as the return comes in from near the boundary. The field adjusts for the left-hander. You'd never pleased Glamorgan wouldn't have been particularly pleased to see Byron being dismissed, but they would have probably thought at the start of the day, well, yeah, we've done fairly well at the moment. We just lost the one wicket. Rutherford going well. Hasn't given a chance. There's been some big appeals against him, but more in hope than anything else. And I think the umpires have had a very good game here. Coglian is in, bowls to Rutherford down the side, down the leg side, and Nicholas has to dive to his right. Two umpires, uh, Ian Blackwell, former Derbyshire, Somerset, Durham, England uh, left arm spinner, very hard hitting left handed batsman. Saw his debut at Derby, uh, a Sunday league match. And the other one, Nick Pratt, who lives up here. Just a couple of miles away as the next ball is in and uh, clipped away to a man who was pushed back towards the uh, leg mid, uh, square leg boundary. You remember his brother, Gary Pratt, in mm. 2005, <laughs> ran out to uh, Ricky Ponting, to which um, the Australian uh, hierarchy weren't particularly happy with. Goodness knows why. You're allowed to. <laughs> You're allowed to run somebody out. <laughs> You're allowed to pick one of the best feelers in the country to do it. But his, his uh, brother standing there as the next ball is pushed away into the covers. Good tumbling stop there. Trubasky is having a, a lot of work to do today. In general, though, I think there is uh, a little bit of a laxity in the game about the use of uh, substitute fielders. Ought to yeah. be uh, cracked down on a, a bit. Get one over, uh, one over to go off and for a bathroom break or change your boots and, mm. and that's it. But I think it was uh, I can't remember who was injured. No, Simon Jones. It was, it was his last game. So this is pushed up into the covers by Carlson. The Morgan seconds all out three four three. Last wicket stand of uh, seventy one between Tigard Phillips and Jamie McElroy. Sussex seconds 108 for two in reply to Durham seconds 252 at Hove. Four day championship games, those are. Coglin in, balls. This is cut away and it's going to be four runs. Uh, poor delivery, the, the only one I've seen Coglin ball in the whole game. Very short outside the off stump and uh, in a flash. Little men like cutting and hooking for some reason. They get low down and. That flushed away to the boundary. That's the end of the over. Glamorgan moving on nicely for 113 for three. And uh, leading the way on 62 is the opening batsman, Hamish Rutherford. And Carlson has just gone to double figures. He's made 10. Essex still two wickets short of victory over Gloucestershire. 164 for eight in their second innings. Still trailing by... 36 runs at uh, Chelmsford. Ryan Higgins holding them up, batting at number nine. Good 150 against Glamorgan. Seconds a week or two ago. Good signing he was. Mm. Surrey 139 for seven against Northampton. That's a lead of 220. 
at Northampton where Durham head next as Potts is into the attack and bowls it back of a length delivery that Rutherford sways out of the way of through to Eckersley no run poor old Derbyshire uh, the whipping boys of uh, county cricket this year 85 for 5 in reply to Leicestershire's 528 all out They've lost some players to injuries this year, and uh, COVID, and you know, forever signing somebody on loan. As uh, Rutherford drives straight to cover, no run. Also in Division Three, second day of the match uh, at Hove, Middlesex 477 for two against Sussex after that club first wicket record stand between uh, Sam Robson and Mark Stoneman, formerly of this parish. Stoneman was eventually out for 174. Robson is 243 not out. As Potts bowls and Rutherford drives pleasantly on the offside. May well get four runs if that's just got the strength to reach the boundary. Pops over the boundary ropes and uh, is fielded by a 12th man. 117 for three and Rutherford Moves on to 66, not out. They say that the on-drive is the most difficult shot to play, and uh, in the game where you have to adjust, you get your left foot or right foot for Rutherford uh, moving quickly, and that was done perfectly, and he timed it in the middle of the bat. Shot of the morning for me. Potts runs away from us once more. Balls to Rutherford, who defends <laughs> that one back to the bowler. In Division 1, Warwickshire against Hampshire. Hampshire 290 for 8 in their second innings, having been bowled out for 89 in their first. Hampshire lead Warwickshire by 263. Keith Barker, as uh, Martin mentioned earlier, is uh, going well. 69 not out. Potts, two slips in a galley, probing away for a second breakthrough off the morning. Rutherford tries to turn that one on the leg side, but uh, plays it straight to rain at mid on. How often you see Nick uh, Keith Barker for many years with uh, Warwickshire uh, when he's released and when he goes back to play against his old club, invariably wants to make a mark, and of course Barker's doing it. So now 34 years old. As Potts bowls to Rutherford, runs on the leg side Oops. here once more. I think this will be cut off, but they should be able to come back for a comfortable two. As uh, the distinctive long-haired Jones fields on the mid-wicket boundary. Two more to Rutherford. Moves on to 69. It's 119, 68. It's 119 for three here in the Chestler Street sunshine. As the players pause for a brief stroke drinks Stroke sanitisation break. At Trent Bridge, Nottinghamshire, 180 for five in their second innings, but that is a lead of 284 over Lancashire, so they're well placed in that Division 1 game. Uh, I'm giving you Division 3, Kent, Worcestershire. It's about to end, isn't it? Yep, Worcestershire, eight down in the second innings, 157 for eight. Trail by 103 runs still, short of avoiding the Ings defeat. Three wickets for Stuart, two apiece for Gilchrist and the aforementioned Darren Stevens, whom we were discussing <laughs> earlier. As you say with Stevens, it's it's the way he looks, isn't it? Is I mean mid 40s and and looks it to be honest yep. until he gets the wicket. It could be any old club trundler on a on a Saturday afternoon coming in for his 10 overs or whatever. A rather extraordinary innings he played against Clark Morgan, oh. 180, 197, isn't it? Very weird. And that uh, wind-blasted, rain-drenched game at, uh, at Canterbury. Where did you commentate from there? Because it's uh, doing some alterations, weren't they? They were. Um, yeah, the front row of the Underwood not stand. Oh, the far side. S no, the one um, next to the uh, written media box. Oh, right. But we were in the outside bit next to the written media. And uh, blasted by wind and rain throughout. 
Start of a new over and uh, the first ball from uh, Rushworth. I think it's back at that end. He is. Yeah, well, where's Martin? Martin's gone. Oof. We'll he have to must be up. rushing back here to try and describe Rushworth if he gets it, of course. Oh, it could be some time before getting it. Looking for his 50th wicket of the season. Yeah, Stephen's innings against Glamorgan, 190 off 149 balls, 15 fours, 15 sixes. Incredible. Rushworth from the Lumley end comes in. Balls now to Carlson. Carlson oh. near, well, I don't quite what happened. He, I, mean, I think he tried to cut it, then it hit his leg. A bat onto boot, I think. And then ricocheted out into the gully. Hasn't looked completely at ease as Kevin uh, Carlson since he came uh, to the crease. He was dropped after a straightforward chance to Bellingham at, sec at, at first slip of Coughlin, Coughlin. And uh, he's racing. Facing now that uh, wily campaigner Chris Rushworth, who's over the wicket, bowls to him, gets behind it, pushes it out into the covers, and there's no run. 119 for three, and uh, Rutherford now 68 15 to uh, Carlson. One of the umpires in that Glamorgan seconds game, by the way, is Jack Chantry. I, didn't I know noticed that. Uh, yeah. Into umpiring these days. Oh, yes. It? Brother, he's on the reserve list. Morgan briefly. He of the quirky action of the wrong foot. Mm. From he swim the channel player. as well. Mm? Didn't he swim the channel as well? Something like that, yes. It's Rushworth bowls. Played back down the pitch. Accurate delivery from him. Yeah. In aid of, uh, in aid of some charity. Adam Chantry. Adam Chantry, yes. Who would... Uh, I don't know if you were there, Colwyn Bay was in sight. He got, uh, Robert Croft got 100, just the last week, Chantry got 50 odd, and uh, they needed, I'll you know, just break off as Rushworth comes galloping in from that far end and bowls, and that's cut again, but not uh, convincingly by Carlson this time, he doesn't get a run. They wanted about two runs to overtake the 10th wicket record for all position yes. and Chantry after holding his bat up high and waving to the crowd he might have got a hundred he's an extraordinary partner anyway ran down the pitch and got bowled all over the shop to which Crofty wasn't very happy with him Adam Rushworth bowls and shoulders arms outside the off stump and it goes three to the keeper is this sanitization time or is it a change of gloves time and a, a rub down or whatever they do? I think we had sanitization the last over, didn't we? Yeah. It's uh, 12th men dashing on. It's a drink for Rutherford. I don't think this should be and a hat allowed. For uh, Rushworth. I watched a test match, one of the test matches, I forget what, and this is absolutely true. The second over had been bowled, and on comes somebody to bring a bowl or a drink. Mm. Uh, it's like watching the South African rugby team, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> someone goes down injured every uh, every other set piece, and everyone has a rest. And gets a word of advice from Erasmus. <laughs> <laughs> That's extraordinary with the uh, director of rugby. He's going to come haul over the court, well, isn't it? Well, that ridiculous video outburst well, against officials really needs to be uh, cracked down on. That's one thing as making passing remarks in a press conference, another sticking your hour-long video rant up. As uh, Potts bowls and uh, Rutherford plays defensively to Trafaskis at cover. Were you making the point to me during, I can't remember, <laughs> in commentary, or did we talk about it last night, that Rutherford would be the, the ideal um, signing for Glamorgan next year and um, I think you said Nick, you just don't know where Abushane's going to be No, I mean, uh, we don't probably <coughs> we won't know until a month or two before what the Australian schedule will be as Potts bowls and Rutherford works into a gap on the leg side will just take a single as rain runs across to his left from mid on understandably really with the uh, virus situation in Australia with a low percentage <laughs> Bad as ever up there Low percentage vaccinated, and I think one of the problems for Australia as well is that uh, the 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 level of 
power delegated to the, the states. Well, you might say it's the, the same as delegation in the four nations in the UK, but they, they seem unable to agree on policies between the Australian states. As uh, Carlson defends that ball from Potts, out on the offside. And then you don't know where he might be playing in the world because uh, Australia shows. You know, f first of all, of course, and doesn't concern us in this country, is will the Ashes take place? They want the England players because of families, etc., going out. They want to know as soon as possible, mm. quite naturally. As uh, Potts is into bowl to Carlson, who tries to pull, uh, doesn't get much on it, comes off a glove, and it's uh, well fielded by Eckersley dashing Doan towards short fine leg and uh, deters them from taking a run. Because they really are in a quandary because the television money is uh, is waiting and you can't really imagine can you, England, Australia, for the Ashes being played in those vast stadiums they got in Australia in front of uh, an empty audience. Well, it's better than not playing at all. Pots in, balls, rather Carlson is... Uh, Defensive on that time, playing it to mid off Rainfields, no run. And you could even get variation between the states, with, for example, the Rugby Union Championship playing uh, New Zealand and South Africa and Argentina. And those games are being restricted, I, I believe, to uh, Perth and to Queensland because of different regulations between the various states That's in right. Australia. 120 for three here are Glamorgan as Carlson defends to cover. There's no run. It's not quite himself, Kieran Carlson, he doesn't, does this he? morning. He's had a wrap on the gloves, but uh, even before that, he was dropped, uh, as I mentioned, by Bellingham at uh, first slip. But uh, the other end, of course, Rutherford looks an absolute top neck. He will be high in a hundred, he knows he's a long way away, he's on uh, 68 at the moment, but uh, he's played well enough for it and held the innings together, launched it and uh, Morgan will dearly hope that he can stay there and play a very long innings. As Chris Rushworth from the F Lumley End comes in, bowls to Rutherford, Rutherford is back seems to have kept a little of that as he plays it out into the gully. <coughs> so, looking at my laptop here and the first thing I see is energy prices going up again. What a surprise. <laughs> Wonder what's being blamed this time. They don't want the heat on today, certainly. Rushworth in, passed on by Pratt and Bowles, and this is a time he has just cleared, turned him completely then, be looking to play it away on the onside, and it ballooned up. Now, cover and mid-off were saving a single. He must have got a good bat, but uh, really, it, I thought it was just going to go up in the air, but it just cleared cover, and very fortuitous single for the Glamorgan opener. I asked, well... Martin is back, and uh, Rushworth has been waiting for him to come back. I think. Yes, they they knew that uh, knew that uh, Rushworth couldn't take his fiftieth wicket without Martin on commentary. We'll get him on in a ball or two. <laughs> yes, he's bowling now to Carlson, and uh, he's forward. Plays it uh, into the offside, and there's no run. And Martin will be crossing his fingers that he doesn't get a wicket this over. <laughs> the next three balls. That was yeah. close, wasn't it? I mean, Rutherford had no idea where that was uh, going. As he looked to you turn, I think, on the leg side. and uh, Well, he's looking towards square leg. And ball ballooned over cover. Seemed to be up in the air a long, long time, that one. Rushworth from that lovely end again in this uh, beautiful sunshine. Comes in and bowls, and this time it's defended by Carlson. Turns around very, very quickly in case it's going to rebound from somewhere onto the stumps. But uh, two fielders come in and gather. And the 300 barrier says uh, Neil Thornycroft came on, <laughs> rather tongue in cheek. Glamorgan, two, oof, what's that deficit? 285? 
believe. It's uh, rather faint on the uh, bottom right hand corner of the, the video board. Two slips, crouch as does the wicket keeper as uh, they watch Rushworth come in, bold, beats Carlson and uh, is taken very low down by Eckersley. Down by his ankles, which might tell you that there's a, a variable bounce in this pitch. A little bit of wobble after it's past the bat. Yep. A bit of movement off the pitch, just needs to be uh, a little earlier in the ball's trajectory, from the bowler's point of view. Coming up to 90 minutes play this morning, and Glamorgan uh, having lost just the one wicket, that of Eddie Byram was bowled by Coffin, played on for 17. Rushworth is in and bowls, and this time it's pushed away onto the offside. That is the end of the over, end of my stint as uh, Martin Emerson comes back into the commentator's chair, and he will be joined by Nick. Thank you very much indeed, Edwards. As Martin is uh, back with us to update BBC Radio Newcastle listeners on the uh, on the top of the hour, and uh, hopefully to get from his point of view to get Rushworth's fiftieth wicket in uh, the next over. But uh, Glamorgan will hope to keep Martin and Rushworth waiting. Pots then from. This Finkel end to Rutherford. It's a short ball that he just sways back away from. Economy of movement from uh, Rutherford. Not a demonstrative sort of chap. 121 for three. And deficit is 285, having been 406 behind on first innings. This Durham waited until they got to 500 before declaring last night. Morgan 71 for two overnight have added 50 more runs for the loss of one wicket. Potts bowls. Another short pitch ball that uh, is not quite as well directed as the first as it uh, goes through to Eckersley unimpeded. Just tweeting a little bit earlier on about um, two drop catches. Catches win matches and all the rest of it and uh, Rutherford put down last night by Eckersley off an edge off Chris Rush with a fairly straightforward catch. Would have been Rush with 50. And then today, Carlson dropped on six by bedding him in the slips. As Potts is into Rutherford, who works out on the leg side with that wristy whip and gets a single 122 for three. And if there are players who are going to save Glamorgan in this game with the bat, you're thinking it's going to be these two. And you don't really want to be giving them any chances. And the other thing is, I mean, there's a, it would take a monumental effort today, but Carl, um, Carlson's one of the two people who can stop <laughs> Beddingham becoming the first player to a thousand runs this year, and Beddingham dropped them. There's the next delivery played on the offside by Carlson. No run. So it would take some doing for him to overhaul Beddingham. But it is still possible. And who used to say that in the next round of matches, you know, Carlson might not be batting before Beddingham is, or indeed Libby is, and so could come through on the inside rail and overtake the two of them. 8.28 before this innings. He's only added another 10, and he hasn't looked altogether at his best in uh, getting there. As Potts and balls to Carlson down leg side and taken. Not taken by a sprawling Eckersley, but he'd got enough glove on it to stop it running away, and it was uh, tidied up for him. Well, Carson would need to get uh, somewhere close to a career best. His career best is 191, actually, yeah. so he's, he can go big. Got a 170 not out earlier this season, but he's, he's not really got going as yet. England squad announcement. Uh, Lancashire winger keeper batsman Josh Butler returns to the squad following the birth of his daughter. As next delivery is driven by Carlson, having questioned his form, he produces his best shot so far. A uh, typical cover drive. Races away for four. 14 to Carlson, 126 for three at the end of the over. Somerset spinner Jack Leach has been added to the squad for the final test in the series as well, which starts on Friday at Old Trafford. Sam Billings has returned to Kent. Durham's Mark Wood in the 
squad as well. So there are the changes. Uh, well, Wood was part of that squad anyway. And the head coach, Chris Silverwood, says England will make a late decision on Ben Stokes' availability for the T20 World Cup. Stokes announced in July he was taking a break from cricket to focus on his mental well-being. He's also been struggling with a broken finger and trying to recover from that. And of course, his father died this year as well. And uh, he was uh, involved in a, in a court case, wasn't he, which was... Uh, oh, that's two or three years ago now, though. No, there was, one that, uh, there was a settlement uh, this year. Um, oh, was it? After the publication of that story about his oh, family. Oh, yes, with the son, yes. And the son uh, yeah, paid yeah. him and his family for that. Yeah, they sued the son, I didn't don't they? Many might well have gone for to charity, but uh, mm. nasty business from the, the newspaper's point of view. Ben Rain has replaced... Is this Rushworth or Rain? It's Rushworth, is it? It's Rushworth. He comes in and bowls down the leg side. They're pretty similar from a distance, yeah. aren't they? With the uh, sun glinting off the shaven heads. Got an update to do for Radio Newcastle in a minute. I haven't. I tell you what I haven't done today. I haven't got my binoculars out. That's provincial sloppiness for you, isn't it? Sam Robson out for 253 for Middlesex against Sussex. Get him on the plane. Let's just get, get him back in the England. <laughs> <laughs> Be an update for Radio Newcastle shortly. Rushworth bowls. Rutherford defends it to no ball. Tapped up to mid on. So the deficit at the moment, 280. Had one wicket falling today. Byram faced 34 balls without adding to his overnight score of 17. Partnership from these two, 128 for three, is uh, now 20. Nine of 73 balls. Update now for Eddie Newcastle. As Rushworth comes in and bowls. What they could do is taking some catches. Hamish Rutherford is on 71. The New Zealander reaching his 51st uh, 50 in first class cricket a little bit earlier today. That uh, came in 86 balls and included seven fours. But he was dropped by the keeper last night following an edge off a delivery from Chris Rushworth, which would have given Rush with his 50th championship wicket of the season. Rushworth is still bowling and still looking for that 50th wicket. There's also been a drop at the other end as well. Kieran Carlson, one of two players who has the ability to end up as the leading room maker this year in the county championship pipping David Beddingham of Durham in the process if he were to do it was dropped by David Beddingham in the slips when he was on six one wicket has fallen Byron bowled by Paul Coglin for 17 faced 34 balls this morning without scoring a run and at the moment Glamorgan 128 for three and they trail Durham by 278 Rush with bowls, and that's flicked, and that's that, that's 50, it's flicked by Rutherford, Lees leaps and takes a catch at square leg, and Chris Rushworth has eventually got his wicket, Rutherford can't quite believe it, and he's gone for 71, and a little huddle around Chris Rushworth for the sixth time in first class cricket, he has taken 50 wickets in a season, for Durham and well done could have been done last night it's been done today instead but uh, a crucial wicket for Durham and Rutherford departs for 71 well what an odd way to get to 50th wicket he'll take them all of course but uh, just uh, an uncontrolled flick from Rutherford who likes playing on the leg side usually gets his wrists round the ball and uh, manages to keep it down but uh, that one just a, a little lob out towards square leg and Lee using all his height to clutch onto it Rutherford 71 came off 141 balls and included 10 fours and there it goes on the screen Chris Rushworth 50 championship wickets 2021 season so congratulations to him Statistical milestone and a very important breakthrough for Durham in the context of today's play because I think if uh, Rutherford and Carlson had uh, 
got to Lynch, Durham might have thought they had a long day ahead of them. As it is, it uh, might be a rather shorter day's work for the home side. 128 for four. Just announcing Chris Rushworth's details there. So Chris Cook in at six. His form in this uh, block of cricket. Duck first innings against Essex. 47 not out. Ran out of partners in uh, Glamorgan's second innings there. And leg before to Paul Coughlin for three in the first innings here. So he's got something to prove for Moyes himself, having been... In and out of the Birmingham Phoenix side as, as wicketkeeper. Eventually Chris Benjamin took over that role on the strength of uh, his superior batting performances. As Cook takes guard. From umpire Pratt. Extra slip? Not yet. No, just the two slips. Been one or two have, have got up. Rutherford lobbed one over cover before he was out and Again, a ball he didn't get on top of. Short mid-wicket being brought in. Rush with then in the sunshine. Coming in, it's a ball to Cook. Oh, that's a snorter of a ball. Absolute snorter of a ball. Joe Rush with Chris's dad saying that. Simon Brown took 50 wickets in a season seven times. And Chris Rush with and Grey Munions now on six. Well, Onions finishes on six. Well, there we are. That's his target for next season. Mm. Equal the uh, the county record in terms of 50 wicket hauls. 278, the deficit. Oh, so he comes in the bowl again. It's an extravagant leave by uh, Cook there, who almost wafts his bat into the line of the ball, way outside of off stump, which is trying to pull it away. A sort of Chris Rogers style. -y. Well, it's the, the influence of having Marnus Labuschagne in the squad. That was who I was thinking. Yeah. Who's got the... Uh, he had that, didn't he? That his his right. leaves better than my pull shot. Yeah. It's actually fairly similar and makes a similar, la similar contact or lack of. 128 for four at the end of the successful Rushworth over. And uh, whatever happens now in the next 21 minutes, Durham can enjoy their lunch and you feel Ben Rain similarly follically challenged on top There's bowling not for 19 he has from 9 overs he's bowling to Kieran Carlson 2 slips in the gully 5 saving the single Carlson defends to mid on there's no run. Carlson producing one lovely off drive, just as I was uh, questioning a rather shaky start from him. If he can get going, the home crowd and any remaining Glamorgan travellers will have a, a little bit of entertainment for their money. As rain bowls and Carlson defends back down the wicket and it really has been an impressive feature of the Durham seam attack that they've given Glamorgan's batsmen absolutely nothing to feed off really since the the first hour of the game they were uh, really accurate either side of lunch when Glamorgan had that nine wicket collapse on day one and they've been really accurate in this innings as well with Glamorgan going along at uh, just over two and a half runs and over as Kieran Carlson pulls away from the wicket. It's been uh, distracted. 48th over this. So uh, just over two and a half the scoring rate. Maybe around about 2.7 off the top of my head. As Rain is in to bowl to... Carlson beats him with a bit of movement. Carlson prodding forward. 
wondered where that had gone. Thankfully for him, not off the edge of his bat. Through to Eckersley. Durham keeping the, the pressure up with uh, a well-placed field. Five saving the single. Two slips in the gully and just uh, the man back at uh, backward square. In front of that big open stand away to our right as Carlson drives nicely hit but straight to cover. And uh, no run. I say a lot of Glamorgan's better shots have hit the fielders today. So Michael Jones at uh, point trying to uh, cheer up his fellow fielders. Not that they've got any particular reason to be down with four Glamorgan wickets down two last night, two today. There's Durham search for what could be a very big victory. Carlson defends to mid on and there's no run. Uncharacteristic for Carlson to have this sort of scoring rate of uh, 49, uh, 14 not out, off uh, 39 deliveries usually around about the 70 runs per 100 balls mark and he's bowled, pushing forward bit of nip back Carlson is beaten Excellent delivery from Rain, 128 for five. It's not quite start the car's time, but it might be locate the car keys. Carlson gone for 14, 128 for five. Well, they, they are the two that Durham won out the road, switching this again. In fact, it's uh, it's behind by a ball or two by the looks of things. But um, he was dropped on six and he's gone for 14. So it wasn't as damaging as it could have been, and uh, I would imagine David Beddingham will have quite a bit of a, a relief <laughs> running through him now, having put that catch down earlier. Two wickets falling on 128, and they're still 278 behind. Carlson and another of those, although he had... Um a, a decent he's played obviously in, finished he's played the, missed it that one he's played over the top of the, the one day cup yeah he started and finished uh, the one day cup with big scores but since returning to red ball scores of 13 8 17 and, and 14 has uh, not really got going so he'll be another player who will be uh, you would imagine spending quite a long time in in the nets on Friday, I would imagine it would be, and they have their main session before the the Gloucestershire game starting on Sunday morning. Dan Dowthwaite is in at seven. The yeah, other player, short of form after returning from white ball duties, they only got one game for Manchester Originals. He's got 39 in his first innings back for Glamorgan. But uh, certainly his bowling form has been rather disappointing. Now can he produce some resistance with the bat? Won't be on strike to start with. New over, Cook facing Rushworth. He comes in from the Lumley end and that's played back towards point, good uh, backwards point there, good stop. Is that Lee's in there? thought he wasn't going to get near that and then... Uh, he'd moved slightly beyond where he was when he took that catch at square leg from Rutherford, he'd gone further round. It was a sort of backward point position but even though he had moved round, I wasn't sure he was going to get across to that one. with again balls Ooh, nearly an edge I don't think that was a deliberate leave I think that did him for bounce mm, this is looking ominous for uh, Glamorgan isn't it it's uh, echoes of the collapse around 
lunchtime on day one. They lost five in a in a heap before lunch and four in the twinkling of an eye after lunch before the uh, the Sunday dinners had been digested. Rushworth again, Cook leaves. That's not far off the off stump. That was a good leave. <laughs> It's a torrid little spell for Glamorgan, this. There's bowlers, Rushworth and Rain finding good areas, as they say. Rushworth bowls. Oh, inside edge onto the pad and that had uh, Cook tucked up. Bright sunshine here in Chesley Suit still, not a cloud in the sky. In fact, the only thing in the sky is what looks like a lapsed vapour trail. The entrails of it, can't see anything else anywhere. This is a good washing day. Get your, get your, get the dry, <laughs> get, the, get the line up, get the washing on the line. <laughs> Rush with balls. Oh! <laughs> It's done too much. It's come in. It's been left by Cook. It's gone over the bales, around about middle and off, down the leg side. Keeper couldn't quite get a full hand on it, and it's gone for a bite. I came back an awful long way. Here's a remarkable amount of uh, late movement during this game. Sure, there's any particular meteorological explanation for it. It really is a nightmare game for keepers, really, because a lot of the movements after the balls past the stumps. Rush within. Defended this time by Dan Dalfoyt, the new batsman who I haven't actually got in my notepad yet. He's hard to miss. He's a big chap. Mm. 88. This used to be a Dalthwaite family Dalthwaite. at my school. I was at school, the Dalthwaites from Whitburn. He's uh, picked up by Glamorgan from uh, Cardiff MCCU setup. Having I mean, scored 95 against Glamorgan and a century against Sussex in the space of a couple of weeks. Born at Kingston on Thames in Surrey and went to school. Cobham. Mm. One game for Warwickshire. Whose training grounds? Cobham. Is that Chelsea? Take your word for it. As uh, rain is in to bowl and uh, damped on the offside by Cook. 129 for five. Both batsmen. Naught not out. The part of the scoreboard that will concern them. Well, concern them most is the five wickets down, but uh, interest them most at the moment is the, the clock showing it's ten minutes away from lunch. And that's ten minutes to survive for this sixth wicket pair. Rain, balls, and uh, just dabbed away on the offside by Chris Cook, the Glamorgan captain. And uh, certainly it's a performance that's hit the ground running from Durham after, they say it was 50 odd days without uh, Red Bull. 51, yeah. So uh, maybe Jim Matthew Maynard will have been picking James Franklin's Marcus North's brains over uh, a drink last night. As that's uh, played out on the leg side by Cook. Dalthwaite wanted a single. He's quickly sent back. A little gentle social get-together after play, as uh, so often happens after a couple of days' play. James Franklin of uh, Marcus North, of course, both having had spells with Glamorgan. North having captained them in limited overs cricket. 129 for 5, Glamorgan. 277 in arrears. Rain to Cook, who defends to cover 
Travaskis fields and there's no run. Three wickets in the morning session. The prized one, I guess, that of uh, Rutherford. Caught at square leg by Lees to give Chris Rushworth his 50th wicket of the season. Rutherford out for 71. As in the first innings, no one else has got going in the top order. Rain in to bowl to Cook, who plays that one out on the leg side. Again, there is no run. And, and as in the first innings, 17 is the next best score, apart from Rutherford. Hampshire all out for 322, so Warwickshire will need 296 to win. Anything over, yes, in the championship? A couple of eight downs last uh, time I looked. A couple of sides around about an innings defeat. Yeah. Lyndon the James has just got 50 for knots against Lancashire. Essex beat Gloucestershire by an innings in three. Rain bowls, and uh, Cook will get off the mark with the uh, ball going off a thick outside edge, but safely down to backward point. Jones Fields, but they've gone through for a single and Cook has taken the strike 130 for 5 at the end of the over You were talking about Sam Robson earlier mm. going for 253, so that means David Beddingham's 257 against Derbyshire here in April remains the highest score by anybody in the Championship this year Another uh, feather in his cap perhaps, if you can see out the season with the highest score and the leading run maker Kent are one wicket short of victory. Worcestershire 201 for nine, still 59 runs behind. Latest wickets to Stevens D. Rushworth, ball in hand, coming into ball to Cook, right arm over from the Lumley end. This is played towards the covers, no run. Doesn't half look like he's caught the sun, Chris Rushworth. <laughs> I was just chatting to his dad outside earlier. He was saying he'd been walking the dog around the ground, but it's too hot for the dog, so they're trying to find shade. It is a beautiful day here. One or two in the shade of the overhang at the back of the County Durham stand to our right. And much of the pavilion still very much in the sunshine and the rest of the ground as well. Rush with balls to Cook. Cook pushes it off towards Potts in the covers. Yeah, you just need a system of mirrors, don't you, to reflect a bit of it in here. Yeah, that's the only thing, isn't it? But it's the trouble people say in Sophia Gardens, oh, no, yeah, nice day in the sunshine. Then yeah. I said, well, a uh, nice day watching the sunshine. It wasn't in it at all. Did you mention Essex had beaten Gloucestershire? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, people think we're sitting in the sun all day, you know, <laughs> drinking gin and tonics and, <laughs> you know, flannels. Like some last days of the Raj or something like that. If only. Yeah. Rushworth balls. Cook digs one out off leg stump and plays it nicely out through mid wicket. Running towards the boundary on the health club side of the ground. Jones manages to stop it with about three or four yards to go. They run three. We're very rarely in the sun and it doesn't help when you are. We got absolutely baked at Southport in 2016 and there was a. I remember a T20 game at uh, Leicester back in the day when they wouldn't let us in the shed there was only two little rooms in the sheds and five live were there in Radio Leicester so we were out on the roof and it was just scalding hot and I, I thankfully had an umbrella but my, my colleague got badly sunburned that day and suffered a bit of heat stroke I think I mean Rushworth to Dalthwaite Southway edges it down towards the third man boundary and they're all watching thinking there's a third man there and there isn't and then by the time they realise it's gone for four and Alex Lee's looking around a bit surprised to see nobody behind him after so, you Cecil hmm. there's other occasions when I was on that roof at Leicester in thunderstorms watching the lightning passing by and you know he's surrounded by steel scaffolding and flagpoles thinking what could possibly go wrong hmm Yes, I missed the visit to Grace Road where it uh, chucked it down at half time in the in the match. As uh, I was still virusy at the time. Well, they replaced those boxes a few years ago with a really nice new set of free commentary boxes. So rush within, and there's an appeal. Douthwaite's gone way across his stumps and looked to try and play that over the leg side. Not given. 
by uh, Neil Pratt. Yeah, they're really nice rooms now up there, and you've got a great view because you're right behind the bowler's arm, but that little shed they used to have, and it's a bit like that one at uh, Somerset. I don't even think this, the one at Somerset had a, oh, had a light in it, did it? Don't mention the Somerset. I know, I know the ball came through the window when Ed was there, but I mean... This one's worse. Other than the creepy crawlies and whatever, I, I, mean, I can't remember if it even had a light switch in they've there. They've never got Somerset right in terms of commentary no. boxes. Still haven't. Worst in, the in comes Rushworth, and Dalthwaite looks to play at that one. Again, he's looking to play across the line to the leg side. He's got an inside edge onto the pine, and it drifts down towards backward point. And Rushworth's looking at him, thinking how fortuitous has he been in the last two or three deliveries. Yeah, it's just he's a got a run there. No, no, he's given us a leg by, actually. Leg by, it? was a cheeky little signal from Mr. Pratt as he wandered off towards square leg. Well, what they've done with um, Somerset now is they did build a new media centre, but they didn't bother talking to the radio stations yeah. when they designed it, so it was designed with all the windows closed, and it's quite small. So, yeah, we when you're all there for T20s, you'll have to go outside on the balcony where the bar is. Well, you? last time they didn't let us even do that. They said, you haven't got facilities for a, a second commentary team, that's it, you can't do one. Which you are not best pleased at. Was that this year or last year? Um, this year, this year. Yeah. This year. Yeah. 138 for five then. Last over before lunch will be bowled by Ben Rain. It'll be Dan Douthwaite receiving the first ball. Important question of the day, lads. What uh, luncheon avenue have you ventured down? Uh, some sort of veggie pasta thing. Anything? Which are you the same, Edward? Uh, I'm currying. Curry, oh, yeah, curry. Katsu curry. That's the one I've gone for. Yeah. Ah, for the first time we haven't been unanimous. No. There's a split in the ranks. Well, I thought. It's curry the, might be dangerous if I've got a five and a half hour it's drive. It's a difficult ahead of me. second album. <laughs> difficult third album. As uh, Cook defends the first ball to mid on, no run. Oh, Katie asks, what would your perfect commentary box be like if you were designing it from scratch? Yes. Firstly, the opportunity to open windows. Yep. Secondly, a decent view of the pitch. Well, this is ideal today because yeah. we're at the right sort of height. We're at the first floor height and we're straight on to the wickets. You need room. As uh, Rain is in to bowl to Downsway to pulls and will get runs. Has he hit that one firmly enough? He has indeed out towards square leg. Rain trying the short delivery. Downthwaite willing to take it on. Luncheon notwithstanding, he moves to eight, 142 for five. I mean, the rooms were in here. This is this doubles up as a classroom these days, and they could e they can easily lecture about 20 kids in here. Not a problem. And we've got a lot of space along the window. We must mm. have about, what, 30 yards of window <laughs> space here <laughs> easily. Bedroom, yeah. That's, that's quite a size. This sleeps room. in the back for yeah. uh, on a quiet night as... Uh, Rain is in, and Dowthwaite will get more runs here with an angled bat running it down past uh, Gully. Travaskis is off in pursuit, hauls it up inside the boundary, about 10 metres inside, and they've jogged through fairly comfortably for two runs. So Dowthwaite into double figures, at least, to 10, 144 for five. Will you um, give my thanks to you all? Yes. I won't be here after. Right, thanks. Uh, Ed would like to thank everybody for all their messages because he's going to be heading back to Wales after lunch. And Indeed. Uh, nice to see him as well. Always a bonus to see Ed. Yeah, bonus to uh, have a, a choice of uh, commentators and a few little breaks. They can get uh, quite hard work when there's only two of you. But it's a lovely job to have. Not moaning. Uh, Douthwaite will have a man at square leg as well as a man at short leg. So, is there another short pitch ball coming? Will he try to pull it again? Or is it all a double bluff? Rain bowls. It's an excellent delivery that does Douthwaite all ends up. There's an appeal from behind the wicket, yeah. but not from the bowler. Yeah, tellingly. Two balls to lunch. Yeah, so not too high up as well. I think uh, at Edge Baston you're too high up. Uh, Southampton, you're somewhere yeah, in the gods. You're up in the roof, aren't you? There. 
So I think first floor, second floor, something like that. Yeah. Trent Bridge is not a bad view. Yeah, on the third oh. floor there, but you wouldn't really want to be any higher. Yeah, most of the Cardiff boxes are pretty good. Yeah. 144 for five. As uh, Douthwaite plays to mid off, there's no run. Lords, well, it's a lovely facility, but it's, uh, it is miles up in the air and the old spaceship there. The thing is, though, I think, from our point of view, the importance of being able to open windows because there's too many of the commentary boxes which are sterile and the only air you can get in there is from air conditioning. So it's either too hot or too cold. And running a line out of the commentary box to actually get the atmosphere mic outside is an, can be an engineering feat in itself. Oof, don't, don't get me started. 144 for five. Rain to Douthwaite, who drives the last ball after lunch for a single through mid off. It is uh, collected by Alex Lees running round from mid on, and he doesn't bother to go back to his position because that is the end of. Yet another session that uh, Durham have won. Glamorgan have added 74 runs, but they've lost three key top order wickets. Rutherford for 71. Byron was first out for 17 after a scoreless half hour this morning. Carlson for 14 at lunch. Douthwaite is 11. Cook is 4. And Glamorgan 145 for 5. Trail Durham by 261 runs. Commentary resumes. Ten past one or thereabouts? It does, yes. So we'll see you then. We're off to get our curries and whatever else. And uh, my thanks as well to Ed, who's um, been here for the last two and a half days with us, now heading back to Glamorgan, or back to South Wales. We might see Ash Thorpe this afternoon. He's been doing some coaching this morning, so he may well join us this afternoon if there's time. Hopefully there is, so we can get him on there and get his thoughts on a few things. And we'll see you again in 40 minutes. out of wicketkeeper is one of the best places to be in all forms of the game. You know, you're always involved, you get to see the action up live and close. 
tend not to get that game practice that you know bowling and batting comes with. It's a lot more individual time with just a coach. It's very sort of drill based, lots of technical stuff. It takes a lot of dedication to the small things, the craft of the wicket keeping position, you know, the position of your posture, all that kind of stuff. That's the one percenters that we look for in, in wicket keeping practice. The buzzword would be a power position being in a position to move as quickly as possible when that chance comes and that takes a lot more practice than people think to get that muscle memory without having to think about it during a game. Over trading, so probably doing stuff at a speed that you wouldn't get in a game just to sharpen you up that little bit more. I think it comes with a degree of acceptance that things are going to go wrong and you've got to be open to that because you probably get balls thrown at you way quicker than would come in a game, you're standing closer. intricacies that we go into now to study the game, study the opposition. Every single game we play now is videoed so I can watch myself wicket keeping from five years ago to see the difference, whether it be a big difference or an inch or whatever it is. It's only good for us as, as players to, to see how good we can get to and because now we know the advances that we can make. I think every keeper is now enjoying a bit more time and a, and a bit more respect for the job. When you follow a team or a club and you're from the area, you have that sort of connection with the club itself. You know how much it means to everyone who comes and watches. To be part of the academy and then come through and overtake some of the greats of the game who've played for Durham, for me to be sitting top of the pile, it's unbelievable. And he is the record wicket taker for Durham. My style of bowling, it's just about putting the ball in the right area more often than not. Me being a ball out, we kind of research the batsmen and, and how they get out the dismissals they've had in the last few weeks. We do a lot of research, video footage on the team we're about to play. If you can get that one step ahead, then um, it can make a big difference in the outcome. I'm getting on a bit in terms of sporting age at 35 this summer, so I wanted to try something that would extend my career by a few years. Changed diet, vegetarian, lost weight, become a lot leaner, having a cleaner diet, just all around makes you feel that, that little bit fresher every day. I run much faster, for longer, in the gym, lifting heavier weights, that kind of stuff. To have that extra strength over a course of a six month cricket season, I think that has made a big difference in the last few years, certainly. As you get older in your career, every marginal gain you can make is, you know, makes a big difference in the game, especially in sport. Anything you can do to to get that one step ahead of the, the opposition, and then you're going to try and take it. That is congratulations and your contract extension. How does that feel? That feels good. I think um, if they had said that I'd get a two-year contract ext extension at the start of the year, I'd be delighted. So I'm, I'm glad they've offered it to me, and I'm glad I've accepted. Yeah, because I love I love the northeast. I love the guys. So um, yeah, excited. In your second season here with Durham, why was it that you decided you want to commit your future here to the North East Club? Oh, I feel I, I, I like the guys, I like the coaching staff and, and things like that. And um, I feel the North East is a really friendly place. Um, and yeah, I, I see myself here hopefully long term, so yeah. And towards the back end of last season, we spoke about in 2021, you really wanted to kick on, make those 50s and 100s. You've, you've definitely yeah. done that this year. You must be over the moon with where your game's at at the moment. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, we've still got another four get games left, but um, yeah, it's obviously gone well so far, so hopefully it can uh, continue. And if we look around the dressing room, the, we've got a really good, talented group of players here. Was that a huge factor in you wanting to commit your future here, here in Durham? No, I think, I think the most important thing for me is just, just to um, enjoy it, and I feel like um, all the guys are great guys, so that's, that's the main reason for staying, not if we're good or bad. I just think the guys are good, the coaching staff's nice, so um, I think it's important that I'm happy, and I am, so happy days, yeah. And a big four games left towards the back end of the, of the, of the season. Just what have you got planned after, after this stint with, with, with Durham back home in South Africa? Uh, well, I've signed a contract with Western Province, so I'll go play, play there for three or four months. Um, and yeah, I, I'll, I'm quite excited to test my skills in different conditions. So, um, Hopefully that goes well, um, and then come back to call the Durham in February or March.
We've always been good at designing niche products for consumers. So our thinking was if we can use the same design skills on products which have got more volume, we'll be more successful. The big issue was the plan to do it. We set a figure of a capacity to make 250,000 pieces a year. That's an ambitious target, that's our figure. So we then worked with the machinery designers to make the washing machines. Number one in this product, it's got to be reliable. A washing machine has a lot of hard work to do, and it's a very important part of most households. So reliability, reliability, reliability was a big issue. I think any new product, we've got to learn about it. Uh, and, and, and that's important. We've got to learn about it so we understand it inside out. And that's taken longer than we expected, but we've taken our time to make sure that it's right. There's a big appetite for buying British products, and rightly so. But we can't rely on that. We've got to make a product that competes with all the imports. And of course, remember, we've got our core business here of making domestic dehumidifiers and bottled water coolers and industrial dehumidifiers. So that takes our time, and we don't want to get this wrong. We've done 120,000 hours of testing washing machines here to make sure that it's absolutely reliable and does the job.
Well, welcome back to Chesley Street for the afternoon session here on day one or uh, day three, sorry, of uh, Durham against Glamorgan. Just trying to get my levels sorted out there. I think that sounds about okay. So, Glamorgan in a bit of a fix. They are 145.45 and trail by 261 at lunch. Byron went for 17 this morning. Faced 34 balls today, but didn't add to his overnight score. He was eventually bowled by Paul Coglan, dragging one on from uh, Coglan's first delivery of the day. Hamish Rutherford was then on 71, having been dropped on 32 last night by the keeper off Chris Rushworth. Rushworth eventually got him. It was a rather tame dismissal as he clipped the ball to square leg. Alex Lees jumping into the air to take a fairly straightforward catch. So he went for 71, and Rushworth got his 50th championship wicket of the season for the sixth time. But it was a bit anticlimactic really uh, but either way he's now level with grey onions on six six uh, fifties in a seat uh, or 56 times in a season and because uh, that would have been good 50 wicked halls six times in a season wouldn't it? Uh, so Simon Brown the former England player former North Hans player he had seven times that he got to 50 dismissals in the championship season and then the other way to fall with the score still on 128 was Kieran Carlson dropped by David Beddingham at first slip when he was on six, having been wrapped on the hand the delivery before by Paul Coughlin, then was bowled by Ben Rain for 14. It is a gorgeous sunny day. Martin Emerson with you here from BBC Radio Newcastle. Ed Bevan has now left us, but we are joined by Ash Thorpe, the former Durham player, who's now a coach here, and uh, Nick Webb from BBC Radio Wales is with us as well. And BBC Sport Online. Earlier, Sam Robson was out today for 253, just short of the 257 that David Beddingham got against Derbyshire earlier in the year on this ground. So that means Beddingham remains not only the leading run maker in the country, but also the highest scorer in the country. Who will get to a thousand runs first though? That's the big question. We're going to see Matty Potts starting things off after lunch. Dan Douthwaite is on 11. At the other end, Chris Cook, the skipper, is on 4. It is a gorgeous sunny day. If I offered you this at the height of summer, you would snap my hand off. It's the perfect day. Potts in. Douthwaite leaves the first delivery, which is uh, wide of off stump. So let's see who's doing what now in the uh, the batting stakes with regards to the highest scores or the most runs in the county championship. David Beddingham was eight short of a thousand after he was out yesterday for 47. So he has 992. Jake Libby of Worcestershire 976. Sam Robson's now jumped in to third spot. 973 off his monumental knock today. And then it's Kieran Carlson of Glamorgan with 842. That's gone off to point, no run there. So that is uh, seven, 19 runs between Robson and Beddingham. Update now for Eddie Newcastle. Well, um, 
I think Glamorgan are going to struggle to see their way through the rest of the afternoon, to be honest with you. They're five down. They are two, uh, what are they, 145 for five. But more importantly, they're miles behind, given that they were 406 behind at the end of the first inning. So they're currently trailing by 261. Uh, Hamish Rutherford dropped on 32 last night off the bowling of Chris Rush, who eventually fell to him today to become his 50th victim in the championship this year. So it's the sixth time that Rush was done that. It was a tame chip to square leg when he was on 71, caught by Alex Lees. And then Kieran Carlson, who was dropped by David Beddingham in the slips on six, was eventually bowled by Ben Rain for 14. There's been a massive score from Sam Robson today in the Middlesex game. He's finished on 253, so that means David Beddingham still has the highest score in the county championship this year 257 against derbyshire but in the race for the most runs over the season and to a thousand runs beddingham of durham is now top with 992 jake libby of worcestershire now has 976 and sam robson's jumped right into the picture with 973 so that one could go right down to the wire next week but durham looking for five wickets here you can follow the action on the bbc website and via the sports app There we are, all done and dusted. Where were we? Potts then. Bowling to Cook, who's got a very open stance, Ash, hasn't he? He's uh, now around 45 degrees, the way his shoulder's pointing there. Yeah, he is. Allows the ball to come into him there and just tucks that one around the corner for a comfortable single. He's a compact little player, isn't he? And Dathway's a big man at the other end, isn't he? The, the big all rounder. Yeah. Now, Nick, in commentary before lunch, asked the question about. Um, why was Chris Rush with released by Durham and then what did he do to come back and I said mm. you were the man to answer that <laughs> one so perfect timing you know, the red Mohican and all the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Potts comes in Cook's there Dath Dathwood steps across his stumps and then guides that down towards third man and it should roll over the boundary for four because there's nobody there and it does vacant third man yeah no need for the Durham at this stage runs are not important five wickets to get but yeah back to Chris he was on the academy for some time and probably took his eye off the ball a little bit with regards to his fitness and his efforts uh, and was released by Durham. Had a couple of years away from the game really, uh, obviously at a, a high standard, went back to his home club at Hilton. Um, spent a bit of time in Australia as well out in Kalgoorlie and then decided, uh, thankfully for, for everybody at Durham, that he wanted to give his career another crack and he joined Sunderland uh, in the Premier League. Uh, where I was fortunate enough to play with him and he took a lot of wickets he got fit um, and luckily got a second chance and has never looked back he got back in the side and has took wickets ever since and now to prolong his career he's even turned to vegetarian so he's he's doing everything he can to prolong his career was it um was it 2015 when he gave up alcohol for a year? I think it was, wasn't it? That was when he got the 100 wickets, wasn't it? Yeah, he did brilliant. As Coglin comes in from the Finkel end over the wicket, that one just nips back in, but well outside off stump and Cook allows that through to the keeper. Yeah, so... Then when he... It was 2016, was it? Yeah, when they won the... the one, no, it was it 2014 when they won the trophy at, at Lords? Yeah. Um, and Chris was in, the, in his dry year um, and did superbly well. And then he decided after that he was going to go down the, the low calorie alcohol road in the future if needs be. Indeed. There's Coglin again over the wicket to Cook. And that one's just dabbed away into the offside for no run. And then vegetarian about two years ago. Yeah, so Chris has never... I mean, this is rich coming from me, but he's never been the slimmest of guys. And he's had to work extremely hard on his fitness. I know um, how he feels. <laughs> yeah, I certainly do. And he, he was basically given the ultimatum that if you didn't meet the certain criteria with regards to skin folds and fitness tests, that you wouldn't be available for selection. So, with that in mind, as Coglin comes in again and Cook off the back foot pushes that away into the offside for no run well fielded by Jones. So yeah, with that in mind, he's decided that he's, he's thrown all his eggs in this basket. He's seen what happened before and he realises that he's still got a long... Mm. Um, career ahead of him he's probably got another three three or four years left uh, he's been fit um, started to get a couple of old man niggles last year didn't he where he, he was rested a little bit but he's he's played white ball cricket this year for the first time really in a couple of years and he's done very well well he's got 50 wickets Luke Fletcher of Knotts 56 that's Coglin over the wicket and that's edge behind and caught by Eckersley 
a wafty drive from Captain Cook and he goes nicely caught by Eckersley low diving away to his right and Glamorgan in all sorts of trouble at 151 for six but another man who I'm pleased oh, with Coggins ball really well yeah I was just about to say with regards to comebacks Coggers has had so many injuries and he loves cricket he loves this club he obviously went to knots to to try and push his career further on and that didn't work out due to a, a shoulder injury and various other injuries that he had there he's come back home and ruptured his quad uh, earlier in the season diving in the outfield because he's a, he's a lunatic in the field yeah, he's a brilliant isn't he? athlete well, we were commentating on that, and he hurled himself mm. at a ball in a T20 against uh, Lancashire and absolutely yep. hit the floor hard, didn't he? And he did. Never got up. All right, who's next out then to the middle? It'd be Salter, I would have thought, coming into bat now. He was the star man not too long mm. ago in the Royal London final. Absolutely superb. The little cameo with the bat and with the ball really changed the game in bowling Alex Lees, and the Durham batsman had no answer to him that day. He's got a big job to do. So he comes in at number eight. Paul Durham making inroads here. Um, not wishing to be seen with that with disrespect or whatever, but we were all debating at lunch where we thought this might be today, and I thought a half two finish and end of match interviews and maybe away from here by about four. And it is looking that way at the moment. It's certainly barbecue Six weather, isn't down. it? It is. I'm wondering about getting the paddleboard out in the river this afternoon or the, the kayak. We've just got a Michael message from Ian Jones. That there. massive seal that oh, was yeah. the door this morning. Wow, that was a huge, huge thing. It? Just got a message from Ian Jones, a former Durham cricketer and played at Somerset as well. He, he says, yes, we're, we're unfortunately just big boned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and a bit of relaxed muscle. <laughs> so, plenty of that. As Coglin bounds in from the Finkel end and this one's straight and nicely played by Salter out to mid on for no run Durham with the early wicket after lunch and a beautiful day like you said earlier Marty you would take this any day of the week mm. Let apparently it's hot out there it's, it's very warm yeah. it's very warm just uh, I watched a little bit about the last 15 minutes before lunch got out there and had a little look and Saw Ben Rain knock over Carlson, I think it was, with one that looked like it nipped back off the seam and hit his middle stump. But Durham right on top here as Coglin again runs away from us in our commentary position. And that lifts off a length and Salter allows that one through to the keeper. So the odd ball just starting to get a bit of bounce. I saw Rushwith, I think he bounced uh, Cook when he first came in. And then the second ball that he bowled in really took off off a length as well. But... Looks like this is one of the best pitches that we've seen up here in the northeast this season. That's a good carry through to the keeper. Eckersley. You can hear the chirp from the Durham fielders there. They're wanting to get through this this afternoon. I was just saying earlier, Scotty Borthwick has the enthusiasm still of a 17-year-old. He's mm. bounding around the field and... That is in his first club season, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant to watch. Potts coming in the ball to Douthwaite. It's gone down the leg side. Douthwaite has a little waft, it is. It swings away from him. I've got a man out in the hook for Douthwaite, so I'm not sure if that'll be in the back of his mind as you well. You see this dismissal from Cook here. Mm. With that open stance, and he's then having to come all the way across his body to try and play the ball that's leaving him outside the line of off stump. Yeah, so one of the, the advantages of having that open stance is you, you can allow the ball to come right into you. The disadvantage is it's very difficult to get your foot across to the offside. Potts again, Douthwaite drives, it bounces awkwardly, but it's stopped in the covers by Travaskis. No run. Which means that you're basically throwing your hand at that and trusting your, your coordination to get that away through the covers. and. Unfortunately for Cook on that occasion, he's done nothing more than had a, a wafty drive really outside the off stump and a nice edge through to the wicket keeper who took a, a, a nice catch in front of first slip. Potts bounds in from the Lumley end. Southway defends. It's too bright out there at the minute, actually. <laughs> even, through, even through tinted glass, it's really bright and they. The Glamorgan Whites sort of have this extra sheen to them. Derbyshire have a 
a sort of whiter than white yeah. wine as well. I think the Riverside on it is probably the, one of the glarious grounds that I've ever played at. For glare. Yeah. Especially when you're in the glare of the spotlight. Well, not for very long I wasn't. Hot's the Dalthwaite. Dalthwaite yeah. forward to that one and it trickles up to Rushworth and almost reaches him at mid on. Nice and compact in defence there, isn't he? The opposite there to cook his hands are nice and tight and in line. I thought um, it's a great north run this weekend, mm. uh, Ash, so I'm keeping up my 100% record in it. Me too. And you as well. I, yep. thought, I thought you'd been putting in the, uh, the hard yards. Yeah. So. Preparing well. Mm -hmm. Don't have to wait. this one from Potts hard along the floor, but a good stop from Rushworth at mid on. What's a crack with Washington? Mm. What's where have they ended up in the North East Premier League? Well, we still have one game to go. Mm -hmm. um, we are precariously sitting in third bottom. Mm. Um, Not helped by um, Burnet Field's victory at Whitburn. At well, Burnet Field had a good victory, but we knocked off Burnmill, who were top of the league on Ooh. Saturday as well, to just so keep South heads North still in with a chance of winning. Yeah, it as so well. winner, winner takes all Burnmore uh, South North on the weekend. Well, that pops up a little bit, spits on uh, Douthway. He manages to fend it away one-handed across towards point, and that is the end of the over. 151 for six, a maiden from Potts. Yeah, he's played that nicely, Douthway. But yeah, so all to play for at the bottom and at the top. So, Sacriston... So, any one of the three of us, Sacriston, Burnett Field and Washington, could be relegated, depending on results. Um, at the moment, we are sitting just above those two sides. And South North host Burnmore in a winner-takes-all game up at uh, uh, Rosemouth Terrace. For the Money Bags final. Mm, and I believe that, well, I know Sunderland have been promoted back into the Premier League, yeah. so congratulations to them. And Castle Eden can't be far behind them if, if not already promoted. As Coglan comes in, and that's fallen, punched nicely down to mid-on by Salter for no run. Has anybody gone down yet, then, or not, is it? I think top Bolden from Division 1 are relegated into the next league down. But, yeah, nobody... So I think there's probably three three or four points between the bottom three sides at the mm -hmm. moment so yeah all results possible going into the last day interesting mm. as Coglin comes in and that's nicely balled and pushed out into the offside so this weekend I hope, hopefully the weather hangs in there but I mm. think there might be a little bit of rain at the back of the week well everybody keeps telling me it's due to pour down on Saturday and if it rains if everybody gets rained off then you stay up but I think that would be an awful way to, to end the season, personally. You'd like that to happen on merit. Rather than the good fortune of the weather. As Coglin again pushes in just a bit back of a length and Salter gets in that nice and behind that and pushes that one back to the bowler for no run. 151 for six, Glamorgan. Salter yet to get off the mark. Douthwaite looking in reasonable touch on 16. Bernard Whitaker says, your Welsh colleagues will be home tonight because this game will end on day three. Good progress from Durham with a win almost guaranteed today, he says. Ooh, it's Coglin. Pushed that one in, just angled into the leg stump. It's pushed away out into Lees. Well, how many more overs are left today? That's the issue, isn't it? 60. you looking at about 60, four. yeah. So, for Glamorgan, the bat out them is going to take something pretty special from where they are now. Six down. It's a beautiful yeah, batting day as well, yeah, isn't but it? you're going to need a couple of, well, what are they, 255 behind? You're going to need 250 partnerships at least. Yeah. As Coglin allows a bit wider the off stump, and Salter allows that one through to the keeper. Well, that would be the bat to make Durham have to bat again, but yeah. even just to see the day out, you know, even if they put the block on, and then chances of that there's always one with your name on it where are we now 56 overs in yeah, maybe so the new ball's ball. not far yeah. away if needed yeah, right up against it they'll get that today the second new ball if required as Coglin runs away from us here at the Finkel end that's clipped nicely through mid wicket by Salter and that should run away it's going to tease Rushworth who gives up the ghost and it runs away and trickles into the rope for four so that's Salter off the mark with a lovely clip through mid-wicket. And Glamorgan move on to 155 for six. He 
You turned up to the ground yesterday and it was miserable. Mm, it was murky. when we first it was got here. Horrible it, was black. it was wet. Yeah. I, I did a video saying they wouldn't start on time. Well, and then the video hadn't loaded by the time they did start <laughs> on time. So I just deleted it. But, uh, yeah, and then we had a tiny bit of sunshine briefly mm. mid-morning and then all afternoon just this swathe of murk. Looked like it could thunder and lightning at any time. Yeah. And it was a kind of oppressive looking sky. 155 for six. Potts spoiling to Douthwaite. Now it's played to the covers. No run. I was having a chat with umpire, uh, both the umpires, uh, Neil Pratt and Ian Blackwell. Obviously, Blackie used to play here. Yeah, I was talking to Ian last night. Yeah, yeah and he was. We were joking on going, oh, no play before lunch. And uh, by the time we'd, I'd walked away and I'd had a chat with Marcus North, and then I'd, I'd come back and the guys were absolutely running down the stairs to go out and do some fielding practice. No, oh, we're starting on time, we're starting on time. Yeah. Played by Douthway out through mid wicket this time. Should get a couple as Jones comes around, sweeping up on that leg side boundary towards the health club. Two runs. Matthew Maynard heading off to the nets for a session with one of the. The Morgan batsman. Just need to stay patient here, the Durham bowlers. Like I said, there's just a little bit always in this wicket at Durham. Well, that was Liam Travaskis's message in the close of play interview last night. Mm. You know, Durham may need to be patient. Halfway on top of this one from Potts outside the off stump. Rolls off towards the Durham 12th man in the covers. You can hear Starlings. Must be up in the uh, floodlights. Who have we got on as 12th man, Marty? I wrote it down. It's Alfie... Alfie Taylor Dutton. Yeah, Alfie Taylor Clark. Taylor Clark, sorry. Yeah. Came on yesterday because Sean Dixon's hurt his leg. Potts to Dalfway, who looks to try and pull him through the leg side and toes the ball up to <laughs> Chris Rush with along the floor and looks extremely disappointed in his lack of timing there. Didn't quite come onto the bat the way he thought. I thought he's uh, it's one of those where the batsman then checks the toe of the bat and calls for a replacement bat. But <laughs> he's just had a little look there, hasn't he? All seems well. Two balls left of the over. Here's the first of them that's gone up to Rushworth again. We've got this little triangle going, haven't we? Potts bowling to Douthwaite. Douthwaite finding Rushworth, <laughs> Rushworth at mid-on. Bowling very straight. I wouldn't be surprised if we see maybe a little bit of spin soon. Just to try and break this up. But nice and tight bowling from the two seamers after lunch. And obviously the breakthrough earlier. Coglin having Cook caught behind. a bouncer and that's through to the keeper and that's the end of the over so one off it no, two off it sorry 157 4 6 here on BBC Radio Newcastle BBC Radio Wales Sport Online Martin Emerson with you Ash Thorpe and Nick Webb we'll bring, we'll bring Nick back in in a minute or two and he can take us up towards 2 o'clock we'll have to jump back in to do a bit with uh, Radio Newcastle are you poised Nick have you, have you <laughs> is your is your weighty tomb Weighted and tombed. <laughs> yes. Right. So we're going to see Coglin continue from the Finkel end as we uh, manoeuvre some wires around the place. Bring in Nick. That's Coglin. Right arm over the wicket from the Finkel end, and that's a nice delivery, that. Beautiful outside off stump and soaring through to. Eckersley behind the stumps. Afternoon. How are you, mate? Ah, it's uh, lovely being here in this uh, fine facility and this fine weather. And um, shame we haven't seen some rather more competitive cricket over the two and a half days. Absolutely. Absolutely. From a Durham point of view, they'll be very happy with that. But obviously, from a Glamorgan point of view, not great as Coglin. Again, full and Salter pushes this one away a little bit more confidently out into the offside for no run. Still, Glamorgan have got a trophy. No comment. We'll hang on <laughs> to that thought from the Welsh point of view. No, absolutely, and fully deserved as well. Fully deserved. They played some brilliant cricket that day. And 
certain it, it swung didn't it in, in certain phases of that game and I thought Carlson was terrific and Salter and the whole tail end of Glamorgan really set up that win as Coughlin comes in and Salter allows that one through to the keeper yeah it's it's prompted a load of YOYs among uh, Glamorgan supporters of I think win, <laughs> win one competition mm. Y's form gone a couple of weeks later when supposedly it's the stronger side well everyone else is stronger as well yeah absolutely I mean it's it's so tough to to challenge on all, all three fronts Durham have found that with the 2020 a little bit earlier this year as Coglin comes in again this one's sure. clipped nicely by Salter down to fine leg just for the single but uh, Matthew Maynard said it's a question of resetting getting mindsets right and yeah. uh, adjusting from white ball back into red ball and um, you have to conclude that uh, Glamorgan have not done it as well as Essex and Durham have having beaten both those counties at the end of the one day cup now uh, will be, will have been beaten by both of them by an innings in the championship stuff Essex are a very very good red ball side saw them up here early this year and they attack with Siddle and Cook and Porter was superb Again, a little bit straight from Coglin, pushed again by Dalthwaite to his favourite fielder, Rushworth at mid on. <laughs> yeah, that, you must, that must have been a great ride for Glamorgan in that that Royal London competition there to bring some silverware back to to Cardiff. It was yes, the first time that uh, Glamorgan had ever won a final as such, having won one day leagues, but yeah. it's not a not a one off final. As Coglin comes in and Dalthwaite pushes that one he's looked really nice and compact Dalthwaite in this inning so far Peter Davis on Twitter looks like another innings defeat I'll listen to the inning excuses stroke reasoning in the interview later well, I think <laughs> we've touched on some of the uh, the the reasons the players need a real look at themselves I'm sure there's uh, desolate as supporters in the form in the last couple of weeks hoping Dan Dalthwaite in the lower order can get a few runs we need a new captain, a new butcher, or Richards. Well, Rutherford's making a, a good impact as a signing at the uh, the back end of this season, and um, it'll be interesting to see whether they can secure his services for the period when Labuschagne's not with them next year, which may well be most of the summer, yeah. depending on Australia's commitments as uh, the Salter faces up the first ball of a new over from Potts that goes through outside off stump. And uh, I think the, the positive thing about uh, Glamorgan's one-day cup win was, that although they faced quite a lot of rookies in some sides in the group yeah. stages, they did actually win the trophy with two matches against Essex and Durham, who had fewer hundred absentees. Yep. So that was good. But uh, those 400 players have struggled to get back into this form as Salter Shoulders Arms and allows it to go through outside off stump into the gloves of Eckersley. I'm sure this has already been raised earlier in, in this match, but how was it received when Durham selected Potts and Ben Rain in, for that final? Uh, personally, I, I had no qualms about it at all. I thought Glamorgan should have considered anyone who was in form. The trouble was that few of Glamorgan's <laughs> players had, had much significant cricket in that form. <laughs> as uh, Salter defends this one back to Potts and uh, there's no run 158 for 6 and f you know I I would have played a couple of the 100 players had I been in charge of selecting the Glamorgan side uh, but not necessarily all of them because uh, they didn't really make much impact in uh, the franchise stuff Yeah, but uh, I personally I had absolutely no difficulty with Durham uh, Selecting the, the two out of three that they did. Although a few Welsh fans saying beforehand, well, at least we've got the moral high ground. <laughs> <laughs> and the trophy at the end of it. That's but the most the, important thing. But I remember when Glamorgan were in a one-day final in 2013 against Nottinghamshire at Lords, and Notts brought back Broad and Swan, who would not played for county cricket for about three months previously. Yeah. That. Oh, fair enough. If they're, if they're on the books and they're eligible, then up to the management. There's a, a brief break in proceedings while uh, short leg is it short leg gear being brought on? There's an extra helmet being brought on. I don't know whether they're going to go for a leg slip. And oh. I think due to the new ECB regulation, no, he's going to go on very close on the leg side, I think. 
Has he got pads there? Yes. Um, no, oh, he no. hasn't. Bedding and it's going in there. Well, he's, he's got the essential central protection and he's got oh, a absolutely. helmet. Uh, watch out, shins. There's Potts balls and that's pulled away by Salter. Meatily through wide mid on for four runs. He's calling for shin pads that. now. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his own box, I think. Uh, 162 <laughs> for six. Salter moves to nine and Salter's got quite a strong area through mid wicket, so yeah. I'm sure he'd be willing to play those shots. Absolutely. And nothing really to lose here. I guess it's not really challenging his wicket, I don't think. Uh, like I say, bowling into a strong area of his. I think he'd be more concerned with the ball pitched up around off stump than the ball banged into the pitch. Yeah, absolutely. Coglin, three for 20. Again, Durham's leading bowler in... Uh, Wicket's terms, having claimed four for 11 mm. in the first innings. That's when heck of a return to the first team after injury, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely superb. He's a brilliant kid. He's just been played by injuries probably for the last maybe three or four years. Uh, it's nice to have him back in Durham colours. As Potts is in to bowl on off stump, defended by Saltron to covers and... There's no run. I've really been impressed over this two and a half days of the game by the very low percentage of four balls that the Durham Seamers operate, uh, give away. Their, their uh, adherence to uh, strong lines is, is tremendous, really. Yeah, they do. Obviously, all professionals do a lot of work, but they do pride themselves on dot balls. There's Potts bowls. That's a, a dot ball with a short ball that Salter just ducks underneath. Comfortably enough, it is the end of Potts's over. 17 overs, 1 for 47. He's bowled. 162 for 6 are Glamorgan. Still trailing by 244 runs with only four second innings wickets left. And in this sort of uh, situation, I mean, uh, Durham have got so much in hand. Pretty difficult for... Morgan's players to uh, set themselves targets. I suppose you just have to set off. I'm going to bat through the next half hour. I have to get to 20, 30, 40, whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes with these kind of scores on the board, you, you have a little bit of freedom as a batter because you've, you've really got nothing to lose. Everybody's expecting Glamorgan now to lose and to roll over. It'll be good for them to show a little bit of fight here as Coglin comes in and Dalthwaite drives that nicely to mid on, but straight again to Rushworth. Must have a little deal, them too. I'll hit it to you. <laughs> well, Downthwaite needs a little something to take home from this match, having been dismissed for uh, naught and um, a bold without success and without much accuracy at times. Yeah, and like you said, Durham's bowlers know how to bowl on this ground. As Coglin comes in again, and that's a good delivery. Nicely played by Downthwaite out into the covers for no run. But yeah, just. Uh, just totally out of the blue but if you get the chance our listeners go on to uh, Durham's Twitter feed uh, you might hear some random shouts and things like that that come through our effects mic and there's we've got a young guy called Jamie who has um, a few mental issues shall we say um, and he's Durham's number one fan uh, as Coglin comes in again and Douthwaite pushes that one away into the leg side for no run so he comes every day and he'll even shout for the... He loves wickets being taken, so he'll shout He'll shout wickets, and he loves the Durham lads, and and Durham have just had a team photo taken with Jamie as they came back out onto the field, which I thought was a brilliant touch. Sure, that'll make his day. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think he's in a Ben Stokes shirt, and he's got his own tracksuit from the lads and things like that as well. As Coglin comes in, that's nicely played by Douthwaite. As that nips back a little bit off the seam. But yeah, if you check that, he sits over in the pavilion and shouts the boys on. I think his favourite player is Stewie Pointer, who he calls Rag and Bone Man. <laughs> uh, which is absolutely Why, is he a bit brilliant. scruffy? Well, he's got the beard to, oh go, right. to go with it all, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to call Stewie scruffy, but he, he, some might say that. <laughs> <laughs> but he's absolutely brilliant. His dad brings him to local football and cricket all around the area as Coglin comes in. And a little bit of a thick inside edge out again to rush with at mid-on for no run. News of the uh, the second 11s of these two sides. Uh, Sussex 217 for four down at Hove, only 35 behind Durham now on first innings. 
Glamorgan made 343 at Newport, Yorkshire, in reply 43 for one. As Coglan comes in again, and that's pulled by Dalthway. Oh, oh, oh. He's just got enough of it to clear Rushworth. That would have been quite ironic if he'd cloth one to him there. That was a uh, a real miss hit, wasn't it? It was. Just, just collect two. Lobbing over the fielder's head. Yeah, very off the splice of the button. He collects two, moves on to 20, and the score on to 164 for six. Salters on nine. Some of the way that uh, Rushford lobbed one to square leg earlier on with least taking the uh, the catch for Rushworth's 50th wicket of the the season having uh, previously lobbed one just over over cover a couple of runs previously Hamish Rutherford but he is the only Glamorgan player in this match to have scored over 20 which is quite an indictment really wow Dowthwait has now 20 which is the second highest effort by a Glamorgan player in well, 16 wickets that have fallen so far, which is is not great. We just see a bit of spin at last. Mm. Travascus is going to come into the attack from the Lumley end. Didn't think it would take long. It's a hot day out there, and he'll try and rotate his, his quicker bowlers, I think, probably from the Finkel end. He might bring Rushworth on here to follow Coglan. Well, Travascus earned the honour of a BBC interview last night to be <laughs> um, somewhat baffled by... Uh, Martin's collection of stats. It's fair to say that uh, Mr. Trubaskis is not necessarily a stats man. No. But uh, he had 55 not out at the at the tail end of Durham's innings as uh, they kept that impetus going all down the order. And Morgan needs something from their lower order now. As Trubaskis with his left arm spin round the wicket. That's an economy run up. As Salter defends out on the leg side, no run. Yeah, it doesn't take him long to get through and over. I'm just watching Scott Borthwick as well at first slip, and he's warming up vigorously, so it might be spin from both ends. I'm just wondering whether the over rate is a problem for Durham. As Salter defends on the leg side, there's an ooh and an ah from Travascus, but it didn't get through. There's normally an indicator on the scoreboard, but I think it might be obscured there by the scaffolding. It's, we can't see the bottom right hand no. of you're, one You're probably scoreboard. right, that would be a reason. We've seen Borthwick do that quite a lot this year. As Travaskis bowls, oh. as the appeal for LBW, as Salter pushes half forward, not responded to by umpire Pratt. Ball trickled out to be fielded by Taylor Clark in the gully. So will Salter try and have a, a whack over the top, I wonder. Mid on and mid off are... Just a little bit back. Travaskis bowls, flights it up. Mm -hmm. Salter drives along the ground to mid on. And there's plenty no of air there, wasn't there? Just can't see anywhere. I'm not sure on the main scoreboard if it shows. End of the okay. over, we reckon. As uh, Travaskis bowls, that's a little bit flatter. Salter watches it carefully onto the bat. Off the back foot, punches it back to the bowler. As uh, Durham taking 22 points out of this game on to retain all of them mm. was it 24 sorry um how's my math salter plays that one on the leg side eight eight bonus points and um yeah it'll be 24 points and it 16 yeah. for the win maiden from travascus to start with from the lumley end as Spin will have to wait a little from this end, I think, or will it? Is Borthwick going to hand his cap over? No, he's I think Ben Rain is going to come into the attack. Rain into the attack for the time being. Mm. Borthwick was warming up, wasn't he? There, yeah, quite he was just swing the old shoulders, wasn't he? And since he's captain, he knows whether he's going to bowl or not. It's not <laughs> like a spinner <laughs> hopefully flexing. <laughs> I'm available. Um, I never go. Might have been trying to signal that to the batsman to go, yeah, you're going to get spin from both ends. Maybe a little bit of mind games. <laughs> but yeah, Ben Rain, another one who is relentless with his line and length. He's going to operate from the Finkel end. Ian Evans on Twitter. An optimistic note, which I'll give you after this delivery from Rain. He comes in now over the wicket. And again, relentlessly right on track. And Dalthwaite 
comfortably pushes that one out into the offside. He says, I suggest this season has been a success in the red ball too. We didn't end up in the third tier and should have beaten Yorkshire at Headingley when it snowed for two sessions. Oh, and we won the trophy. Get in. <laughs> so Ian's happy. Glad to see that uh, Glamorgan supporter taking the, uh, the long view. Definitely. Nick Webb 2017 on Twitter. Well played, Ian. As Ben Rain comes in. And that one's allowed through to the wicketkeeper. Yep, they have batted badly the last couple of weeks. But uh, the first block of ten. I mean, it's one, two, lost two and drawn six. But um, they had the, probably the upper hand in a couple of those draws. And uh, yeah. a couple were wiped out and virtually washed out by the weather in terms of contests. Mm -hmm. So not a bad summer, but a bleak couple of weeks. Sometimes happened after the euphoria, doesn't it? And rain comes in, and that's allowed through to the keeper. After such a, a high and the, the adrenaline rush with the winning that that trophy that's been, you know, been waiting to come home to Wales for so long, and then it's kind of a, oh well, we've got these kind of games coming up now. But obviously, there's a there's a new phase of the season, and that's I think quite difficult for the players now because everything is just bought into phases. We're going to play red ball now. We're T20 now. We're white ball with 50 overs, and now we're back to red ball. There's no real continuity for them. And Ben Rain comes in again over the wicket. And this one's pushed out through backward point. Nicely played by Douthwaite. A little bit of control there. And Salter will look to come back for three. And will do so comfortably. Nice from Douthwaite. He moves on to 23. And scored a 167 for six. We well, can hit the ball hard when his feet are moving in the right places. Dan Douthwaite. Prefers to attack. Thought of probably a more adaptable player in terms of uh, batting game plans. Can block it if necessary. But I guess it's a, just a question of playing a natural game <laughs> yeah, with a, just a day and a half left. So much time, haven't you, to bat? Just treat it as a, a nice chance for a net in the middle. There's an email Marty threw from Stephen Johnson, which I'm, I'm going to leave to Marty to answer when he comes back on here as Ben Rain comes in. And this one's edged away but doesn't carry through to Coglin, who is very close at probably a fourth slip. Yeah, with regards to what happens if they win the division. Yeah. With Points win prizes? Win an extra 500 quid or something? Yeah. It's not going to change their lives, I suspect. Yeah, I'll get Marty to answer that one. He's definitely a lot more clued up on that side than what I am. And Rain comes into ball, the last ball of the over, and that's right on the money, and Salter and pushes this to mid on. But Matthew Potts is there instead of Rushworth, and that concludes the over. I suspect uh, that it is, it's going to play in some way into how the teams are set up for yeah. next season now whether it's rankings in the conference team set up or um, places for two divisions which will probably be, be some horrible mishmash of form over oh. three different formats of the uh, the red ball game in in three seasons where, where yeah. do you stand on this ashley oh. divisions or con or conferences i don't <laughs> do you know what it is i don't like the fact that they could not as a, as a prime example if they go back to the three seasons and Notts will be in the, the bottom division based on the fact that they've had two horrendous seasons and then this year they've obviously picked up and played some good cricket this year I, I really don't know what the answer is I, I think they fiddle around with the schedule that much that they've lost the idea on what what they're kind of trying to achieve <laughs> um, I don't mind the three the three conferences these three divisions where I think there's always something to play for um, I guess with the two divisions there seems to be so much dead cricket kind of played towards kind of this part of the season yeah. whereas now there's, there's something that seems to be on all of the games just depends how much the, the players and spectators buy into positioning in, in second and third division in That's this right. last month of the season yeah, absolutely right now, well they're professional players they're playing for uh, their own pride their own runs and, yeah, and sure. wickets and to a certain extent their, their places in the first team come next April as well yeah and they're both I mean looking at our two fan base they've both got huge fan bases um, I mean all counties will but you know Durham are a proud county as a Glamorgan and 
if things don't go their way, then the fans will certainly <laughs> let yes. them know, yeah. um, as we've heard by quite a few emails and, and messages that have come through. But these guys don't go out there with the intent to perform poorly or to lose, that is for sure. They want to do well every day that they play. Unfortunately, cricket is, on the majority, a game of failures. <laughs> What's this uh, break for now? I think they've just had a drink, and I don't know whether they're looking at the ball. Ball, and ball inspection? Yeah. It's a hot they day out there. They might have changed the ball there by the look of that, the way that Scott's working, Borthwick is working on the ball. Maybe gone out of, sh out of shape. It's uh, lobbed to Rushworth to have a look at. Mm. Yeah, that'll do, he says. <laughs> <laughs> it's red and it's round. Absolutely. I'll Meter criteria. I'll yeah. chuck it down. Yeah. Tavaskis will propel it for the time being with his left arm spin from the Lumley end. As uh, Dowsweight faces up to him, he's got a man on the drive at short extra. As Dowsweight pushes forward and gets an inside edge down to Rushworth, fielding at a shortish fine leg. As Martin Emerson replaces former Durham player Ashley Thorpe on BBC Sport Online. BBC Newcastle, BBC Sport Wales. Travaskis floats one up. Travask uh, Douthwaite drives to that man at short extra, David Bedding. And uh, he feels comfortably enough. Travaskis walks in for about six bases. Douthwaite oh. edges and that. Good take. Just falling short of Borthwick at slip. New ball doing a bit. Tavaskis is in. Balls. Douthwick props forward. Defends to Beddingham. We're all into. Oh, it's a long time till the new ball. Six, 17 overs well, left, the, so the Durham might not need it. Ball. Yeah. The new old ball. Durham will hope not to need a new new ball as Douthwaite steps back and uh, forces into the offside. But there is a sweeper on the cover boundary now, which is uh, Alex Lease, and uh, they take a single. When they decide the ball's out of shape and they change it, it invariably leads to a wicket. The amount of times it happens. David Lloyd has obviously had a, a workout there. He's wandering back with Matthew Maynard, having been in the nets. As uh, forward comes Salter to defend. No run. And the over 168 for six in terms of David Lloyd. Torrid couple of weeks opening the batting with two or oh, possibly three other openers in the side. I would uh, allow him to go back to four for the, the next game if uh, I were making the Glamorgan batting order, which, uh, well, supporters would probably be glad to know that I'm not. Well, David Lloyd is about to walk past the... Advertising hoarding, advertising the chain of gyms that uh, also share his name. I see there's one in Sunderland now, I wasn't aware of that. Ben Rain from the Finkel end, who is from Sunderland, coming into ball. Oh, nearly a tickle, nearly a tickle. Douthwaite couldn't help himself there, played a missed at one that just seemed away from him. I think by the time he was trying to pull the bat out the line of the ball, he'd already committed himself to the shot there. Yeah, there have been a, a lot of dubious leaves in this game, haven't there? <laughs> Where yes. we, I certainly haven't been able to decide on dozens of occasions whether it's a genuine shot or a, or a leave, or a pretense as a leave once beaten. More leaves than autumn on a British rail network. <laughs> this is played up to pots at mid on, or on there. But will they be the wrong sort of leaves? Yes, will they lead to low rail adhesion, which <laughs> is often a problem. Do you mean coming off the rails? Come well, on, it, 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 um, <laughs> when the leaves get squashed under the rails, they just form this gloopy mulch, and on certain inclines, trains struggle. It's often a problem in... Well, you hear it on the travel network, don't you, in the travel bulletins in the autumn, late autumn, low rail adhesion. We also have an issue on the Tynemuir Metro at certain times of the year with the low sun on a morning. Rain in, bowls, that's uh, 
gone. Well, there's, there's nobody out there. It's away. Driven. It was wide of off stump, and uh, Balfour's dispatched that to the boundary at deep backward point. It's a couple of times today um, where they've looked for the third man and <laughs> discovered that there isn't one, but hey, when you're 200 and plenty runs ahead. Graham Smith with the question, who opens next year? Oh, it's normally one of the Far Eastern countries, isn't it? <laughs> Very good. Papua New Guinea or something like that, or East Timor. Rain now to Dalthwaite, who is on 28. Ball played back to the bowler on the ground. I found that astonishing when watching the um, the New Year's Eve pictures on the news. And there we were all in lockdown, and there's everybody having street parties in New Zealand and crowded beaches and quaysides in Auckland and stuff like that. Just seemed like a totally different world. Rain in. And this is played by Dalthwaite to towards. I mean, Honor didn't quite get there because the Durham 12th man came in and snatched it first from mid wicket. And I think David Lloyd is capable of doing a job as an opener. Whether he particularly enjoys this is, uh, is another question. Selman obviously is a specialist opener. We await to uh, see what his future will be. I'm not sure that I see Joe Cook as a championship opener. I think he. Has done a really good job in the One Day Cup as uh, lower order batsman and, and change bowler. Rain in. That's a leave. There's a fly right in the window in front of me. It's doing my head in. I'm not sure um, whether Byron will be given a, a chance, so uh, can't answer that one at the moment, Graham. And it depends whether Rutherford is around or whether Labashane is back. And various uh, points of the season. How far till your, your bulletin update? That must be fairly close. Uh, probably about two minutes. They're up, the news is on, I can hear it, but uh, I think the five minute bulletins. So it's uh, Travascus then, to bowl from the Lumley end. Third over, just a single conceded so far. Nice time for a spinner to bowl. 234 runs to play with, without even Durham having to bat again. Benningham's going to put shitting pads on. So he's going to lurk somewhere close to the bat. If we do see the rest of the day's play, and we're here tomorrow, there's 56 more overs to go today. I'd be very surprised if we see the day out. Oh. Be nice to see some entertainment, though, and some Glamorgan hitting from the lower order. About time we saw Michael Hogan with some runs after his uh, 54 in the first innings of the season. That's Headingley. Bit of a delay while Travaskis comes in. The uh, adjustment of Equipment is taking rather longer this time from Beddingham, and he's uh, forgotten to take his son out off. Oh, no, still got it. He's going to have to stuff it back down the back of his trousers. The 234 runs behind Glamorgan, Durham's biggest wins, innings, largest margin of innings victory, and innings in 219 against North Hans in 2014. That was when Rushworth took nine here, and, uh, and innings in 216 against Leicestershire in 2005 at Grace Road. I think Mike Hussey scored 100 on his debut that day. Travaskis starts his over and salted down the wicket and then plays a defensive shot when he gets there and since the cover's no run. So Glamorgan have got a few to go before they, uh, to avoid being up there in that list of big Durham wins. I just found a section that I didn't even know existed. Five individual 50s in an innings for Durham. Travaskis bowls, Salter leaves through to uh, Eckersley. 
So they got five half centurions yesterday, didn't they? Yep. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's the ninth time they've done it. Javaskis bowls. Salter defends and then kicks it away just in case it was rolling towards the stumps. 172 for six. They did actually have six people getting at least 50 against Surrey at the Oval in 2016. I knew it was five. I think it was the first five batsmen got at least half centuries in that one. Tavaskis bowls. Salter plays out into the leg side. They'll get at least a single here. Day three here in Chester Street, probably the nicest day of the year in cricketing terms. Gorgeous sunny day, hardly a breath of wind, and Durham need four wickets to round this match up inside three days. Glamorgan in their second innings are 173 for six. They started it 406 behind. Dan Douthwaite has 28 at the other end. Andrew Salter has 10. Chris Rushworth has reached 50 wickets in the championship in a season for the sixth time. Got there when he got Hamish Willerford for 71 quarter square leg just before lunch. Kieran Carlson going for 14 after that. And then the skipper, Chris Cook for five. Commentary on the BBC website and via the sports app. As Downthwaite defends back to Travaskis, that is the end of the spinner's third over. And he has conceded just a couple of singles. Glamorgan 173 for six. Salted 10. Downthwaite 28. And from a Welsh point of view, what am I asking for? Oh, well, just a 50 from someone other than Rutherford would be nice. Because uh, he really has um, been uh, a lone hand in uh, three out of the last four Glamorgan innings. The uh, Durham first innings at the Oval in 2016. Stoneman 57, Jennings 53, Borthwick 77, Burnham 135. That was his first century. Uh, Michael Richardson got 68, Paul Collingwood 106, nestled in between them was Ben Stokes with 12. So that was uh, at least six players making a half century. And that one is rain bowls, and this is left by Salter outside the off stump. So the others, uh, Derbyshire, they had five half centuries in innings at Queen's Park in Chesterfield in 1994. Did it against Warwickshire in 94 at Edge Baston. That might well have been the uh, Brian Lara match. Let's have a look at that one. John Morris made 204. Brian Lara, 501. Nobody marries, remembers John Morris, do they? But they always remember Brian Lara. <laughs> <laughs> Rain in. This has gone off towards uh, mid-wicket, and it's a dot ball. Done it against Gloucestershire twice here in 2002, and Cheltenham in 99. Hampshire at the Rose Bowl 2011, Somerset in Taunton in 20... in Taunton in 2013. Oh yes, getting mixed up with Sussex. Huh? And uh, North Hans 2014 and then this game. Rain balls, that's through to the keeper. Well, for once, Durham won't have to uh, work particularly hard to uh, maintain those noise levels out in the middle. Four wickets. How much do they fancy an early night? How long will Glamorgan delay that process? Salt is on ten from 34 balls and he's edged down along the floor and it's snaffled by Coglin. It's a uh, third slip. Yes, yeah, it's a... I feel like we're just waiting for something to happen here, don't we? These two putting up a bit of resistance at the moment. Partnership currently worth 22 from 72 balls. Yes, depends how long uh, Douthwaite's patience lasts, I think. Yeah. Salter bat raised, waits, drives back towards Rain, who stops it one handed with his left hand. We're talking about the sort of patience that Jack Burnham generally didn't have. <laughs> Averaging 22 in 86 first class innings. 
Sonta can be fairly phlegmatic with the bat. Written 73 for 6 to score. That's ball of this over from Rain. It's taken by the keeper. That is the end of the over. So the deficit at the moment from a Glamorgan point of view is 233. They've basically got to bat out the rest of this day and well into tomorrow to save the match. They have four wickets left to play with. There are 54 overs left in the day. And a mere 90 tomorrow. What did you say was Durham's biggest uh, margin innings and what? Uh, it was about two, three, four in innings and 234. So it's now not going to be Durham's biggest ever innings win. That's one very minor relief for Glamorgan. Hang on, I'll just check it up again. 219 in innings and 219. Oh, that, that's that. Oh, there we are. It's yeah. a bit to go then. Yeah. 2 three, 3 the margin at the moment as Douthwaite steps back and uh, plays it fairly gently through the offside down towards the cover point boundary. Takes a single. I thought for a moment he was going to open his shoulders and bludgeon it somewhere over mid on, but he ended up with something a little more refined just a little glide out on the offside 174 for 6 and resumed at 71 for 2 Travaskis balls forward comes Salter defending on the leg side and now run. that North Hans game here that was when Chris Rushworth took the 9 wickets in the North Hans first innings and then he took six in the second to break the club record, which had been held by Alan Walker. Travaskis with a slip and a short leg, bowls to Salter. Neither of those gentlemen are employed as he plays back to the bowler. So Durham batted first, made 392, bowled North Hans out for 83. Travaskis into Salter on the back foot, defends it on the offside point no run and then pulled him out again for 90 so there are a number of players there Rob Newton I'm just thinking about him he got ducks within an hour a pair ouch Chambers Wagner got two ducks no he didn't uh... Tabascus to Salter who uh, gets one off an angled bat down into the gully fielded by Alfie Taylor Clark, the substitute fielder. Salter 10, Dowthwaite 29. Short leg moves into Silly Point. He's very close there. Travaskis bowls and Salter leaves. No run. Oh, uh, Salter was virtually within nodding distance there of uh, Beddingham who moved from short leg to silly point for the final ball of the over. Tavaskis concedes a single once more, four overs, not for three. A quiet spell in the game, 174 for six since the fall of the sixth wicket at 151 when Chris Cook was caught behind off Paul Coughlin. That was in the 54th over. We're now in the, about to begin the 68th. So it's 23 added by these two in uh, what will be 14 overs fairly shortly. Rain comes in and balls. And uh, Dalthwaite stepping across his stumps before playing that one back towards the bowler. I mean, this resistance will maybe marginally improve Matthew Maynard's mood. Hmm. Very marginally. A few people seem to be moving up to the back of the County Durham stand now, so they can get into the shade of the overhang from the top tier of the seats. Scotch you. And there's a bit of shade now in the near corner of the pavilion. That's gone into the shadows. There's rain balls. This has gone underneath. Jones at point and away for four. He's diving across to his right to try and scoop it up, but didn't get it. Nice little punch by Dan Dowthwaite. Got plenty of uh, strength in his shots, naturally. Moves on to 33. 
So, a little redemption from after a very disappointing, personally, couple of days for Douthwaite. And uh, we haven't got it in for him on, in commentary, but uh, he bowled rather wayward style. And, uh, you know, we know he's capable of better. That's the point, I think. 178-4-6. Rain in, Douthwaite forward, and he's played defensively out towards the covers. No run. Reminder of the head-to-heads between these two sides. 20th match between them. Durham have won five. As well as a victory at St Helens in 95. The other wins on the road. Cardiff 2018. And in the first season in first-class cricket in 1992. Home wins have come so far in 1994 in Hartlepool and 2017 in Chesley Street. Rain balls. And this has gone wide off the slip cord and down towards third man. And that will be four more for Darthway. It's a nice sizeable gap there beyond third slip. Yeah, it's a comfortable steer, isn't it? To get the angle of the bat right. Using the pace of the ball. It ran away fairly comfortably to third man. 182 for six. Darthway to 37 not out. Last, uh, last match between these two was a badly affected game mm. by the weather here at the end of the 2019 season. Truncated play on days one and two and absolutely nothing on three and four. Only highlight in that game was uh, the Kiwi BJ Watling made 104 and a half out for Durham in the early innings of the game. They were eight down when the match ended. Rain balls. This is played off towards the covers. Very frustrating for Glamorgan who did have yeah, some sort of mathematical chance of going up if they'd uh, taken the victory from that game. But, uh, as you say, they never had a sniff. And they were, the game was abandoned at about 9.15 on the fourth morning. Yeah, we only came to collect our kit, really, didn't we? We just about got the uh, end of play interviews mm -hmm. before they got on the bus. Probably hear the bus revving up in the background of them. Rain in. That's left alone by Douthwaite, and that is the end of the over. Two fours from it. Score 182 for six. There was a game where Durham played North Hants about three years ago at the start of the season. And beautiful weather driving down there on uh, early April. It was like this on the day before. Durham had a net session, and that was the only action they saw in Northampton that week. They'd relayed the field during the winter, and it just hadn't had the chance to settle. And there was a little bit of rain forecast on day one, but it just never stopped. It was drizzle. And when I got up to the ground about nine o'clock-ish, the umpires were already saying, no, this is no good, it's not draining away. So they called day one off, maybe by about ten, half ten. Day two, I was having breakfast when I got a text to say <laughs> the match was off, day was off. Silly point crouches once more for Travaskis to bowl to Salto, comes down the wicket and then defends when he gets there. Day three, I went up to the ground basically to collect the kit and decided to come home because day four was absolute Armageddon. It was, you know, build an arc type weather forecast. Armageddon out of here. Tavaskis bowls. Salter pushes forward. Ball trickles out on the leg side. Eckersley retrieves. So I was at home in Sunderland on the morning of day four, and I text the Sunderland there, yeah, the Durham coach John Lewis, and said, "Just can you can, let me confirm it when it's off, please?" So I just let the news desk know. Travaskis bowls and Salter leaves, and he said, "It looks like we're going to get a play, get playing." And I was like, "Oh yeah, of course." And then I thought, "No, he doesn't do jokes like that, does he?" <laughs> so I looked at the weather forecast, and this Armageddon weather that was due to be planted right over Northampton, the weather forecast had changed overnight. Travaskis bowls outside off stump, comfortable leave for Salter, and it moved about fifteen twenty miles to the east. But um, did they play? Well, a blind panic moment started. <laughs> I was trying to get hold of uh, Alex, the North Hans commentator. Travaskis bowls. Salter forward. Defends back to the bowler. Who I knew was in bed at his house in Derby. <laughs> and I eventually got through to him and said, They're going to start, they're going to start. He's like, You what? What? No, surely not. I better get ready, I better get ready. And then just then a text came through saying, No, the umpires have decided to knock it on the head. Travaskis <laughs> bowls. Slightly. 
Children flatter, Salter pokes it through the offside immediate cordon and they will amble through for a single to prevent that over being a maiden. Glamorgan 183 for 6. Salter 11, Dowsweight 37. And another pause drinks. for drinks and sanitation. Sanitisation. Sanitation yeah. something different and they're not going to engage in that on the field. I remember when that match started, or it didn't, as things were to unfold, but the Saturday was the only day when the weather forecast actually looked like it was going to be quite nice, and the Saturday was the day just, it just rained all day as well. <laughs> so, What's happening elsewhere? Anything going on in terms of results? We told you earlier that Essex had beaten Gloucestershire in this division by an innings in three. Kent wrapped up in a victory in division... Division 3 by an innings and 56 at home to Worcestershire. Uh, the other game in this division, Surrey 192 for 9 in their second innings, again at the aforementioned Northampton, and that is a lead of 273 over Northampton. So that could, as we've been saying, continue to be an interesting contest there in the other Division 2 game. Division 1. Knots against Lengths. Knots 314 for 7 in their second innings. A lead of 418 over Lancashire. Well, not shouldn't lose that one. At uh, Edgbaston, Warwickshire 33 for Nought, needing a further 263 to beat Hampshire. As Ben Rain will continue the game. Salter's on 11 then. They've had their drinks break. Rain comes in. And this is defended on a length. At home, Middlesex 594 for four now against Sussex's kids. Robson 253. Stoneman, formerly of this parish, 174. White 70 not out. Anderson 52 not out. Oh, they they're grinding Sussex into the, the ground in Hove. In comes the bowler. That's defended. Goes back to him. So, at uh, Derby, Derbyshire recovering slightly. 172 for 5 in reply to Leicestershire's Mammoth 528 all out. But of course, they're halfway through day three there, so uh, Derbyshire might have the chance to hang on. Rain in. The block is very much on, isn't it, from uh, Salter's point of view? Yeah. How many balls is that now? 51, 52? 51. 51 received. 11 runs. That's the old dig in, which is what Eddie Byron was trying to do today. Yeah, half an hour without scoring. 34 deliveries faced before he tried to score and got an inside edge. Dragged one on from miles outside off. Yeah, so he got to 17 last night and then never had another run this morning. Rain keeps plugging away, though. And Salter defends this one. Nothing else. Good batting practice for these two at the moment. Absolutely. Adding to the... Uh, adding to the chances of me spending a, an extra night in Durham's Fair City. Not sure what my cut-off point is. Don't want to drive too far in the dark. So it might be tomorrow morning if it lasts more than about another half hour. Rain balls. This is going behind point and off down towards third man. Being chased by Jones. Two runs. I can suggest a good stopping point for you, which is a hotel I use regularly on the system, which you would be passing at some point later on the day if it was to finish today. A, yeah. busy, a very pleasant environment, just a nine iron away from the M1. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a driver.
Rain comes in and bowls. Salter pushes the ball up to the cover area to Travaskis, who whips his cap off because he's going to be bowling the next over. That is the end of the over. We are now creeping up towards the new ball. 70 overs gone, so 10 remaining for the new ball. And it looks like the may indeed need that new ball. Well, in terms of the day's play, 50 remaining, so that's another time left. 18 left before T, which will therefore be somewhere around about the 3.30, 3.35 mark depending on how much spin we get and Borthwick continuing to wind at slip as Travaskis continues to twirl his left arm spin from the Lumley end balls to Douthwaite who's forward defending to Beddingham at short cover having retreated from that silly point position and surely Borthwick is going to be bowling the next over now bouncing around like a dervish at slip as uh, Dowsway defends that one down towards square leg and uh, keeper Eckersley is first off his blocks and fields it about 10 metres from the bat. I think Dowsway's going to open his shoulders before too long against Travaskis. That's probably not the ball to do it where he was flexing and had to change his shot rather late in the end. Played it defensively to uh, backward point in this no run. There was, uh, there was a step forward there from Douthwaite as if he was going to try and smack it back over the bowler. Travaskis bowls. Douthwaite reads a flatter one and defends it well. Just got to wait a fraction, Douthwaite, not give away his intentions before uh, taking a stride down the pitch. Travaskis bowls. Douthwaite on the back foot. Defends back to the bowler. Gets a hand to it. Borthwick goes through some bowling actions at slip. As uh, he will surely come into the attack to uh, while away the overs until that new ball. Nine overs and one ball away. Travaskis ball. Douthwaite does give him the charge and drives it nicely through the covers. Well, I was expecting a big aerial shot straight. But in the end, he read it well, did Douthwaite. Smacked it all along the ground, and he moves on to 41, and Glamorgan on to 189 for six. And that is a deficit of 217. So, Martin, <laughs> that is one record that you can oh, forget well, about yeah, for today. Ah, there's still one to go, though. Leicestershire, 216 in uh, 2005. All right. It could it was, be the was, second sorry, biggest. This week, no offense. All right. Um, Kevin uh, Mark Church the Surrey commentator is just congratulating Gus Atkinson on a terrific innings 33 not out from 117 balls <laughs> doing a job though doing a job yep it's uh it's an uh, interesting operator on Twitter Mark Church at back and across yes it's, it's quite, quite brief, some of his entrants. Well batted, Opo, for most of them. Mm -hmm. Also, that's a fine innings, so and so. I was really looking forward to doing four days with him last week, because I knew we'd have a good laugh. And mm. hadn't done a county championship match with him since 2016, and then I had to ring him to tell him it was all off, and it wasn't happening. He came up here for the, uh, the semi final of the One Day Cup left his mum's in Tunbridge at three o'clock in the morning to drive up here. Oh, he's, he's a maniac in driving. Uh, well, early starts... Well, maybe, no, yeah. not, not his actual driving, <laughs> yes. but his, uh, the timing of his he driving. He not have any points at all. No, 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 I'm not suggesting yeah. that he breaks the law, but no. in terms of the times of day at which he chooses to operate. Yeah. So Scott Borthwick's brought himself on with uh, nine overs to go to the new ball. First one's a dot ball. Second one's a dot ball as it's played to Beddingham out in the covers. Borthwick so far this season has bowled where am I? 104 overs, taken 11 wickets. Used himself sparingly, I suppose you could say. Just trying to look for a breakthrough here. Salter on strike. Pads up to this one. 
One of my favourite um, churchy quotes was, uh, oh, I couldn't sleep last night, so I edited some video about three o'clock in the morning. Mm. What? Yes, not good. Wolf again again. This is defended on a length. He's got for Durham 325 wickets in all formats with 182 in first class cricket. 219 first class wickets in all. Best figures 6 for 70 at the Oval in 2013 when Durham won. And that remains their only win at the Oval in a championship game. This is uh, played off towards point as well. No run. They have beaten Surrey away at Guildford, but that's the only time they've won at the Oval. This is an attempted cut, and it's slammed in off the keeper's pads. Did it come out of his gloves? Let's have a look at this. Last ball of the over. Is that a half chance? I can't tell what that's hit. It might have hit... It's gone. In, possibly gone into the floor and hit Slip's knee. Or maybe ricocheted off the keeper's pad or foot. Tidy over though, it's a maiden to start with. Yeah, very quiet afternoon session. Glamorgan resumed after lunch at ten past one on a hundred and forty-five for five. So in an hour and twenty minutes they have added forty-four runs for the loss of Chris Cook's wicket caught behind off Cochlin for five. Well I've reached my two thirty suggestion, so I'm bust. As uh, Liam Travaskis Will continue to purvey his art from the Lumley end and Dowthwaite stretches a long way forward and ball trickles out on the leg side retrieved by Jones, another whose shades are on the back of his head, I mean they should be on the front surely, an afternoon like this Javask is also in shades bowls a full toss that Dowthwaite drives to mid off and there's no run and the throw comes in over Ackersley's head but is well backed up by Borthwick he does have his back to the sun though and he's got a, a low peaked cap over his eyes so that might be one of the reasons oh, it's the glare though it's the glare Draskis uh, bowls Dalthwaite steps back and forces through the offside but uh, Durham now do have a sweeper in place on the cover boundary Ben Rain and therefore it is one run instead of four. They also now have added 39, these two and 113 uh, balls. Silly point resumes for Salter as Travaskis bowls and Salter drives, doesn't quite middle it, up to mid on, and there's no run. All fairly gentle at the moment. The lull before the storm of the new ball, or Durham will hope it's a storm anyway. Travaskis bowls and uh, Salter dead batting that back down the strip. No run. Just got a very gentle breeze for the first time today from the east. It's just bringing a little bit of a smell off the river, just from the smell of Windermere from last week, just the trees and the water. Travaskis bowled slightly faster. That's clipped something on the way through, I think. It'll go for a single. And umpire Pratt judges there's a little bit of bat in that. A bit of bat and pad and enough to uh, take it past Eckersley anyway. 191 for six. Salter has retained the strike by taking a single off the last ball of the over. Andrew Salter, 14 not out. Dan Douthwaite is 42 not out. And uh, I dare say they're one or two of this crowd who, who don't mind a bit of uh, Glamorgan resistance because it yeah. means they have the excuse for a bit, bit longer in the sunshine. Yeah, and how many of them will not be seeing each other again for the winter after today? This is the last home game for Durham this season. The conversations of I hope you went to well. Here we are on a, one of the hottest days of the year. Both with balls. This has gone off to Beddingham in the covers off Salter No Run. See we've had the, the window open all day, but I don't feel like we've had any fresh air sort of coming in. It's been so still, hasn't it? But yeah. the breeze has just picked up a little bit in the last few minutes. Oh, this is swept out towards the mid wicket boundary for one. I remember these two guys at the end of the season at uh, Kent a few years ago. 
one said, well, I'll help you into well, and the other said, well, I'm not sure I shall be back here next year, and his, his friend's, why is that? He said, well, I don't know if I'll see my way through another winter. And I was thinking, <laughs> try and look on the bright side. <laughs> <laughs> you might be here next year. In fact, there's a very good chance you probably will be. Southwick, big stride forward to defend this one from Borthwick. Did you say it was at Kent? Yeah. Yeah, they do you know have the a bar where the library was. They do have a very elderly membership yeah, at Kent, yeah, yeah. some of them. Yeah. Borthwick bowls. And Southwick goes back into his crease. It looks initially as if he's going to pull that through the leg side and then whips his wrists through the ball and plays it out towards the cover boundary instead for one. You can just imagine. Douthwaite with uh, an angel and a devil balanced on each shoulder. Devil saying, go on, give it a whack. Angel saying, no, defend. Wait, wait, wait. Solder back into the crease. With this delivery from Borthwick and it's played defensively to point. The angel's winning most of the time for Douthwaite at the moment. Last ball of the over, and it's turned off the legs this time by Salter out towards mid-wicket for one. He'll keep strike, and Glamorgan are moving to the heady heights of 200. They're 194 for six. They trailed Durham by 212 here on the BBC. Sadly, too late for bonus points. Glamorgan will have to settle for two from this game. Andrew Salter is a bit more zen-like, calm. It's appropriate really Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance which is his uh, principal hobby or hobby come business now outside the game runs a uh, or helps to run a, a motorbike haunt called Baffle House up in Pontypool is that a like a cafe type thing is it or? it's it's a cafe come meeting place so come it's a popular sort of for a bike in route bit like you'd have in the Yorkshire Dales or something like that. Well, he's hoping it will be popular. Yeah. Hello. We're back with Seam. And we're not in the new ball yet. Coughlin starts with a decent delivery that uh, Salter leaves through to Eckersley. Also a, a keen photographer is uh, Salter. So he's got a range of interests outside the game. It's always good. I was talking to a guy the other day when I was over in Cumbria who's um, got ten motorbikes. Oof. As uh, Salter drives slightly uppishly but uh, gets away with it. Didn't time that one at all. He'll pick up a couple of runs as ta Taylor Clark uh, retrieves from halfway back to the boundary. 196 for six. What you get here in the summer as soon as the light of nights come, Sunday mornings, they head off either up into the borders and in the Scotland or around the Dales, Northumberland, and then there's a, a burger van parks in the Wildfowl and Wetlands car park at Washington, and hundreds of motorbikers converge there. The Salter slaps a shorter ball straight to mid off along the ground, no run. I think they go on a Wednesday night and a Sunday afternoon. And oh, no, man, that must be a gold mine, that place. I remember years and years ago, over in the, the western section of the, the North Pennines on the road from Kendall down towards Skipton on the A. It's Coughlin Bowles and uh, Salter plays again through the offside. He's timed that one nicely and that one should race away to the cover boundary. Taylor Clark in pursuit and the 200 is up for Glamorgan for the first time for weeks <laughs> since Trent Bridge of 74.4 overs but with six wickets down Salter also spent uh, a British winter in New Zealand doing some work with Jeetan Patel but um, I suspect its main motivation as Coughlin bowls to Salter and defends to point was uh, to undertake a, a motorbike ride the length of New Zealand. And I did try to read one of his blogs and I didn't understand the blooming word of it. So. <laughs> did you say three matches this was? was it? I think it was not. Well, that's the uh, as, uh, that's 
off a thickish edge from Salter. As well, since the the visit to Nottingham oh, for the cup. for the cup oh, final. Right. Uh, yeah, Glamorgan not making three figures against Essex, and obviously in the first innings of uh, this match at the end of a Coglin over two hundred for six. Uh, yeah, I think the scores were well. The scores were good in the first innings. In uh, Morgan's previous championship game back in uh, whenever it was, many moons ago, when they drew with North Ants, having piled up 462 for four in their uh, one and only innings on that occasion. Glamorgan with uh, Cook 170 not out, uh, Cook 133 not out, Carlson 170 not out. But those halcyon days have yet to be recaptured. Hopefully this is uh, just a step back towards some sort of batting form for some of Glamorgan's batsmen, albeit coming too late. Borthwick to continue as uh, Cook and Maynard continue their perambulation around the ground. Flip-flop weather. Shorts and flip-flops. Borthwick then, leg spin from the flink end. It's a... Uh quicker medium pace sort of ball a little bit short of a length but hasn't gone anywhere other than the cover area to Beddingham it's a dot ball flicks the ball from one hand to the other as he turns to come back in the ball that's way forward to this one now, I was going to say on that uh, that country road from Kendall down towards Skipton you go through all these lovely little villages in the North Pennines there's a place called Devil's Bridge which is popular with the the motorbikers and it must be well over 20 years ago the burger van there sold for more than a million pounds wow both way in that's a big stride forward that's a lot of burgers yes it is probably not so many lattes back in the day <laughs> 200 for six the deficit is 206 new ball is uh, less than five overs away Nottinghamshire have declared at 339 for 8 in their first division match, leaving Lancashire 4 4 4 to win. That's ball played to point off Borthwick. Here he comes with the next delivery. This is number 5 in the over. Dot balls so far. Dalthwaite again finds Jones at point. Anth Rain says, I made it to Trent Bridge after your advice, but I can still hear glammy, glammy, glammy ringing in my ears. <laughs> Looks like Durham are going to get some kind of revenge today. Yeah, it was uh, good to have a vociferous minority at uh, Trent Bridge. Well, it's watched by Dalfwe. He gives it a good look as it goes into the keepers. He's almost got his nose on the there. <laughs> End of the over, a maiden. Well, uh, Kevin Hand and our friend Adrian Harms down in the press box at Hove for Sussex against Middlesex have just been bought an ice cream so I've just responded and said that so last month as myself and Scott Reid were commentating at South Northumberland on Durham against Lancashire when a lovely lady brought us a couple of 99s in which sparked a big debate about monkey's blood do you call it monkey's blood in um, Wales? I'm not aware of that phrase a raspberry sauce you stick on the ice cream on a 99 <laughs> I haven't thought of like that. Oh, it's known as monkey's blood up here. I did ask, how far south does it not become monkey's blood? Is it just a northeastern phrase? Oh, well, that's, that must have been the monkey that was hung in Hartlepool. Well, that's the, uh, the fable, isn't it? Angus the monkey. Football club mascot turned mayor, wasn't he? Yeah. So, not a new ball, but an old ball being propelled with some steam by Paul Coughlin. Three wickets already to his credit and will remain on three as Salter ignores the ball outside off stump. That's quite a good uh, quite a good bit of carry for an old ball at 76 overs old, isn't it? Mm. Be a bit more carry still in a few overs time. With various people doing exercises Travascus among them but uh, he's been taken off it's Coglin balls and salt in behind it playing it out into covers the throw is whipped in into gloves of uh, Eckersley 
Rushworth was doing a bit of flexing down at fine leg making sure that everything's in working order and hasn't rusted up since lunchtime 200 for 6 Glamorgan trail by 206 there's Coglin into bowl to Salter up on his boots and driven to mid on attempted maybe the Yorker on Midland leg Salter coped with it reasonably well he's on 22 and uh, it's got a reasonable average this season but on the on the back of lots of bits and pieces of not out innings faces up to another ball outside off stump that's a poor delivery from Coglin just inside the tram lines taken by Eckersley moving to his right in front of Beddingham 200 for six so uh, Durham claiming three wickets in the morning session those of Byram without addition to his overnight 17 albeit having survived 34 further balls and crucially Rutherford caught off Rushworth for 71 as Salter defends another one from Coglin Ben Rain chipped in by bowling Kieran Carlson for 14 and after lunch Coglin found the outside edge of a Chris Cook attempted drive. Ned Eckersley took the catch. That was 151 for six. It is now 200 for six, so we're one short of a 50 partnership. There's a tall, powerful Coglin is in. Bowls outside off stump. Salter again ignores it. Coglin <laughs> stands not with hands on hips, but with um, a somewhat quizzical look in the, the middle of the wicket, saying, why am I wasting my effort? A, a maiden over, but uh, several that didn't need playing from the Glamorgan point of view. Glamorgan remain on 200 for six. Listening to BBC Sport Online with Arden Emerson, myself, Nick Webb. Cameos today from uh, Ashley Thorpe and Edward Bevan. Tony Waters, as he tweeted, he said, Is this the only match where Durham have had five half centuries with nobody converting to three figures? Oof. I'd have thought that would be quite unusual. It's not, because they've done it twice before. At home to Gloucestershire in 2002 and away to North Hans in 2014. Both again here and bowling to Dalfit, that's defended. Both were playing keepies up. Oh, he's let himself down there. <laughs> Just had a little rhythm go and he'd flick the ball up with the outside of his right foot and was alternating between feet and then it just ran away from him and he looked so disappointed but can he get a wicket and break this partnership here he comes again Dalthwaite plays the ball to bedding him in the covers there's and a lot uh, going on in those you know, in this partnership yeah he's punches, going one there? way and flicking his wrists through the other isn't he looks like he's about to play through the leg side and then at the last moment changes his mind but he's playing with a spin I suppose the leggy mm. comes down the track drives it back to him one bounce and uh, I thought for a second there, for a nano yeah. that was a quantum ball. Yeah, it looked like it for a moment from this distance. He hit it right into the ground, just in front of his feet, and then it looped back to Borthwick. In comes Borthwick again, and that's defended. Dalfway on 43. More keepies up from Borthwick. Ian Evans on Twitter pointing out that Salter shares his love for motorcycles with George North, the Wales rugby three-quarter. Again comes the bowler, Dalthwick cuts that one away. That's the 50 partnership out towards the cover boundary for one. So it's a 50 partnership off 145 balls. The scoreboard informs us. Dalthwick has 28 of those runs and Salter 22. This one's short on the leg side. That is the end of the over. Jed's just looking at the stats and said, have you factored in Sam Robson in the race to a thousand runs? And I said, well, yes, well, after, after, after this knock. So, Beddingham's got 992 for Durham. Libby, 976 for Worcestershire. Robson, 973 for Middlesex. And Carlson, 842 now for Glamorgan. And he said, uh, maybe you need to factor in anybody else who's due to face Sussex this Sunday after the massive scores from the 
Middlesex openers in that game with Mark Stoneman getting a big hundred as well. He points out Leicestershire's Lewis Hill only needs another 243. But he'd have to get going, bat first, get the runs on the ball before Durham and all those other rival sides have managed to have a bat. New over, Douthwaite driving down the ground and he's squeezed it past the infield. And they'll go through for a single hit. That one hard down into the ground did Douthwaite to move under 45 not out. Glamorgan under 202 for six as Rushworth steps up his preparations for returning to the attack in approximately two overs time. Coglin from the Lumlian bowls to Salter, plays it back to the bowler. And given the Coglin's efficiency in the, in this match with seven for forty at the moment, he's um, might be slightly miffed to be bowling with the the old mm. ball. Mm -hmm. I thought he deserved a chance for the new one. Well, maybe they've just turned to him because he's he's been successful in breaking partnerships, hasn't he? And he's nearly been instantly successful. As Salter gets a good one up in the block on and does well to dig it out. That's a Got a wicket with his uh, fourth ball yesterday, his first ball today. Mm. So, just looking back at this picture of... Um, Sam Keir's brought the... Uh, the press officer for Sussex has brought the ice creams for Kevin Hand and... Adrian Arms. No monkey's blood on theirs. They're just bare. Bare 99s. As, uh, Salter glances so that one down to fine leg for four runs. Just straying outside or on the outside leg. Stump was Coughlin that. Salter got it fine but got it away and probably good for him that he got it fine because it didn't give Rushworth a chance of cutting it off. 26 to Salter. 206 for six. The deficit is a mere 200. Well, Rachel's looked at a photograph of myself and Scott with our 99s with the monkey's blood in, and she said, I approve of the monkey's blood, and I was told off at home for asking for it. Mm. So, Salter oh, pulls. Oh. He's got that one not off the meat of the bat, but he's oh. got it over mid-wicket strongly enough to get four runs for it. I thought Michael Jones was interested for a second there, but uh, pitched a fair way back towards the ropes and Salter gets his second boundary of the over attempting to make a, a little bit of hay against the old ball with the new ball on the way so two successive fours Scott Parkinson's got a statistic here Tony Waters asking about the five half centuries and no century Coughlin bowls and Salter defends the last ball of the over Salter has 30 Glamorgan are 210 for six the deficit is 196, and there is one over to go before the new ball is available. He says, I saw something the other day which said 81 is the lowest high score in an innings of over 500, which didn't involve uh, a century. Doesn't directly answer the question, but it's another good stat and suggests <laughs> a similar point that the runs were shared out. Mm. Well, everyone got going to some extent for Durham, didn't they? Coughlin's 20 was the lowest score of the innings. It could quite easily have been seven half centuries or more with uh, Beddingham and Dixon getting out of a well, blow short apiece. Well, there are nine overs to go until the tea interval is scheduled. Will Glamorgan survive the imminent new ball and get to tea. Luke Fletcher's reached a milestone today. The Nottinghamshire bowler has now taken 400 first class wickets. His 57th in the county championship this season. So he's uh, seven ahead now of Chris Rushworth of Durham this year. Another excuse to plug his book. <laughs> well, we're coming up to nearly three o'clock here now, aren't we? And another news bulletin's on the horizon. Not half pot pickers. Mm. Last over before the new ball will be taken. Borfick bowls. It's defended. I can't imagine they'll hold any longer. They want to get this done and dusted Durham. Mm. Deficits now 196 at 210.46. Borfick bowling to Douthwaite. Douthwaite with a straight back plays it back past the bowler and it's cut off by. 
Rushworth just behind her for one run. Yeah, the uh, mid on and mid off are, are halfway back for the misses, aren't they? So it's an easy single lap. Salter on strike now. On 30. He plays the ball across towards square leg for one. Yeah, I wonder if Dowthwaite will uh, open his shoulders in the next couple of deliveries. Ball three to Dowthwaite. Oh, he nearly missed that one. Got the last bit of bat on it. It's come off the edge and rolled across towards the cover area. Two balls of this 80th over left. Borthwick in, Dalthwaite down the track, dabs it away. He's appealing for LBW. He's, <laughs> he's, what, he's taking about four or five steps there. <laughs> Probably hit it as well, but other than that. Nice <laughs> ball, and I would imagine we'll see the new ball taken. Dalthwaite plays that past point and out towards the covers for one. He moves on to 46. And he'll keep strike, 212-4-6. Now then, the new ball to be taken as Ian Blackwell kicks the old one away. And, of course, the issue with the new ball is it can go to the boundary quicker than the old one. So, there's that factor. But Durham will be hoping it's the golden nugget. It is waved by Neil Pratt. <laughs> Worcestershire's Daryl Mitchell has confirmed his retirement at the end of the season. Been around a long time. He has the dubious record of being dismissed by Chris Rush with more than any other county player. I think it's something now nine times now. Mm. Bunny. He wrote in Rushworth's benefit year brochure two or three years ago, there were three things that kept him awake at night. Too many Jaeger bombs. <laughs> slightly undercooked prawns and the thought of Chris Rush with, with a brand new cherry in his hand first thing on a morning <laughs> <laughs> right here is Rushworth with a brand new cherry in his hand on a Tuesday afternoon oh. and Dalthwaite gets a brute of a ball that he does well to get on top of that was a useful start it spat a little bit and, uh, well played by Dalthwaite played it down into the ground 47 not out from Dalthwaite. Looking for his uh, first century since Lancashire in round... Half century since Lancashire in round five. As that's down leg side, well taken by Eckersley. Yeah. Diving acrobatically to his left and collecting it with one paw. Dalthwaite... 57 against Yorkshire in round one of the year before the snow came 61 against Lancashire before the rain came didn't have a a lot of luck with the weather in my previous visits to the north of England not so this week Rushworth bowls Dowthwaite defends and the covers no run. That's wait one of those Glamorgan players whose uh, momentum of the season was rather interrupted by the hundred. There's a last minute call up for Manchester Originals. They played just one game. Rush was Bowls, Dalthwaite leaves at the last moment, through to Eckersley. 213 for six. Can Glamorgan resist until the T interval? 7.2 overs away. The last two, Carey and Hogan, are certainly tail-enders who like to put back to ball rather than hang around and worry about defensive shots. Rushworth into Dalthwaite to edges but gets runs. Four of them down to third man. It was not fully under control. 
It's probably about ankle height when it uh, flew to the right of the slips. And Douthwaite reaches his half century with his eighth boundary. And that has taken 92 balls, which is probably on the slower 50s of uh, Douthwaite's first class career. As it ran away towards uh, Cook and Maynard, captain and coach, doing a, another lap in their flip-flops. Enjoying the fine weather while it lasts. 217 for six, Douthwaite has 51. And Rushworth is into bowl, outside off stump, no shot. I wonder how many of those fours have gone through third man. Hmm. Well... We've continually heard in commentary that it's not important because of the runs on the board, but I think it would probably be most of them. How many half centuries he's had this season? Then this is uh, third. He got 61 against Lancashire and Manchester, 57 against Yorkshire and Leeds, and now this one. Yep. So, uh, Mike's travelling north then. Mm. Of course, Lancashire's in the Midlands, isn't it, really? <laughs> not from where I live, it's well, not. Well, it is where we are. It's 145 miles away from me. It's something like 96 miles to Headingley. Maddie Potts, new ball in hand from the Finkel end. Bowling to Salter. Salter drives an over-pitched ball through acres of space in the covers and away for four. Like I said, the new ball goes to the boundary quicker than the old one. Now, Douthwaite to my score box. Box of headline scores for the uh, BBC website reports. Update for uh, BBC Radio Newcastle listeners to come very shortly. Potts comes in and bowls. Oh, now, that's... An unusual delivery. It's more than a Yorker length delivery. It's gone past the crease line and pitched probably just past the stumps and then Daisy cut it along the ground. And Ned Eckersley did well to stop it. He was at full stretch and I think he's taken it right on his finger ends there. He looks to be in a bit of discomfort. Picked himself up. It wasn't a good ball from anyone's point of view. Ah. Pots in again looking for his radar. Now that one swings away alarmingly towards first slip. comes in and bowls that's a better ball but again it's over pitched and it's driven away for four more straight back past mid off it was the first one that was actually anywhere near the stumps but Solder had time to watch it coming in and met it on the bounce two hundred and twenty five for six 181 the deficit surely the remark gonna end up having a bat again here I doubt it the score now that's the partnerships now 74 pots again to Salter he leaves this one just beyond off stump an update for Radio Newcastle in the next minute or so. 225 for 6. Salter is on 39 as Potts bowls. And he defends this one. The ball rolls to Jones at mid-off and that's the end of the over. So 181 behind Glamorgan. And uh, there are now 38 overs remaining in the day. Durham only need the six wickets, but they haven't had one since the 54th over, and we're now in the 83rd. 
Yeah, it's been six down for a while. Four to go. I think, um, well, Van der Hochten can hang around, but uh, the last two will probably choose to try to uh, address back to ball. Well, Durham have just been forced to take the new ball because Glamorgan are still batting and they are being delayed in victory here by a partnership now which has reached 78 runs from Down Douthwaite who's just moved on to uh, 55 of the four of Chris Rusworth. Andrew Salter at the other end has 39. These two have been batting for uh, 170 balls. The last wicket to fall was just after lunch when the skipper Chris Cook went for five off the bowling of Paul Coughlin caught by the keeper. So they were 151 for six at that point and still 255 behind. We're now in the 83rd over. They are 229 for six. They're 177 behind. There's still though 38 overs today for Durham to try and wrap this up inside three days. Commentary on the BBC website and the sports app. As uh, Rushworth bowls and uh, Douthwaite plays it away defensively on the offside, fielded by Lease at cover, and there's no run. Alex Lease taking that important catch to dismiss to dismiss Hamish Rutherford. Important because it got rid of uh, Glamorgan's top scorer, and also important because it got Rushworth his 50th first-class wicket of the season. Rushworth into bowl to Douthwaite here on BBC Sport Online and Douthwaite defends that one to mid-wicket. No run. Rushworth 1 for 60. He's into his 20th over so he hasn't been uh, particularly expensive but it's been Coughlin who's done the principal damage. He's claimed the wickets of Selman, Byram and Chris Cook. One apiece for Rushworth, Potts and Rain. Three slips and a gully for Rushworth with the new ball. To bowl to Douthwaite, who leaves outside off stump. You can see the maker's name gleaming in the sunshine as that one swung through to the keeper. No run. So, Glamorgan could take this game into the final session of day three which is not much to shout about but it's better not doing so five overs remain of this session plus two balls Rushworth balls Douthwaite blocks to mid on and there's no run I don't think Durham will yet be worrying about uh, having to come back tomorrow with 37 overs left of the day's play. But uh, Dowsweight and Salter getting a uh, good bit of uh, extended batting practice, improving their averages, and uh, Salter with his highest score of the season, 39. As I say, he's had a lot of not-outs. As Douthwaite drives, doesn't quite time it. Drives to mid-wicket and there's no run. Salter, before this innings, had 84 first-class runs for three times out. At an average of 28. Which included... Four not-outs in his tally as well. So it'd been not out. Four hours seven before the first innings. He just made two in the first innings. But uh, he too might have a few visions of a, a half century. Andrew Salter's first of the season. Potts to Boulder Salter. Got three slips in place. Running in from the Finkel end. Running away from us. And that's a leave. To be fair to the the Glamorgan batsmen in this uh, seventh wicket partnership they've uh, they've had good shot selection and, and good leave selection as well yeah. they haven't uh, diced with danger when they haven't needed to so far
Waltz in again, another leave. And the ball is just still doing a bit off the pitch, isn't it? What's their partnership now? 79? 78? 49 plus 29, 78. So the highest partnership for a seventh wicket stand for Glamorgan against Durham mm -hmm. was in 1999, Evans and Shaw right. in Cardiff, 79. Mm. Baller comes in again and they're not even having to play at these. This is why they've off stump again. Alan Evans and yeah. Adrian Shaw. Adrian Shaw still on the Glamorgan staff as uh, one of the second team coaches. Did have a spell as first team coach before Matthew Maynard's first spell in the job. Oh, that's a better ball. Now that angled right in sharply and then moved away. And he played and missed there, Salter. He didn't know much about that one. Yeah, first time for a while he's... Uh, had that sort of been beaten in that sort of way. On that occasion, Glamorgan won by three wickets. Durham made 448 in the first innings, Glamorgan 387. Durham all out for 185, and Glamorgan chased down foot 247. Another leave. Now, that was quite close to off stump, but it was leave a ball. Yeah, well, it's, we're still heading for a 24-2 victory on points to uh, Durham, but uh, Glamorgan earning a, a little bit of self-respect back in the process. Deficit still at 177. They're a massive way off, but they are eating up time. Oh, that stood it in. Surely too high. They all give up. He looked to pull it through the leg side there, Salter. Thud it into his uh, thigh pad. Potts maiden. One for 55 from 19 overs from him. Five maidens. Ripple of applause. Can't be far off uh, T now, are we? Four overs. Four overs to go for T. Well, that would be a psychological barrier for Glamorgan if they get to T without losing another wicket. But then, and I say this so many times in commentaries over the years, T can often be such a rude interruption to a batting team. <laughs> if they've got a set pair going. Just that little 17, 18 minute spell back in the pavilion. And they've had their eye in, they've got a partnership developing. Can Durham break the partnership before T? It'll be Rushworth to try to do so. And Dalthwaite fiddles at that. There's an appeal from. <laughs> Slip. Scott Borthwick. <laughs> Which um, yeah. Eckersley and Rushworth joined in about uh, 30 seconds later. He went round forward appealing to Neil Pratt from second slip and then sort of tilted his head sideways like anyone, a spaniel. Anyone with me, mate? Uh, come on, mates. It was Johnny No Mates. <laughs> He's got his head in his hands. We had a dog called Mac, so he used to look at me like that and tilt his head sideways whenever I said anything to him. <laughs> Did you raise your finger at him or wag it? Rushworth bowls, Dalthwaite leaves. Well, I'll tell you something, the tail's wagging here. <laughs> yes, yeah, so not some... Um, yeah, Max the Springer Spaniel was daft as an absolute brush. <laughs> so, uh, Glamorgan... Advance somewhat more uncertainly since the introduction of the new ball. They looked all right against the spinners. Rushworth into Dalthwaite, who's beaten again. Pushing forward, excellent line and length by Rushworth, finding the old corridor of uncertainty. Dalthwaite was duly uncertain, but uh, thankfully for him, did not make contact. If I took him down the beach and the tide was sort of slightly out and the rocks were exposed, he'd see the seagulls on the rocks and try to swim out to get to them. And he'd be barking and he'd get all the way out the rocks and then they would just fly and land back on shore. <laughs> and he'd just go round and round in circles all day. Rushworth in. Dalthwaite doesn't need to play a shot on that one. 
goes through to the keeper. Well, I used to love being in the water. No doubt uh, gave him plenty of exercise and, and minimal effort from yourself, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It was just some days you couldn't get him back. <laughs> Next delivery from Rushworth on its way in the Chesler Street sunshine and Douthwaite oh. almost plays on. I'm not sure whether he was trying to defend or leave there, but he chopped it down and the ball continued on its path and just shot past off stump and through to the keeper. I think he'd left that one and he'd taken his bottom hand off the bat, hadn't he? Temperatures recorded this afternoon in the UK 30.1 centigrade at North Holt, which is just sort of northwest London and 30.6 for Jersey so far next delivery from Rushworth the Douthwaite oh again gets up off uh, off a length does well to keep that one under control as well so an excellent over from Chris Rushworth it is a maiden but it is not a wicket maiden Seventh maiden delivered by Rushworth. 21 overs, 1 for 60. Glamorgan have 4 overs, I believe, till the T and Vault. 3 overs now. 35 remain of the day. Can these two resist until the interval? Potts. Balls to Salter. He doesn't know where it's gone. He's fended it off one-handed and he's got no idea where that is. He's been called through by Douthwaite. Went behind him towards square leg. Starting to reach T and other gra other matches around the country. Potts balls playing a miss this time from Bathwaite. Good ball that one. Uh, Papua New Guinea lost in the poor. I knew 134 wouldn't be enough. Mm. Lancashire 30 for one at T at old at. Uh, they're at old. No, oh, where are they? They're at uh, Trent Bridge, aren't they? Potts balls to Douthwaite. Douthwaite defends the ball, bounces into the ground, and runs up to Lees at mid off. So they need another 414 to win after Notts declared their second innings on 339 for eight. Warwickshire playing Hampshire are 67 for none. They are chasing. Another, well, they need 296 to win, 67 for none there in Birmingham. In comes the bowler again, and this is driven at, and it's squirted away wide of the slip cord <laughs> and down to third man. Don't really think that was where he was aiming to no, I was looking through the covers. It sounded yeah. like a good shot. I think that's come off the bottom corner of the bat and gone up towards the health club boundary. Um, I'll draw your attention to a tweet from David Hobbs, the cricket writer for Crick Info, who is at Edge Baston. He says, 2020 gets a lot of stick for being trivial, but what about the opposite? This afternoon's session at Edge Baston has been unbearably tedious, as well as ultra-responsible, and yet connoisseurs will doubtless feel the need to term it engrossing. <laughs> well, if you're committed, mm. if you're a, a partisan supporter, you probably will find it engrossing. In comes Potts again. And that's a leave. Quite I'm tight to the line of the batsman there, but enough bouncing it to know it was going over. I mean, this session really, was it 89 runs for, for one wicket? Doesn't sound anything special and probably won't affect the course of the game, but in terms of Glamorgan actually restoring a, a little bit of pride, it's uh, probably been quite useful. What's now the highest seventh wicket stand for Glamorgan against Durham as well? 
Potts once more, 234 for six the score. This is defended. And that's the end of the over. So they trail by 172, and these two have now added 83 in 194 balls. 193 balls, I think it is. So it beats the 79 from Alan Evans and Adrian Shaw at Cardiff in 99. There we are. There's one for uh, an arcane corner of the record books. Maybe since these two counties have only been playing for 30 years, it's uh, not one of the more hotly contested records in uh, the world of cricket stats. 2.34 for six, two overs till T unless wickets fall. Rushworth in and Salter no shot so this has been good watchful stuff so far from uh, these two batsmen who haven't had a, a lot of um, loose deliveries to accelerate the scoring but they've taken advantage of the, the gaps in the Durham field when they've had a, a tight infield And uh, at least got Glamorgan uh, a semi-respectable second innings. It's Rushworth bowls. And Salter defends down to Travaskis Gully. There's no run. Still glorious weather here. Just a couple of very wispy clouds away to our left. But uh, spectators hoping for a blast of late summer sunshine have got just that. as uh, Glamorgan look to take this game as deep into today as they possibly can. Rushworth in towards us. Balls to Salter, who plays absolutely no shot to a wideish delivery outside off stump. So, uh, Durham will be hoping that, uh, as Martin mentioned, that need to reset for the batsman after T will uh, help them to uh, break this partnership which is getting a little bit annoying not seriously threatening to derail the, the course of the matches yet it needs to be three times as big to do that there's Rushworth balls and Salter pushes forward ball goes through to the keeper Salter may tell you who played inside it Rushworth, I tell you, he was beaten. There was a phrase that Liam Travaskis used in the interview last night where he said, Glamorgan are allowed to bat well. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you, sometimes you have to uh, respect the other side's efforts. Durham have dominated most of the sessions. So that's coming back a little bit, but uh, safe enough leave from Andrew Salter, the fifth ball of uh, the over. And this is probably the first session that Glamorgan have won out of the eight so far. Mm. That 54 run partnership for the second wicket on day one. Really the only time where you felt Glamorgan were in the game. If you look back until now, yep. having seen what we've witnessed over the last three days, two and a half days. Yeah, and even so, Durham had won that uh, won that session by the lunch interval. Yeah. As Glamorgan suffered a catastrophic clatter just before lunch. Right, a leg gully mm. has been placed by Rushworth to bowl to Salter. Oh. And did he get a bat on that? I the keeper got a glove to it. It's running away towards the boundary. We'll find out now. Yeah. It's a drop chance officially. So the plan sort of worked from Rushworth. He produced a chance, but Eckersley couldn't hang on to a very difficult diving chance. Salter Just moves to 44, 238 for six. Looking at the replay, you can't, can't actually see it hit his glove. I wonder if we'll see that again. Here we go. I'm going to show it again. It was an awful long way. Oh, by the time they've brought up the, the clip, he's already, it's already past him. I'm not sure he got a hand on that. Well, the keeper? Yeah. I think he did, yeah. I would have... I think he got a glove on it. Must have been the, the very, very tip of his finger end. And I think he slowed the passage of the ball slightly. Potts. 
It's a ball to Douthwaite. Oh, that's up in the air, but there's nobody near it. It's gone down towards fine leg to rush with for one. He just lofted a ball, drifting down the leg side there, out towards long leg. This is the last over before T. If there's a wicket in it, then we go to T. He did bring in the leg gully in Travaskis and then the ball went way wide down the leg side and uh, pots in again now that's going down the leg side hits the pad it's a dot ball I don't think Eckersley could have got further through the air if he tried oh no and he was absolutely at full stretch so not wishing to demean his efforts If we just put that on there. In comes Potts. That's left alone. I'm just looking where this hit his glove. They've now put the replay on the screen there. Mm -hmm. He's diving to his... He's at full stretch. You know the little insert between the finger and the thumb? Mm -hmm. It's hit the top of that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought we got something on it. Not the right part. Good effort, I have to say. Take the bit of floppy leather. Pots to Salter. Salter plays this towards point. Dot ball. So they've had the new ball now for 7.4 overs. Two balls to go to T. And Durham will be wondering, can they wrap it up in the final session of the day? There have been a number of occasions in recent years where they've come back on the fourth morning needing one wicket. This is defended by Salter. Derbyshire springs to mind. They allowed the last uh, an extra half hour. Yeah, 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 and still didn't get the wicket. We came back one day. I think we saw fourteen deliveries. Hmm. Only had half an hour last last week on day three against Essex. That was pretty miserable. But there's sunshine around, and we're paid to watch cricket. Hmm. Pots balls that swings away, and that is T. So. A little mini victory for Glamorgan in that afternoon session as they reach T at 239 for six. And uh, the deficit 167. So Dalthwaite has 660. 60. And at the other end, Salter has 44. And the partnership. A record seventh wicket stand for Glamorgan against Durham. Currently 88 off two, 206 balls. So well played to them. A little bit of pride back for Glamorgan. Durham should still wrap it up today, but at least Glamorgan have, if belatedly, produced a bit of fight. Martin and myself will be back at quarter two ish with uh, Glamorgan 239 for six, trailing by 167. Just as they're heading off here, nice little touch from the club. They've just got a picture of Jamie, the supporter who they gave some kit to earlier today. The team photograph of him and his dad. And they've got that on the big TV screen. A nice little touch there. And he's just watching them coming off the, the field at the back of the stand there. Right.
We've always been good at designing niche products for consumers. So our thinking was if we can use the same design skills on products which have got more volume, we'll be more successful. The big issue was the plan to do it. We set a figure of a capacity to make 250,000 pieces a year. That's an ambitious target, that's our figure. So we then worked with the machinery designers to make the washing machines. Number one in this product, it's got to be reliable. A washing machine has a lot of hard work to do, and it's a very important part of most households. So reliability, reliability, reliability was a big issue. I think any new product, we've got to learn about it. Uh, and, and, and that's important. We've got to learn about it so we understand it inside out. And that's taken longer than we expected, but we've taken our time to make sure that it's right. There's a big appetite for buying British products, and rightly so. But we can't rely on that. We've got to make a product that competes with all the imports. And of course, remember, we've got our core business here of making domestic dehumidifiers and bottled water coolers and industrial dehumidifiers. So that takes our time, and we don't want to get this wrong. We've done 120,000 hours of testing washing machines here to make sure that it's absolutely reliable and does the job.
Okay, here we go then for the evening session on day three of Durham against Glamorgan in Chesley Street. Martin Emerson from BBC Radio Newcastle with you and uh, Nick Webb from BBC Radio Wales and Sport Online. Uh, we were questioning whether we'd be here at lunch. We are, and that's because of an 88-run partnership for the seventh wicket so far from Dan Douthwaite, who has 60, and Andrew Solder who has 44. So at T, Glamorgan, who started their second innings 406 behind, were 167 behind at 239 for six. I think it could be argued that Durham really could have bowled better with the new ball which they took um, around about eight overs ago. Yeah, there's been a, a little bit that's been able to be uh, to be left by this uh, this pair, but uh, they've had one or two slight alarms. Second eleven update from. Newport, lots of runs there. Yorkshire, 114 for one in reply to uh, Glamorgan's 343. And as Hove, uh, Durham uh, trailing on first innings against Sussex, uh, 358 for seven. That's a lead, 363 for seven, a lead of 111. Rushworth starts the afternoon uh, or the evening session from the Lumley end and the ball is played away by Douthwaite up towards the long off boundary. I'm not sure it's gone for four. I think Ben Rain's got there just before it was about to trickle over the rope. They run three. It's a purple bus heading up the hill past the castle. I wonder where that's going to. Not seen a bright purple bus before. Double decker. Most successful bowler for Durham seconds, George Drizzle. Three for eighty eight. The West Country Spinner, formerly with Gloucester. Salter on strike on 44 as Rushworth comes in. He's got three slips in place. That's gone down the leg side, taken by Ned Eckersley. Commented T, if that catch had been held last night, we wouldn't be here. 
<laughs> because they dropped an edge from uh, Rutherford off Rushworth when he was on 32 last night. Uh, demanding perfection, obviously. Well, it was a fairly straightforward chance. His gloves, glove work's been a bit mixed, it has to be said, but he's not been the regular keeper across the summer. That's the thing. He's been in and out and played in summers as a fielder and can't help. Rush within again. Salter forward to this one, plays it up to mid on, but as was also pointed out at lunchtime, they don't go out there determined to drop them. These things happen in cricket, don't they? The Beddingham's chance was one you'd normally see him snaffling nine and a half times out of ten. It was neck high coming at him towards his left hand, and he it first slip and he put it down. That was uh, Carlson. He was on six at the many, time. Didn't cost many, but he was yeah. out. In, it would cost him time rather than runs because he only made fourteen. Rush within, playing a miss from Salter. That <laughs> leaves him bit of pace and bounce there as well. Innings wins for uh, Essex over Gloucestershire in Division Two. Kent over Worcestershire in Division Three. Division One. Warwickshire 75 for no wickets need a further 221 to beat Hampshire at Edgbuston Lancashire 30 for 1 at Trent Bridge needing a further 414 against Knotts Salter waits as Rushworth comes in that swings well wide of off stump no need to offer a shot there no he looks rough. like he's warming himself up at mid on Lots of stretching exercises going on there. The new ball has not been used as profitably as either of the uh, previous two new balls by Durham in this game. I did say this morning, didn't I? I've you know, seen plenty of evidence this year of pitches flattening out here as the games go on. They did only use the, the little roller today. But Rush with the game comes in. Salter looks to play at one which goes down the leg side taken by the keeper now they did have a leg gully in before T for that ploy but not this time that's the end of the over little ripple of applause at tea time I looked round and there was a group of spectators in the stands all applauding I thought what are they, look what are they applauding at I was looking at behind the window frame couldn't see anything I looked on the TV screen it was a big message saying we'd like to thank Vic Domain and the ground staff for all their hard work this year so out there in all weathers and all hours as well yeah it's never uh, never easy with the delights of the British weather some grounds have been really pounded with uh, international commitments as well plus the, the hundred uh, strip at uh, square at Cardiff has been absolutely hammered with no games away from uh, headquarters for Hundred franchise games and three England international days. As uh, Rain is in to bowl and Dennis Waite defends to mid off, no run. Division three, Middlesex remarkably declared at 576 for five against Sussex. That really is a pounding. There's a century for White and 88 from Martin Anderson after that double century, 253 from Sam Robson, 174 from Mark Stoneman. 242 for six here, Glamorgan. Still 164 short of avoiding an innings defeat as uh, Dowsweight plays one gently out on the offside and there's no run. God, that must be a dull watch though, must not it? It's 676. Middlesex have now recorded their highest first class total. Surpassing their previous best of 642 against Hampshire in 1923. Oh, Kevin will be getting excited about the records. Have um, Sussex been hit by COVID replacements or something? As uh, Rain is in to bowl, and that's uh, defended out on the offside. Not sure if it's particularly COVID related. I think they're just experimenting a lot because they played a load of teenagers last week right. so I presume it's the same sort of side that uh, saying well we might as well give some kids some first team experience let's see what this yeah. Ali Orr's a young opener who did yeah. well against Glamorgan uh, Ollie Carter youngish keeper 
Daniel Abraham still a teenager, Carson Crocombe. Lots of youngsters there. As, uh, that's defended again by Douthwaite out on the offside. So Sussex taking the uh, long term gain approach and a bit of short term pain. So they've declared 676 for five. <laughs> Must be like an absolute pancake down there. Of course, Phil Salt is uh, leaving them, isn't they? So uh, might as well give the they dropped the skipper as well recently, didn't they, Ben Brown? Yeah, he's playing in this one. As rain bowls to Downsway to drives backward of square on the offside and will collect four runs. A good meaty sound from Downsway's drive. That may have been. Got a little back from where he was aiming, but still pretty firm contact. 246 for six, Douthwaite on to 67, not out. Here on BBC Sport Online from BBC Newcastle, BBC Sport Wales. What a glorious vista. You managed to slip outside uh, in the interval. There's temperatures still uh, yeah, pleasant, it's still as ever. In the back, yeah, in the back lane there behind the the uh, media centre, it's a sun trap down there. Rain, two slips in a gully with this ball only 10 overs old. Into bowl to Douthwaite, who defends competently up to uh, mid off. Just the one scoring shot, the boundary in that over. Glamorgan 246 for six. A deficit. Of 160 runs as they seek to make Durham bat again. I know Paul Cogden bowled just before the new ball came and he's bowled 16 overs in this innings. Been pretty Rush impressive. 23, Potts 21, Potts 1 for 67, Cogden 3 for 37. He's been quick, he's been tight, and uh, it might be worth giving this ball to him in an over or two's time with it still fairly hard Rushworth bowls to Salter who leaves it and it bounces off the blade of his bat and goes through to the keeper just bouncing before it reaches him we're into the 11th over with a new ball been a few accidental contacts mm. in this match haven't there at least from Salter's point of view, it was deflected downwards. They are making 503 for 8. Five players got half centuries. Nobody got a century. It's the third time they've done that in first-class cricket. Did it in North Hans in a draw at the start of the season in 2014 when they had the last North Hans pair at the crease and couldn't get them out. North Hans didn't win a game that year. As uh, Rushworth comes in and bowls. It's just defended and... The fact that Durham didn't win the game with the last pair at the crease felt like a defeat as they were embarking on the defence of their 2013 title. And the, the North Hans players, newly promoted, celebrated it like a win and I went know, through the rest of the season without a win. Glamorgan survived a couple like that last uh, season, which was a fairly miserable one in uh, Red Bull cricket. I'll be back with you on commentary after 4 o'clock BBC Radio Wells update. So uh, against Gloucestershire in 2002 here, five half centurions, but no centurion. So the deficit when they declared was uh, a massive 406 for Glamorgan. And at lunch, they were 261 behind and five down and 128 for five. And Chris Cook went just after lunch for five. So they were then 255 behind, six down. But since then... These two have put on 95 runs. Previous delivery was a leave from Salter, who's on 44. Rushworth comes in again and bowls. Salter forward to that one, plays it back to the bowler. I mean, it's not unusual to see a team fighting for their life put a, a good partnership together and, you know, a couple of batsmen get out there for two or three hours together and you know, even if it was a partnership of, say, 140 or 150. And at the time these two came together, I said Glamorgan needed two big partnerships of around about 150 if they were to have any 
up in this game but you often see a partnership like this one which thwarts and delays and frustrates this is played to mid off no run there and then once it's broken the end can often come quickly so you just got to think from a Durham point of view here one wicket then they only need three well, I don't think what anybody wants to do is to come back tomorrow unless of course it's a beautiful day I don't think anybody wants to go home today because it's such a gorgeous sunny day and for many this will be the last day of cricket they see this year because if this is the end of the match that's it Durham aren't at home anymore this season Rushworth to Salter that's left alone outside the off stump and that is the end of the over so Durham playing in their 20th game against Glamorgan they've won five of those and they've lost six away and four at home so they're looking to make it win number six Ben Rain has the ball in his hand and Douthwaite has the bat in his hand and he's on 67 as Rain comes in right arm over from the Finkel end. Ball is played back along the ground towards the bowler's end, no run. If you want to get in touch, it's weirdcricket at yahoo.co.uk on email or you can tweet at Marty Cricket on Twitter. Rain bowls. Big stride forward there by Douthwaite turning the ball off towards mid wicket. Got on top of a low ball, played it safely away. Now, what I was suggesting a few minutes ago was Paul Coglin with this new ball in his hand, and it looks like he's stretching himself out ready for a spell. He's currently in the gully, they've got two slips in place. Southwaite waits as rain comes in and bowls. That's gone off towards the covers. I had an email ages ago from Doug who uh, said, you, I'm watching via YouTube. This was earlier today. He said, I'll be in attendance this afternoon. You briefly mentioned Philip Rain yesterday. Phil is related to Ben. Ben's brother Tom and father Stephen also related to myself plus my son Andrew. Philip played at Philadelphia, but most of his cricket at Tyndale in Hexham. Yeah. In comes. Oh, an edge! And it hasn't carried, has it? That's now then. What happened there? There was a nick. Was that dropped? Oh. I think that was a drop. Bellingham at first slip. I think there was a nick there from Dalfway and that has been put down I'm just wondering if it carried because Bellingham's got a bit of a smile on his face and I don't think he would be smiling if he he had dropped it it was difficult to see whether it got into his hands or not there a pitch just before rain balls again this is played to Lees at mid off I don't know if we can see that again to see whether that actually carried to Beddingham's hand or not. Don't think it was on 67. Rain in again, defended. Oh, 
Update coming for Radio Newcastle in a minute or two. Remember Nick Gladhill at uh, Essex this season on the Saturday morning saying if we are still here tomorrow something's gone horribly wrong for Durham and indeed they were the following day and they lost the game but the deficit then was only 163 just needed a couple of partnerships towards the end of the Essex second innings just to give Essex something to bowl out which they were able to do the next day Rushworth to Salter played out through mid wicket and that might go for four it's been chased but it's gone for four Well, it was looking very good for Durham at lunch because Glamorgan were 145 for five in their second innings and still 261 behind. And then when Chris Cook fell for five just after that break, Durham looked like they would press ahead and get victory in their hands probably before tea. Here we are still playing, though, because Glamorgan have just reached 250 for six. And the reason for that is a partnership now of uh, 99 from uh, Dan Douthwaite, who has 67, and Andrew Salter has 48. Looks like Douthwaite might have just been dropped in the slips when he was on 67 and edge from Ben Rain's bowling. But Durham have got their work cut out here. There's still a deficit. Uh, they have taken the new ball. They are currently 156 behind, so this game could still end tonight, but the overs are being eaten up by these two. There are 27 and a half remaining. So Durham have Glamorgan at 250 for six. They need another four wickets to seal an innings victory. Well, I'm now in the uh, realms of having to record a, a, a voice piece for Radio Tees a little bit later on, which I wasn't sure I'd have to do today for their evening news bu bulletins. This one's defended by Salter. That, did you see the edge in the previous over? Didn't think it carried. I wasn't sure if it did. I couldn't tell if it bounced just in front of Beddingham's hands or not. I believe it did. Yeah, because um, the look from... Ben Ray and he sort of looked as if to say well what's happened there but when I, I looked through the binoculars and Beddingham seemed to have a smile on his face as if to say well that's unlucky it didn't quite carry Rushworth to Salter he plays this one out through the covers and we'll get uh, one run and that's the 100 run partnership from these two and it comes in uh, 234 balls so they came together in the 54th over. We're now in the 93rd. 234 balls. That's uh, that's a fair number of overs. 39 overs. Two and a half runs and over, give or take. Not scintillating, but valuable. Yeah, much needed from a Glamorgan point of view. Rush with in. Douthwaite leaves. Yeah, one or two alarms along the way. Difficult chance dropped behind by Eckersley, a diving valiant attempt, really. Uh, Salter was on 40. Your maths is spot on, 39 overs. Did you do that in your head? Yeah. That's clever, that. Rush with again to Douthwaite. And that's punched back past him and away. Potts is chasing after it up towards long off. He's caught it just in front of the boundary rope. Two runs. Oh, there. I was I was listening some of the time in maths lessons between the uh, the trumpeting of the elephants. How did you do that though? In in your head, how do you work that out when you do that so quickly? Well, two forty balls is forty overs, isn't it? So it's um. two thirty four is six less than that. Right, so that was how you got there so quickly. Mm. My brain doesn't work like that. Uh, as I say, the elephants didn't entirely put me off in maths lessons. The building where we had maths was fairly close to the elephant enclosure. What? The Cardiff Zoo? Bristol Zoo. Bristol Zoo. Had a good maths teacher as well. well. My maths teacher was also the teacher who ran the school cricket team. All right. In fact, you might be listening today, Don. 
Ben Rain is into Andrew Salter, who plays it down into the ground, bouncing out on the offside. Slight fumble, but uh, no damage done at cover. Nice pleasant breeze now. We're wafting in through our window. Yeah, well, I've wedged the door open so we get the through breeze coming in. Good tactics. Mm. 253 for six. Anyway, I went down in maths. Uh, I got relegated from set two to set three halfway through the comprehensive school. Oof. Cruel. 253 for six. Rain into Salter on leg stump, and they'll go through for a leg by as the ball shoots off towards the square leg umpire. Not quite sure whether that was a genuine appeal because it was always going down leg side. <laughs> I was wondering when this would come. The, hi the highest partnership for um, Middlesex, you know, Snowman yeah. and uh, yep. Robson and Dave Bracegirdle. The Radio Nottingham commentator has tweeted, Is it the highest Division 3 partnership of all time, Kev? To Kevin Hand. <laughs> Oof. Yes. That's cruel as yes. well. 254 for six. Rain to Douthwaite. Blocked. To mid off. Kevin's response is, You've been hovering over the send button for a tweet along these lines for the last two days, haven't you? Admit it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anyone's seriously going to put together uh, Division 3 records, are they? Uh, Division 1, 2 and 3, it's all it's all first-class cricket. Otherwise we'll have records from last season for the Bob Willis Trophy. And heaven knows what. 2.54 for 6. Rain to Douthwaite. Oh, I can pick up on our effects microphone the nice solid noise off the, mm. the middle of Douthwaite's bat, even from... These defensive prods. Kevin, the Middlesex commentator, has tweeted this. Now, I don't know who's given him these statistics, because he never looks these things up. There have been 175 opening stands of 300-plus in first-class cricket. Following yesterday, the record for the ground on which 300 for none has been reached the most times is jointly held by Hove and the Oval, nine occasions each. <laughs> Rain bowls. Douthwaite defends. No run. So, uh, are we really in any danger, do you think, of uh, going into day four? Possibly. Certainly in the se severe danger of my having to rewrite my reports, yeah. which I'd more or less done with six down when Cook was out. Rain into bowl to Dalswaite oh, on nice leg stump, and he's lobbed that one over mid-wicket, and it may run away for four. It wasn't timed. It just runs away to for four, turn towards the scoreboard on the castle side of the ground. Uh, I suppose it was a relatively low-risk shot from, from Dalswaite as he launched into it, but certainly didn't get all of it as he moves on to 73, not out, 258 for six. Looking back at Kevin's tweet, and he's actually credited David Kendix for the start. I thought he wouldn't have looked that up. There's a little bit of a conference going on, a committee meeting among the uh, senior Durham guys. Well, the one thing from a Durham point of view here is they don't want this to just drift and drift. Whether they're coming back tomorrow to still win by an innings, but it means another day of warm-ups, another day of coming to the ground, instead of... Day on the golf course, well, yeah, dare we yeah, say. And just, you know, putting your feet up and... Chilling your beans. Not having to think cricket for a day. Magnificent phrase, chill your beans. So this is Potts replacing... Rushworth. We're going to see a double change and maybe have Coughlin at this end for a rain. Pot in, that's gone down the leg side. Taken by the keeper. Salter on strike, plays and misses. They all obviously looked at films of Salter to see that he likes a, a leg side shot. They've put Coglin in as the legs, leg gully again. Yeah, could 
with a deep mid wicket rather than a deep square leg if I were uh, setting a field to Salter. And they have. Yeah, now someone on the on the ropes at mid wicket rather than square leg. Pots in again and Salter again <laughs> tries to pull that through the leg side. It bounces off something and goes towards the gully. He gets a run. A leg by. Well, Jones is sort of halfway across there, isn't he? He's, he's not quite deep square leg. He's just a few yards beyond yeah. where Ian Blackwell, the square leg umpire, is. And he's about he might 10 yards in from the ropes, so he's sweeping in that area. So, mm. Afternoon to Ollie Goldstone. Highest seventh wicket partnership against Durham. Restores some pride. Thank you, Ollie. Pots again to Darth Waite, who defends. Ball runs up to mid-off. Did a bit of work cheering us up during lockdown, did uh, did Ollie, when they had the uh, a mock Welsh Cup all on the toss of a coin. And he was one of those carrying out those tosses of the coins that the, the clubs all took uh, very seriously. Even I had to do one. They were that short of uh, cricket celebrities. This is played by down through to mid on this time. Johnny Gaffer reckons he ended up with Durham players in Nottingham following the final. Suggests it was an after party. Well, it probably wasn't much of a party as far as Durham was concerned. Neil Thornycroft said he was joking about the 300 deficit mark being beaten and the 200. Now the 150 is gone. Halcyon days. <laughs> Potts to Dalthwaite. Oh, he's not nearly knocked him over there. Dalthwaite almost stood on the ball. <laughs> that was a strange-looking <laughs> moment. Dalthwaite is liable to get in tangles. Well, he did there. I don't know whether he's played the ball into his pad and down onto the ground and then stood on it, but he seemed to suddenly do a tumble. It sort of rolled across his pads and he's tripped himself up wondering where it was oh well the physio's uh, on the ropes in front of us but uh, mm. she's not being called into action carrying her background in case of uh, immediate action Potts to Dalthwaite again the ball is played back to the bowler and that is the end of the over a maiden from Potts now we're getting into the territory of counting down the overs, aren't we? Yeah, we're almost getting that. That's another five overs. Sanitisation break, but of course there is the possibility, which I think is still allowed on day three, of taking the extra half hour if seven wickets are down, usually. Durham have got no worries about their over eight. That is plus three. So they won't lose any of their... Mm, the fact there's not been any wickets, I suppose. 24, yeah. 147 behind still, though. It's just annoying rather than uh, seriously disruptive, I think, for, for Durham at the, at the moment. As you say, the, the next uh, point is, with, will they possibly have to come back tomorrow if uh, these two can keep their stand going which is worth 108 now for this seventh wicket between Dan Douthwaite who has his highest score of the season 73 and Andrew Salter who is one short of a half century his first of the season a battling affair Ben Rain. Highest scores 88 against Gloucestershire in 2018. He's had uh, five fifties. He's got 75 against Durham in Swansea in 2017. Ben Rain to Bowl to Salter, who leaves that one go outside off stump. Is it nine boundaries so far today? But uh, if he does get there, it would be the slowest 50 of the match. Not surprisingly, given the context. 130 balls he's faced. 2.59 for six, Glamorgan, with the uh, shadows of the pylons stretching across the riverside. 
Rain balls. And Salt has nearly gone there as he nibbles at a ball. Really good line and length there from Rain. Tempting Salta forward, drawing him forward, but uh, beating the outside edge. 259 for six. There are 24 overs potentially remaining of uh, the scheduled day's play. Time wise, mm. Rain bowls and Salter drives into the offside and will get his half century there. And become the third Glamorgan half centurion of this innings and uh, he'll pick up three runs in fact as it's picked up just inside the cover boundary and Salter has faced 132 deliveries and he's hit nine fours to get to that landmark. Generous applause from uh, I think Probably the, some of the Durham crowd as well as one or two remaining Welsh supporters. 262 for six. I saw a Glamorgan flag still uh, up on the stand next to us. University stand. Earlier on, 262 for six. Salter to 52, not out. Rain in. Eckersley standing up and that's deflected away by Douthwaite down to the fine leg boundary and he'll get four runs there to move on to 77. Glamorgan 2-6-6 six, six for 6, 140 runs in arrears. So uh, seven runs coming off this over already. This is actually his first half century since he got 72 against Derbyshire in 2018. Hmm. Mm. Hasn't always played uh, a lot of red ball cricket. Andrew Salter tends to, uh, once or twice he's only appeared in the height of summer when uh, conditions are most favourable for spinners. Ryan is in to bowl and uh, Douthwaite plays it away on the offside but uh, being as he's out of contract and I haven't heard that it's as yet been renewed certainly hasn't been announced and uh, it's a good time to find uh, some red ball form to go with his performances in the white ball stuff 266 for 6 Eckersley Standing up still. This ball is to Douthway, who drives into the offside. It's well stopped, but they've hustled through for a quick single diving stop there from the man at uh, cover point. Prevents the ball squirting away for three or four. 267 for six. Douthway has retained the strike with the single off the last ball of the over. He moves to 78, not out. And is in the vicinity of a championship best. His previous best for Glamorgan, 86. Last year, rather spectacular affair up at uh, Northampton. Does have a first-class century. That was for Cardiff MCCU against Sussex at Hove. And uh, delighted to see him coming back into the match Douthwait after a pretty disappointing first couple of days. Potts to ball his 23rd over, right arm over from the lumley end. It's turned by Douthwaite past square leg. And judging by the reaction from Potts as Douthwaite runs a single, he's got his hands on his head there. He thought he nearly got through his defences. So we could be around about 10 to 6, 5 to 6 for the. Uh close of play if Glamorgan were to go the distance but I think Durham would claim the extra half hour if uh, one more kick fouls anyway try to knock it over tonight yeah we've got the leg gully in again in Oof. Paul Coglan and Potts is going to come round the wicket he's got two slips in place as well and a backward point Salter is on strike that's a bouncer which the keeper takes it's a no ball on height bit of a waste of energy those ones 
Yeah, just banged it in. Got a bit too much response from the pitch. But Salter's shown every willingness to take on the pull. pull and well, There's two men on that square, me. on that leg side boundary. You've got Rain at long leg and uh, Jones is halfway between deep square leg and deep mid wicket. There is a mid wicket in there as well in Travaskis. Pots in again, bowls. Salter goes down on one knee and watches that one go through. Probably about chin high, actually. Yes, he's being a bit optimistic, bowling short pitch stuff outside off stump because I think Salter's probably got enough sense not to try and drag it round from over there. Especially when you try and uh, flat bat it through a largely vacant offside. Five four leg side field now is uh, coming back over the wicket now. Comes in and bowls, and that's pulled, and it's gone flying past Coglin at leg gully for four. It was really low. I don't think that was a catching chance, to be honest with you. No. I've got to do an update for T, so if you just finish off this over. Certainly. Uh, 274 for six with that boundary from Salto. Moves on to 56, not out. And... Uh, Morgan trailed Durham by 132 runs. Durham probing away. Borthwick uh, adjusting his field. Now he's waving that leg gully field back towards the ropes at fine leg. Rain moves round the back the backward square. Fine leg is about two thirds of the way in, and uh, that's outside off stump, and Salter leaves it alone. So certainly Salter's been keen to take on the pull shot, but now he faces fine leg, ten metres in from the boundary. Faces a deep backward square, also near the boundary. Man lurking just forward of the umpire because he has to be can't have three behind square on the leg side it's a mid wicket and a mid on so will Salter continue to play those shots that's way down leg side and doesn't really give Ackersley a chance got a, a fingertip on it but it's run away for four buys so there's a cunning plan but it needs to be executed and uh, Potts is not quite doing so in this over. Ackersley won't thank him for that one. 278 for six, Glamorgan. Trailing by 128 runs here on BBC Sport Online. In the Chesterless Street sunshine, if you want to tweet us, Nick Webb 2017 or at Marty Cricket. Next delivery from Potts, final one of the over. Down the leg side, Salter says, no thank you. Ackersley says, what the heck is that? As he makes another sprawling stop, and it is the end of the over. 278 for six, 23 overs of the scheduled play remaining for Durham to claim these remaining four wickets. Or for Glamorgan to uh, thrash their way to 128 runs and get into the lead, which seems still somewhat improbable. Had some really low scoring first days, didn't we? 100, was it 103 wickets fell on day one? Yeah. And then some ridiculously big scores in the days two and three. I think we uh, get to the stage where my report needs a bit of tarting up. Mm. To use a technical term. Ben Rain in. This is defended by Dalthwaite. Runs up to mid on. I think tarting up was week two at Journalism College, but <laughs> might have been week three. <laughs> Recrafting. Yes. Rewriting. I uh, never went to journalism college, didn't did get you in. Not? Didn't get in. How did you learn then on the job? Yes. Which colleges did you apply to? There were only three in those days. Was there? Rainbows. Keep us standing up. This goes out to Travascus in the covers, no run. There's a Cardiff one that's still there. Yeah. It? One of the London ones. I think it was City University at the time. 
And the next best was at uh, Preston Poly, which I was yeah. intending to head for if I hadn't got some uh, work experience that eventually turned into a job. Well, when I applied to join the scheme, it was 1989, and it was the National Council for the Training of Journalists as rain balls, and it's cut out by the diving Travaskis in the covers, no run. And you applied to join a course and then listed the, the college of your preference. And in those days, you had Cardiff, I think it was Epping in London, Preston, hmm. Darlington and Sheffield. And I put down as Darlington as my first choice, with it being the nearest one, and got in there. And so initially, initially fill in a, an application form, and then those who were selected were invited in for an exam really mm. in comes rain that's defended so it was a it was basically a, a questionnaire about uh, journalism and story writing and news and things like that and you had to write an example of they give you some scenario I think it was a, a prison breakout or something or a rooftop protest in a prison you had to write an article around that and then if you were considered successful enough there then you went for an interview so mm. I think I was one of about 23 people that year who got onto the course at Darlington out of about 2,000 applicants. Yeah, there weren't many media courses around in those days. No. Rain balls. This has gone out towards the mid-off region, collected by Lees. How I mean, you didn't do it. There was no such thing as a journalism de degree then. It was a postgraduate one-year diploma. Um, now people around the country can do... Yeah, oh yeah, three uh, degrees in sort of mixture all kinds of media. Um, I mean, we crammed the course into nine months, really, September to May. Yeah, your exams, one, and that was it. Learn your shorthand, and away you went. One year job in those days, mm -hmm. yeah. Does uh, Eckersley often stand up to rain? Sometimes. I think it's. Uh, <laughs> he'll stand up to anybody, depending. He stood up to rush with before. Good luck. Yeah. Durham just trying to make something happen here, aren't they? Delthwaite's on 79 as rain comes round the wicket and bowls. Got the keeper standing up, two slips in a gully, and that's the end of the over. A maiden from rain. Given how tightly Travaskis bowled in the, the afternoon session, I know it was only doing a holding job at the time, but... We've uh, had a, an hour of the new ball. wonder if it might be time to give the spinners a chance with a relatively hard ball. I would get Coglin on for a bit here. But Coglin hasn't had his spell, that's fair enough, with the, the new cherry. But it'll be Potts to ball this over. He's got one wicket. Rain's got one wicket. Rushworth's got one wicket. And still Coglin. Best figures of uh, both innings. Has to wait for his turn with the new ball. Pots bouncing in, balls oh. and oof, an edgy steer oh. from Salter. Don't think he meant it, as uh, he hung his bat out rather, and would have been a catch for third slip had there been one. As it is, it's four runs down to the vacant third man position. Also begs the question: Would he have played the shot with the third slip in? But yeah, fair point. He wasn't much in control of it, was he? Salter on to sixty, not out. You know, look at all those runs that have gone through third man today. Doesn't matter, you've still got 124 to play with. Potts charges in. Salter plays into the backward point area. There's no run. Was it a, was it a not match against Glamorgan where they came back when he needed a couple of wickets on the final day and never got them or something? Um, there five, there was a wicketless, a wicketless final day, day yeah. but uh, it was it was more than a couple. I think they were four down overnight, right. and it was Ingram and Chris Cook who batted through the final day, right. which is you know two two established batsmen. Um, rather more was that in Nottinghamshire's run of thirty-two first-class matches? Was that a win? Uh, no, no, it was before that. Pots in. Bowls, Salter plays into the offside. There is something of a gap in the offside. Lee's 
There's the fielding, but they've gone through for a single. Salter to 61. Total to 283 for six. But, uh, yeah, Stuart Broad on, on that occasion pulled about 30 overs, not for 50 or something. But, uh, yeah, we're a long way from that sort of heroics as yet. As his pots into Dowsway to pushes firmly to Lisa at point, no run. 283 for six. Also batted through a final day at Bristol to save a, a draw, and uh, believe on on that um, occasion, even his mother, who's a, a keen follower from uh, South Africa, agreed that it was a little bit boring. <laughs> Two eighty three for six. As Dowsweight plays that one to mid on, there's no run. Applause from Beddingham and Borthwick in the slips. Borthwick takes off his cap and waves it around. Trying to get a little breeze for himself. 283 for six, Glamorgan having progressed from 151 for six when Skipper Cook was out shortly after luncheon. Stand therefore with 132 so far as Dowthwaite drives back firmly towards the bowler. Potts does well to get a hand to it. Salter spins and dives to his crease, just in case it's been deflected towards the stumps. It had not been. 283 for six. Salter is 61. Dowthwaite is 79. You're listening to BBC Sport Online. And Glamorgan trail Durham by 123 runs with four second innings wickets in hand. Paul Bennett's email says he can't understand why Durham didn't declare on 110 overs. Well, it was still too early in the game, given that Glamorgan were bowled out in just 32 overs. And again, another question about what will the structure of next year's championship be? I've always been in favour of a league structure with promotion and relegation, so why not retain the current three divisions with two promoted and two relegated? You can end up with a third of your division going up or down. Yeah, I don't think that's been uh, mooted in the corridors uh, of power as yet. I think it's a, a straight choice between two divisions or three conferences uh, as this season. Or introduce a fourth division comprising the best minor counties. No, no chance. That's not going to happen. They haven't got the resources. No. They haven't got the money, they haven't got the players, they haven't got the time. Yeah, they're not full-time pros. No. Travaskis into the attack then, as uh, Nick was suggesting might be a good idea. That one pops a little bit on Salter as he pushes it off towards the slip cordon. And Wales did beat Glamorgan in a one-day cup warm-up, but uh, several of the players sort of interchanged sides in the, in the following weeks. Well, that's off the pads, but I think that was drifting too far down the leg side there. Nice little excuse for the Durham fielders to uh, clear their pipes, though. Wake themselves up. Slow left arm orthodox. Liam Travaskis coming round the wicket from the Finkel end. Solder gets on top of that one and plays it back to the bowler. I think you don't need as many T20s as you've got, although the clubs think it's a way of making money, obviously. In comes Trafaskis again. This is up in the air and it's going to clear mid off. And it's actually just bounced inside the ropes for four. So, chance of his arm there, Salter. He's down to the ball quickly. I would go back to nine divisions of two. <laughs> two up, two down. <laughs> and scrap all these needless T20s where midweek trips to. Northampton. Get Northampton back in the Midlands group with Worcestershire and Warwickshire and the others. Well, Northampton seems to be a local rival of Glamorgan according to some of the groupings. Oh, yeah. How will Travaskis respond to this? There's a short extra cover in now. Salter watches that one go into the keeper's gloves. There's just too many 14 T20s. And you just end up watching a lot of meaningless cricket 
trouble is if you if you reduce that you reduce the county's main money making opportunities to pack these grounds and sell lots of hospitality and uh, liquid substances to the paying punters well no because what you do is there's probably a chance where a lot of supporters are going to look and think do i want to go and see worcester on a tuesday night in chesley street or north hans no if they're all if there's less games and they're more of an appointment to view and more of them can be on a friday or whatever then you're probably going to sell more tickets generally than have lots of matches with not much riding on them with stadiums a quarter full you do try need to try and get uh, as many at weekends as as possible yeah. certainly or thursdays in london and the tv companies will insist on having one or two games earlier in the week but um, Anyway, the uh, it's time for uh, tribute acts, isn't it? Have you got any of those here? Got a couple in Cardiff. I think they had the some, something this summer. Was there a Tina Turner thing or something like that? I can't remember. Night with Freddie Not Mercury and uh, some people who aren't Abba. Two eighty-seven for six. Shouldn't decry these occasions if they make dosh. Why not? As Dowthwaite defends the first ball of uh, Potts's new over. Deficit one one nine. Paul's been back on. He says, My ex wife, Sue Spencer, was also on that journalism course in Darlington, but I'm guessing before you, in 1974. He says, I'm just trying to think, was she our law lecturer? We had a law lecturer called Sue who had worked in magazines in Hong Kong and then came back to the Northeast and lectured us. Potts in balls. Douthwaite defends. Neil Thornicroft on Twitter says this sort of stand is why we love stroke hate cricket of course Graham Smith says three divisions would be a disaster for those in the third division would end up semi-pro yeah well all those who thought this conference system gave them an even chance this year they're nearly all in division three aren't they they've all ended up where they were likely to be struggling I mean people had Middlesex tip for division one this year on the basis of what I don't know it's delivery from Potter's short one. It's hooked by Douthwaite. Where's it gone? Nobody ben Rain gone. didn't know. It went actually miles past him, but uh, Rain didn't that pick that one up at all. I didn't pick it up as no. either, but it did go through mid-wicket up to the electronic scoreboard, and it's gone for four. What's happened there is there's a number of people on the boundary in front of the pavilion steps, and they all put their arms up. Where's that gone? And what's happening is the sun is a bit low now, and it's reflecting really brightly off the blue seats on the far side of the ground. So they don't look blue at all. Mm. They look like giant light bulbs. A bit silvery, aren't yeah. they, in places? Yeah, it's something that uh, Ash Thorpe referred to with the, uh, the large amount of glare at this ground. Yeah. 291 for six, Douthwaite to 83. As he drives back to Potts and fields in his follow-through. I don't think it was uh, anywhere near fielder anyway. The terrain could have uh, potentially picked up, even if he'd uh, picked his, up the flight of it earlier. You're not surprised to see the likes of Derbyshire, Leicestershire in Division 3. Middlesex have struggled for quite a few years now in Division 2, so they're down there as well. Sussex are going through a bad period. I think Kent may be a slight surprise. As Potts is in to bottle to Dalthwaite, oh. another short ball, and he tries to hook it, and it misses into the... Gloves of Eckersley. Dalswaite needs to be selective. That was outside off stump. He'd had a, a fair way to fetch it round to get that one clear. And uh, not the right ball to uh, play that shot. If you look at the sides who were seasoned Division 1 teams, nearly all of them are in Division 1, aren't they, this year? I think Notts is the only team not, but... You know, they have recently been in Division 1. They're up and down quite regularly. Potts to Downthwaite. Plays it into the offside. Called for a single. Didn't hit that off the middle of the bat, but it was to the left of the man trying to cover mid-off and cover. So it was a comfortable single. Downthwaite moves to 80, 84. Excuse me. Salt has 65. And Downthwaite is too short of his championship best not the same as his first class best 86 at Northampton last year very contrasting uh, innings as a game Glamorgan lost as well but uh, 
Uh, some incredible knocks for a game <laughs> that Glamorgan lost with Callum Taylor reaching a maiden century on debut, having been on 29 when the last man came to the wicket. Reached a maiden century on debut with a six. Marchant de Lange hit uh, Glamorgan's fastest century of all time in first class cricket. And uh, down to 86. So it was a very entertaining game, albeit a losing cause. 292 for six here, Travaskis. Telford's best score was 100 not out Cardiff Uni against Sussex in 2019. Travaskis the ball then. And Delfwit is on 84. Plays this to short extra cover to Beddingham. He's now got a helmet on and the shin pads. I mean, be nice to come in close. Travaskis left arm round from the Finkel end. Again, it finds Beddingham. You look at the sides who got promoted two years ago, North Hans and Gloucestershire, wasn't it? They mm. both ended up in Division 2. So if you're thinking they probably struggled in Division 1 in the old format, then defended the Division 2 is possibly their right, their right zone for them. I think Durham have gradually been on, the, on, on an improving plane in the last year or two. Once again, this is defended. Glamorgan never seemed to be able to put together four uh, performances in red and white ball in the same year. Well, that's your problem with a lot of teams, isn't it? The, the resources. They brought betting him in as a silly, wow, silly point here. This is rather brave. Got slip and. Uh, Beddingham's in there and snatches that one. They've got the slip up and they've got the keeper standing up with the stumps as well. There's no short leg though. Don't think I'd fancy being in that position for uh, a man as beefy as Douthwaite. Travaskis bowls again and Douthwaite pushes it underneath Beddingham who leaps into the air and off towards point for one. Hmm. Position for Beddingham is on the um, risky side. May well take a catch there, but uh, he will put his physical well being at some risk as that single sees Douthwaite pinch the strike and move to 85, one short of his championship best. Salter 65. Potentially with uh, an 88 in his sights, but uh, a long way to go, given the largely sedate pace at which these two have been batting, with the occasional big shot. And uh, Paul Coglin is now going to get his chance to improve on his match figures, which currently stand at 7 for 48. So we always had to wait until uh, this I far think into the new ball, I'm not sure. I think this is where things will change. Here is the inform Coglin then, back in the side after injury, and having proved his worth so far with the ball, balls to Douthway to drives to cover, no run. Oh, there's nearly an overthrow there as uh, a rather poor throw from Potts at cover, bounced off the pads of Eckersley, but uh, Bellingham was alive the danger as they look for a potential overthrow. Now Borthwick <laughs> here on the effects microphone really trying to uh, G up his man. Pots into ball. Douthwaite drives up his sleeve through mid on for four runs. Didn't quite get that as he wanted but it was only the non-striker Salter who was in danger and Dan Douthwaite on 89 not out has his best championship score so well played to him but he will now want to take it on personal milestones for these Glamorgan batsmen, no doubt in their minds, but uh, survival until the close tonight would be a tremendous achievement if they can get there. Potts to Douthwaite, who defends back to the bowler, and there is no run. Well, 
This game has already gone on far longer than I think uh, most supporters of both sides would have expected. Both overnight and when Glamorgan was six down. As Dowthwaite launches into that one. Where's it ended up? Somewhere over the mid-wicket ropes for four runs. As uh, they didn't have the same fielders back for Dowthwaite as they did for Salter. And that is the applause for Glamorgan's 300 coming up in the 103rd over of the game. So two players doing their best to cement their places in the side and to take this game into a final day. Still 105 runs short though of making Durham bat again which shows the enormity of the task as Douthwaite drives firmly to cover and there's no run. 17 overs left after this delivery from Conklin. And it's a fine balance to be struck for these two Glamorgan batsmen because they, they have to go after some scoring opportunities. They can't just block and leave. They've put on 150, haven't they? As Douthwaite drives to mid on and there's no run. Indeed, that was the 150 partnership well spotted. That is the end of Conklin's over. Salter, 65. Douthwaite is 93. You're listening to BBC Sport Online. Morgan 301 for six, trail by 105. Drinks break here on the BBC. There'll be plenty of big partnerships for Glamorgan against Durham over the years, but uh, we know this is the best seventh wicket stand at 150. The previous was 79. So now. They have um, one, two, three. This is the fourth best at the moment. So next on their target list, 157. That would be Adrian Dale and Matthew Maynard's 156 for the third wicket at Colwyn Bay in 1993. In fact, actually between that and where they are now, the second wicket stand, 146, Hugh Morris and Adrian Dale at Hartlepool in 1992. First meeting between the sides. There's a couple of 200 run stands as well. Fourth wicket in Chesty Street, 231 in 2003. And the best opening stand, Stephen James and Hugh Morris in Cardiff, 1997, 229. Them were the days. Paul says, my law lecturer was not his ex-wife. Oh, well, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> right, Travaskis. Left arm round. Salter launches him straight over the top for four. That was straight very controlled, ball, wasn't it, yeah. from Salter? That was a determined step down the wicket. Knew where he was looking to hit it. And uh, launched it away one bounce. With... Potts and Rain, round about halfway back at mid-on and mid-off. Something of a chance, but he, he timed that one beautifully. Javaskis bowls. This is just nibbled away towards the short leg side. How many overs left in the day? 16.4 overs left in the day. the back foot and out through the covers for one are we getting to the stage when this report is not going to be uh, recrafted but uh, metaphorically torn up and thrown in the bin electronically mm. delete in comes Travaskis again the ball is grabbed by Silly Point, Beddingham. Yeah, it really is putting the Silly under Silly Point. 
shadow across the wicket. Again, it's defended. It's also uh, wondering about. There's another stat to look at here, isn't there? The highest seventh wicket stand for Glamorgan. Miles away, don't worry about it. Yeah. Miles, miles away? Yeah, miles away. In comes Travaskis, ball defended. Snuffed out on a length, so what is it then? I can confidently Two say. 11. Wow. Oh, this Gibson. Oh, Swansea. 1996. That's not going to happen tonight. Cottie, is it? Tony Cotty. Tony Cotty. Tony Cotty. Yes. Contributor to BBC Sport Wales commentaries on uh, many Philip occasions. Philip Anthony Cotty. Until this season when he's been too busy selling ice creams to uh, appear at the microphone. Cotty's ice cream. He's got a new business on the, uh, the seafront at uh, Shoreham, I think. Ooh. A few miles along from Hove. Yeah. Lansing College there, just across the road from the, the airport. It's a beautiful building on the hillside. Coglin, three for 45. Will be bowling to Salter on 70 not out. Two slips in the gully. Coglin bowls. Salter defends on the leg side. And there's no run. Emma's been on. She says, come back tomorrow. Glamorgan back through till just before lunch with 70 to 80 for Durham to knock off. Just wondering, can we get these two into the test team for Friday? They've done a cracking job of digging <laughs> in. <laughs> mm. yeah, a bit of a difference in uh, class, with all due respect. There's uh, Coglin. Well, ball outside off stump, and Salter will leave his bat upraised. Mark O'Leary erstwhile coach of uh, Cardiff MCCU is uh, cheering Dan Dowthwaite to on towards a potential first championship century. Having scored his previous first class century when under Mark's tutelage. He came in when Carlson was out. Allowed to uh, go through outside off stump. Or was it Rutherford? Rutherford, was it? Uh, uh, fifth wicket was Carlson. Carlson, yeah. So they were 128 for five when he came in, and still 278 behind. They're now 100 behind. Well, the, uh, the deficit is gradually disappearing, but still a heck of a way to go. To make Durham bat again. As uh, Salter cuts and can't get it past Lees at backward point. No run. Borthwick fancy another chance himself. Doing a few limbering up exercises. Durham skipper at second slip. I've been through five bowlers with the new ball already. As Salter defends to mid on, and there is no run. Durham are working away, but they've changed the bowling, they've changed the field, but not getting a lot of assistance from the conditions. You do get the feeling that the pitch is uh, flat. Yeah, a bit. well, I said and the sunshine as well, you know. Yep. Probably the best conditions of the match, really. Conklin in straining off sinews and Salter defends to mid on. It's a maiden over, ticks by Conklin. Has bowled six of them so far. 18 over, six maidens, three for 45. One of the 12th men chugs on, but only to uh, take a cap away. And there are 15 overs remaining of the scheduled day's play here on BBC Sport Online. Well, BBC Newcastle update in uh, a few minutes' time, no doubt. Yeah. One more day of nice weather, says Jenna, our weather presenter. And things start to break down towards the weekend with heavy thundery downpours on Thursday. Ooh, heck. As long as they don't break down for Sunday when uh, we're both back in action. Yeah. 
seen enough rain to last a lifetime in Northampton. Not just a four-day match that never took place, but about four years in a row, 2020 matches wiped out there as well. Travaskis bowling to Douthwaite, who's forward and defends this one. Just nothing doing for Durham at the moment. You feel it's going to take a mistake from one of these batsmen for this partnership to be ended. Twenty-seven in places around here tomorrow. Do you think we're going to hear the phrase "one brings two" by any chance? Probably. Bang, bang, bang will be the other one you hear. <laughs> <laughs> Nonsensical, isn't it? We can go bang, 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 and the match will be over. Yeah. Trascophic ball, uh, Trascophic, Travaskis. <laughs> that loops out to knees and the covers as he goes down to try and stop it. I think he got it right off the kneecap there. Something Cornish sounding. Yeah. Saying after the hot weather tomorrow, temperature will drop back down to about 19 or 20, which to me is fine. This is played to rain at mid off. He has a shy at the stumps from about a 10 degree angle at the bowler's end and misses the target. Dalthwaite gets a run, takes him on to 94 and brings Salter on to strike on 70. So that was Salter's highest score again. 88. 88 against Gloucestershire in 2018. Short leg in for Salter. That's gone to point though. No run. Last ball of the over from Travaskis, and then we're down to 14 to go. An edge along the floor, and off down towards third man for Salter. He'll run two. Takes him on to 72. Got a load of scores in the 80s, Andrew Salter. At one point, he um, increased his t career best from something like 80 to 82 to 84 <laughs> in the space of a couple of months. Be quite expensive if they bought jugs at this level. So, uh, 14 overs left. And are we really going to be heading for Looks day like four in it? this game? Colin Davidson's email. Could you please forward this to Martin Emerson at Durham? I've looked at the league table. It shows Durham have played one game and lost it. Well, they haven't. Uh, Surrey have played one and neither won, lost nor drawn. Bearing in mind that we were meant to play Surrey last week and was subject to COVID restrictions. How is the league table made up? It'll be made up, we believe, by average points at the end of the season. So, And Durham and Surrey didn't feature on most of the league tables last week at all, as if they hadn't played any games. So. Well, you'd think they'd have 24 from this and four carried over, so there'll be 14 average after this, you would assume. Is that right? Yeah, 24, yeah, right, yeah. Four, 28 points, 14 average. As uh, Borthwick bowls and Dallas Waite cuts it away on the off side and will pick up a single. So... Borthwick is the sixth bowler used with the new ball, which is now in its 27th over. He's juggled things round. Borthwick with one slip, bowls, and no shot played by Salter. So see double spin if Travaskis is staying on as well. Borthwick bowls again. Salter stretches forward. Oohs and ahs from round the bat, but uh, sounded a fairly solid contact. Eleven wickets for the season coming into this game. Didn't bowl in the first innings, understandably. 
Salter drives on the half volley back towards the bowler. Runs up to mid-off. No run. 3-10 for six. Salter on strike. 72. Borthwick bowls. Salter on the back foot pushes on the left side. They'll take a quick single. 3-11 for six. That's why it takes strike. Should get through these remaining overs fairly quickly if they keep the spinners on. Borthwick twirling the ball around, tossing it to himself. Balls to Downsway, who defends to cover, and there's no run. Beddingham fields. It's the end of the spinners over. 311 for six. Glamorgan trail by 95 runs, and he's rattled through that over to allow Marty to take his uh, radio report while. Well, at lunchtime, uh, Glamorgan were 145 for 5 and still trailing Durham's first innings total by 261, bearing in mind this is Glamorgan's second innings. So I don't think anybody would have put much money on us still being here now, particularly when their skipper Chris Crook went just after lunch for 5. But since then, there's been absolutely nothing doing with the ball for Durham. They've taken the new ball, they've had no luck with that, and that's because of an excellent partnership of 160 runs so far for the seventh wicket from Andrew Salter, who's on 73 and Dan Douthwaite at the other end who's on a career best at 95 in the county championship they've been together now for 321 balls and we were hearing Jen talking about the lovely weather tomorrow there are only 13 overs left tonight so if Durham can't end this partnership and get the other three wickets they need then they will be playing in that lovely weather tomorrow 13 overs to go and Glamorgan are 311 for six and they currently trail by 95 New over from Travaskis and Salter pads up to one. This is bowling left arm over down the leg side. Got a leg slip in and a slip. Durham looking for something, just anything. A little, a little nick, anything, just something to get rid of this. Ooh, this partnership, a bit of a false shot there from Salter looking to play through the leg side. He's got a bottom edge and it's. Gone across towards first slip low, bounce just in front of. Interesting Scott field Borthwick. on the leg side. One man on the hook. In ben Reen by those things. Travaskis again. Bowls. Defended on a length. Leg slip and shortish backward square mm. or short fine leg. Jones in there at uh, backward square leg. Pathway on 95, looking at his first century and Championship cricket. Travaskis bowls. Salter defends. There's really been little. I can't really think of many chances this afternoon, can you? you think of anything? And one edge that we weren't really sure had carried the bedding in. Yeah. That was when Douthwaite was on 62, I think. Salter just watches that one bounce off his pad as it's coming in from the leg side. Yeah, I think the last chance was that incredibly difficult one with Salter hooking down leg side to the keeper. Was he on 23 at the time? He's on 40 for that one. 40, was he? Travaskis in again. And again, Solder just knees it away. <laughs> and leading through the air. Uh, overs now. There's about... What, half... In, well, at the rate of the spinners being on, 12 overs to go. You're going to be talking maybe 35, 40 minutes max now. Oh, in the evening sunshine. Yeah. Oh, 12 overs left. But if Durham claim a, a wicket during those 12, I'd probably go for the extra half hour. Yeah, I think they would. Unlike last night when we had really gloomy skies and we were con we were questioning the light throughout probably about the last hour and a half of the day, it's clear skies now, so the light's not too much of an issue. Of course, they can put the floodlights on, but even with the floodlights on last night, it was fairly gloomy. As Borthwick will bowl to Douthway, who props forward, potentially within one blow of uh, 
a century, but that would need to be a six, and we've seen very few of those in this game. Be happy if he can nerdle his way to three figures. Downthwaite forward. Defends back to the bowler. No run. 3.11 for six. 95 Downthwaite. 73 Salter. Downthwaite's only faced a few more deliveries than his colleague. As Downthwaite steps back and hits one up to mid off. They wander through for a single, or dash through for a single rather, as Southwaite moves to four short of a maiden championship century. Salter on 73 not out. Deficit now 94 runs. Salter stretches forward. And there's no run. Strange, really, to have uh, the course of the game changed quite so much after the way in which Durham dominated the first seven sessions of it. Salter plays this one into a little gap on the offside. Fielded by Sweeper Lees, coming in off the cover point boundary. Single taken. 74 to Salter. 313 for six. Douthwaite is on 96 not out Dan Douthwaite with his highest score for Glamorgan comes down the pitch and blocks it <laughs> as Borthwick head in hand <laughs> saw him Borthwick coming thought he was going to get him stumped there banged it in or dragged it in a little bit shorter and quicker with a view to that stumping and uh, Douthwaite was able to react in time and uh, block it solidly enough. 96 Southweight ends the over, 313 for six. This partnership now worth 162 of 332 balls. Southweight 96, Salter 74. Salter's faced 170 balls to Southweight 178. And there are 11 overs to go tonight, a minimum it turns, obviously remind you of that. Travaskis with his sunglasses on is going to bowl his 13th over none for 23 so far 20, uh, sorry, two maidens 23 is conceded he bowls and Salter turns this just behind square on the leg side, no run Spinners have been very economical 19 overs for 34 runs between them Vasquez waits and walks up to the crease and bowls, left arm over. Salter plays it to the covers, no run. Slip on the computer reckons it's 24 degrees outside at the moment. People still in shorts and t-shirts around much of the ground. Vasquez comes up to the stumps and bowls again. Fights that right in, Salter meets it on the bounce, pushes to the covers for one run. Oh, and Douthwaite slips over at the far end after he's crossed the crease line. And he's come to end up in a heap next to Scott Borthwick in the slips. Picks himself up. He's one scoring shot away from his first century in County Championship cricket. Three balls left in the over. He's just checked with the umpire how many there are. Travaskis bowls. Front foot defensive shot. Trickles away on the offside. No run. Nervous 90s. Will they be nervous for DD88? Travaskis bowls. Back into the crease he goes and just plays a defensive shot out on the offside. One ball left of this over and then there's ten remaining today. A nice throw near the wicket. Travaskis in. Balls. Southwaite plays that 
out into the cover area once more and that is the end of the over the Durham 12th man off Taylor Clark fielding in there numberless been on the field since yesterday because of uh, Sean Dixon's leg injury you know, if they do get a wicket we could have up to 17 18 overs left yeah. not quite sure whether it's 7 or 8 for the extra half hour probably 8 it's 8 isn't it yeah. so we could be going on reasonably deep into the evening for the uh, the time of year yeah imagine the extra half hour and then still coming back tomorrow how often does that happen? As Borthwick will start a, a new over to bowl to Salter. There's no run. I mean, in what my seventh season of uh, doing full time championship cricket, I can't actually recall having an extra half hour. As Borthwick bowls, Salter forward. What, at the end of a third day? At the end of a third day. Can you have yeah. seen that a few times, yeah. No, had a few oddities. And quite a lot. Space oddity. Quite a, a lot of late finishes on the on the fourth day. As Seltzer is almost York by that one. There's a puff of dust as he got down in it at the last moment and played it back to uh, Borthwick. There's one season where I really had to work for him when he had about the first two months, all the games went to the last hour of the last day. Borthwick bowls, Salter stretches forward, patiently defending back to the bowler. Although Salter went for those hits over the top off Travaskis, he's by and large been the more patient of the two, you get the feeling. Borthwick bowls and Salter squeezes his way on the offside where Beddingham with an extraordinary combination of headwear fields. He's got his sun hat <laughs> and a cap on the top of it. Looks like a giant mallard. Salter pushes forward defensively. The ball rolls out on the offside. It's fielded at backward point. So Maiden has whisked through on the board. Eight overs, three Maidens, not for 11. Scott Borthwick and uh, Morgan have nine overs to survive of this uh, partnership if they're to uh, take it into day four. If uh, one of these is out, then they'll have more than that to survive, you suspect, if, unless Scott Borthwick declines the opportunity of course but I suspect he'd go for a three day finish if they manage to break this partnership Travaskis bowling defended I'm just looking it came together in the 54th over so we had 24 overs last night so that was uh, what's that 30 overs today when they came together so still 66 overs remaining, wasn't it? Perfect down the track, defends, comes two or three paces. My maths right there, 66. Sounds about right. Yeah. Travaskis to half weight. Another defensive shot. Surely he's got to get to his 100 today. Well, it's a temptation to hit over the top, isn't it? Yeah. Travaskis will be probably hoping he tries to and skews one up in the air. 347 balls these two have been together. Travaskis left arm over, Dalthway down the track, he's going to be out, he's surrendered his wicket. Potts takes the catch, he's gone for 96! He miscued it straight to Potts, who just had to run a few yards backwards at mid-on. And Dalthwaite is out for 96. He walks off the field and he's wiping his eyes. I'm not sure if he's in tears or not, but for a moment or two as he walked away across the square, I think he threw his bat down. Well, what a shame, because he's put up such an incredible resistance there. 163 runs the partnership. And he'll get a big round of applause, but equally, they've been together for 348 balls. 
which is 58 overs and off he goes thinking about what could have been an equally now the Morgan trail by 92 and the partnership has been broken and we were just talking about how cautious he was being and you said what well, he he didn't want to risk trying to go over the top and being caught out he's done exactly that can't believe it well that was that was the nervous 90s wasn't it that was uh, being four runs away from the century that made him play that shot and how oh, utterly frustrating but we have to give him credit for having been there that long and taking it that deep into day three but uh, hasn't quite happened for Dan Dowthwaite and now Durham do have a renewed chance of wrapping up victory today because they will have the option of taking an extra half hour if they don't finish in the next 8.2 overs and uh, Tim van der Hochten wanders out for a consultation with Andrew Salter what's it doing? what do you want me to do? but Dan Dowthwaite I won't say giving it away because obviously we're all going to have to score runs but uh, it's the pressure of the 90s got to him and he didn't quite get a well I didn't really get anywhere near a full bat on that one hit 16 boundaries and faced 185 balls for his best championship innings Andrew Salter is on strike and he crossed while the ball was in the air what a shame for Dan Dowthwaite Well, it's a pity to see that, really. I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit deflated for the lad, I have to say. But it's all well. Travaskis now to Salter because the batsman crossed. Tim van der Hoek didn't the new batsman is brought on to strike straight away. That's a, that is a single. I think a minimum of 8.1 overs left. Yep. And uh, van der Hoekten will be looking to uh, block it out and give the impression of permanency and uh, dissuade Borthwick from taking... That extra half hour. This is flicked away by Van der Hoekden to mid wicket. Would nearly a run out there. Salter went off looking for a single and had to get scampering back as the ball was quickly directed back to the stumps of the bowlers in by Lees. Yeah, Van der Hoekden dismissed without soaring in the first innings is first class best came in the opening innings of the season when he hit 85 not out against Yorkshire but uh, has not made any sort of significant contribution since did uh, block out one draw for Glamorgan last season, the last half hour or so, so I suppose he's just got to uh, adopt that sort of approach. I've got half an hour to bat tonight, but it might turn into an hour. Borthwick then, from the Lumley end, into Salter, who's forward defending. Don't think Salter will particularly try to uh, take the strike. But uh, may play in his thinking. Borthwick bowls, flighted up. Salter pushes it gently to short mid wicket, and uh, there's no run. So Salter, the second top scorer of the innings, has gone past Rutherford 71. And I see blocks another one from Dowthwaite out on uh, from uh, Borthwick out on the offside. Dowthwaite having departed for 96 court pots, bold Travaskis, which is the first Durham spin wicket of the match. Salter blocks another one from Travaskis.
So three wickets left for Durham to take. 91 runs in arrears as uh, Salter blocks to mid-wicket. No run. Now, how much does he look for the single, Andrew Salter? Will there be a little dab and run here? Salter, 76, not out. Will he try and protect the number nine? As he plays out a maiden over, in fact. And ooh! And an ah from Scott Borthwick, but uh, it was just defended fairly neatly away on the leg side. Fourth maiden for Borthwick. And we have Ben Rain coming back to the attack. Just got to do a quick update for T's. Well, we've just seen the departure of Dan Douthwaite. Heartbreak for him. Caught at mid on by Matty Potts after miscuing an attempted loft shot from uh, Liam Travaskis's bowling. He was on 96 at the time, his highest championship score. He'd also put on 163 with uh, Salter for the seventh wicket in 58 overs, but gone with Glamorgan on 314 for seven, trailing by 92, and at the time with 11.2 overs left in the day. Durham can now look into the territory of bringing in an extra uh, half hour which would be eight overs to try and see this game off they need three more wickets Glamorgan are 315 for seven Salter is on 76 he's just been joined by Tim van der Hooten who is yet to get off the mark and uh, this delivery from Rain has gone down to fine leg 4-4 four, four, and it's leg buys so van der Hooten doesn't get off the mark 87 the deficit Van der Hochten is the last Glamorgan batsman who is likely to try and uh, dig in for uh, for a long haul. Kieran and Hogan are likely to try and smack off the deficit tonight if they get a chance. Rain in, defended. David Sharks getting a yeah. good long spell on the field in the absence of uh, Sean Dixon and his calf injury. Hasn't appeared at all since suffering that, uh, well, since he was out. Although he did go on from 12 to uh, 46, having suffered the, the injury, but hasn't appeared in the field in the, at all in this innings. Rainbows gone down the leg side taken by the keeper low to his left <laughs> finally says Bernard on the <laughs> Twitter I've suddenly come over extremely hungry I don't know why that's just hit me then good work from those two though 163 runs 58 overs I think I said it was just when it looked like they were going to take it to the end of the day the yep. nervous 90 something I've never been able to no appreciate having never got near there three hundred and nineteen for seven rain to Hooten who turns that off towards square leg for one yeah the the fidgety forties is the uh, nearest as well we've had to endure he got uh, he passed a thousand first class runs on his way to ninety six today Dan Douthwaite we began this match uh, with me not writing them down by the looks of things. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he gone? Rain in. It's gone off to the leg side and that's hurt Solder. I think he's fallen over there. Andrew Salter has got him right in the box. Maybe an inside edge onto the box. He's taking a knee, gritting his teeth. Yeah. I might have to delay my writing my report until after the interviews, I think, tonight. Because <laughs> there's several potential variations, isn't there? Rain to Salter. 
It's off towards point. So we, have, we haven't had a Centurion in this game, then, have we? So it could sort no. of be the man. Could this be the highest number of <laughs> Centurions without a Centurion? Three. For Glamorgan. Five for Durham. 320 for seven. Deficit is 86. Well, there's so many different strands open to us in terms of this evening's story. Six overs remaining scheduled. Glamorgan blocked through them. Durham might decide not to take the extra half hour. Glamorgan could block through these six plus another eight. Durham could win inside the six. Durham could win inside the, the last half, the extra half hour. Borthwick continues. Van der Hochten plays a nice shot off the back foot and he will get his first boundary as the ball races away to the cover ropes. Where's your next bullet uh, update? Um, well, I hadn't actually arranged to do one That's at right. six, but... Uh, back in a sec. There we are. Um, might, uh, might put that into the schedule, but uh, it depends what happens in the next 15 minutes, really. As uh, Borthwick is into bowl, floats it up, tempting Van der Hochten to drive. He does drive, but all along the ground to wide mid-off. Decides not to take a single, which was possibly there. 3.24 for 7, Glamorgan. After that stand of 163, more than doubled the score for the seventh wicket. Defended by Van der Hochten, the next ball. Three balls into the over. There's Van der Hochten back on his stumps, but solidly getting everything behind it. Morgan Taylenders may feel that having come so far, they might as well do their utmost to take it into a final day. Van der Hochten blocks again. On the other hand, you don't often see too many defensive shots from Morgan's last two, Lucas Carey and Michael Hogan. Borthwick balls and Van der Hochten back on his stumps just chops down in it in time ball trickles out to Beddingham at cover, there is no run that's five overs left of the scheduled day plus the last extra half hour if required we shouldn't have any problems with the light because uh, there is nothing in the sky to impede it unlike the uh, previous couple of rather gloomy evenings when we had the lights on, not required this evening. Just a, a faint bit of haze around the horizon, but uh, no clouds at all. On a glorious day, as Durham inch closer to victory. 82 behind our Glamorgan, as Salter faces up to a new over from Ben Rain and uh, defends on the onside, and there's no run. Offside, rather. Up to mid-off it went. Salter on 76, not out. Can he see it through to the close this evening? His face now, 186 deliveries, says uh, Andrew Salter. Came in just after lunch when uh, Chris Cook went. Rain bowls a swing and a miss from Salter outside off stump. There's a rare loose delivery from this Durham attack and Salter launched himself into it but uh, didn't make contact and was uh, probably quite grateful that he didn't because if he had, it might have been a little snick. 3.24 for 7, Glamorgan having been 1.51 for 6 in the 54th over. We're now in the 116th. Still an innings defeat would not look pretty <laughs> on the register as uh, Salter defends to Gully. No run. Long shadows stretching across 
just on the street on Riverside ground the floodlight pylons now more than three quarters of the way across the playing surface the playing arena but still glorious conditions as Durham look to give encouragement to Ben Rain who has one for 61 against his name it's in to bowl to Salter on leg stump Salter is hit again possibly on the leg rather than uh, the pad because there was probably a leg by there but Salter was hopping round in some pain let's get another one here fellas yeah. will one bring to he's from uh Pirith. You know where that is? Sorry? Pirith, Penrith. No. There's rain bowls and Salter defends. You not heard of Penrith? No. No? It's uh Cumbria? Yeah, well, it's, oh, yeah. yeah, if you go Scotch mm -hmm. Corner and head west, mm -hmm. and you keep going just before you hit the M6, you come to Penrith. Okay. Um, which the locals refer to as Beerith. Ah. <laughs> so, Hartside, Hartside Pass is just up above the town, which is where the Tour of Britain will go on Friday. It's 2,000 feet high, long, twisty road. Rain into Salter, who's from Pembrokeshire and defends another ball to mid on to complete a maiden over four left on the board rain 24 mm -hmm. overs nine maidens one for 61 i'm just going to check something is borthwick going to go on if there are seven wickets down i would be tempted to in his uh, situation i think Northwaite 96, Rutherford 71, Salter 76, the main protagonists for Glamorgan. As Durham have been held up, had to wait more than a session for between wickets, with uh, the sixth wicket falling in the 54th over and the seventh wicket falling in the 112th over. Bowling change. Potts into the attack. Van der Hoogten gets a run, I think, off the glove. Maybe off the thigh. Off the glove it was as it runs down to a short fine leg. To 325 for seven. Glamorgan, 81 runs behind. Durham can ask for the extra half hour then umpires don't necessarily have to grant them that wish outside off stump Salter chops it into the offside and goes through for a single so he's not going to uh, protect Van der Hochten he may try to pinch the strike against uh, Kerry and Hogan should he be batting with them later but um, I think the general feeling is if they don't break this partnership. They won't even ask for it. They won't, they'll want to rest because they've been what they've bowled 117 overs now. Come back tomorrow. Three wickets tomorrow. 326 for seven. As uh, Van der Hochten defends on the leg side. This partnership is the last bastion of defensiveness. I think you have to say. Is this the Maginot line? Well, Kerry and Hogan are liable to try and uh, clear off the deficit tonight rather than uh, necessarily defend not often you see Hogan defending has been known occasionally as that's outside off stump allowed to uh, go through kept a little bit low Van der Hochten playing no shot I did see him uh, bat out a final half hour for a draw at Canterbury with nine down I think it was in uh, 2015 but uh, there was a, a drop slip chance in that and it wasn't good on the nerves been one or two when he's had uh, a little bit less to play out but uh, Hogan is 
many qualities, but batting out for a draw is not where you'd pick him. As Van der Hochten is forward, driving gently to mid on, not quite off the middle of the bat, but safe enough. Van der Hochten has six. Salter has 77. You're listening to BBC Sport Online, live from the Riverside Grand Chester Le Street, where the possibility of a fourth day is remarkably maybe only about 10 minutes away. As that's all, oh, that's a good ball from Potts, angled in, and Hochton dealt with it well though. And there are three of his left on the board. So can Glamorgan take it into day four? Seemed unlikely. 18 deliveries of the scheduled day and rain to bowl the first six of those. Rain in the evening, sunshine, shadows casting, comes in the ball right arm over. Salter plays it back up towards the bowl as in no run. Durham dominating the morning session. Morgan took lunch at 145 for five shortly afterwards. It's 151 for six. Since then, just the one wicket fall and agonisingly Douthwaite out for 96 caught off Travaskis. Rain in to... Ooh, that, <laughs> that's a sharp one. A good take, actually, from Ned Eckersley. It was a bouncer. Batsman backed out the road. Eckersley saw it suddenly flying towards his chin, leapt up in the air and snatched at it one-handed. In his right hand, standing up to the stump, so he didn't have much time to see that one as the batsman backed away. Beautiful evening. Flag just fluttering very gently on the uh, pavilion. Flag on Lumley Castle is still. Rain looking to try and get rid of Salter. Salter plays this to mid wicket and they'll go for a quick single. Yeah, it was very definitely given to Salter. They obviously want to bowl at uh, Van der Hochten. And Salter is obviously not perturbed at that prospect. Rain running in from the Finkerland, he balls. Van der Hooten plays it up to Travaskis at mid off. It's a dot ball. Paul Coglan was in the gullies now. Where's he going? Coming into short. Mid wicket. Alex Lee's system. Where are you going? Why are you coming over where I am? Where's Lee's gonna go? Silly mid on. He wants two at short mid wicket. So Lee's and Coglin can more or less touch each other. Rain coming in the ball to Van der Hoogden. And it finds that area, but it just goes beyond Lee's to pot at mid on. Last ball of the over, then two to go. Rain up to the stumps. It's a widish ball. It's left alone. Two overs remaining. 327 for seven. Deficit 79. And Leicester's a wicket now. In the next over or so, I think that will be it for the day. We'll be back tomorrow.
Yeah, it's been uh, a fine funk pack for from Glamorgan. Not uh, likely to affect the result of the match, obviously, still, given the size of that first innings lead, 406 runs, but uh, at least they've made Durham work for the points. Oh, that's a fine delivery that cuts back and wraps Salter on the pads. No appeal. And they will uh, jog through for a leg by off the first ball of the over, which means that Potts has five to bowl at Van der Huchten. As the field converges. Potts bowls. Oh, that one kept a little bit low, and uh, Van der Hochten did well to dig it out, playing it to Rushworth at mid-on. No run. Ten balls potentially left of the day's play. And uh, we will be back just before 10.30 tomorrow morning here on BBC Sport Online. And as things are scheduled, I'll be talking to Dan Dowthwaite. I wonder what sort of mood he'll be in. Potts is into bowl. Van der Hochten clips it off his legs down towards backward square. They'll take a single. They'll settle for that as Travaskis is already in possession. Deters them from taking the second. Van der Hochten moves on to seven. So it'll on to 329 for seven. Might have to try and cheer Douthwaite up a bit. I suspect he'll be still gutted at uh, having passed up the chance for a first championship century. Potts into ball to Salter through lowish outside off stump. And uh, it is starting to keep a, a little bit lower. Late on this third day, four balls into what may be the last over of the day from the Lumley end. Unless Durham take a wicket. Entitled to ask for the last half hour, so we shall see in a few minutes' time. As Salter's I think then it hit on the pad. There's probably a bit of inside edge involved as well as the ball shoots out firmly on the leg side. Andrew Salter's pads have taken a bit of a battering in this uh, evening session, along with parts of his person. This is Potts' 27th over, 1 for 81, 6 maidens. Nobody's left the ground yet, so they all think... Durham may ask for the extra half hour. The light is good enough to do it. Mm. Sun's still shining brightly. Although we have got a few shadows. <coughs> Bot ball, Salter hooks and will get runs through mid wickets. Just dropping a little bit short there. Pots a rare errant delivery from the Durham attack and uh, Salter rocking back and smashing it through mid wicket for four. He moves to 82. 3-3-3 three, three, three for 7, triple Nelson. The deficit is 73, and there's one over left of the scheduled day's play. Will there be any discussion about dragging this on for another half hour? Well, there is. Scott Borthwick's having a chat with Ian Blackwell. What's he saying to him, though? I think the umpires are quite in mind to say well you don't look like you're going to get another wicket oh, the, <laughs> the conditions aren't helping you maybe you do need to come back tomorrow Liam Travaskis coming back into the attack the ball what could well be the final over of the day the over it's plus three well, four people have just got up out of their seats at the Northwest Terrace and seem to be heading for the exit, but in the sunshine of the County Durham stand on our right, and indeed the castle stand on the the river side of the ground, everybody's st sitting still. There's no movement in the pavilion bar one person either. Yeah, 
Mr. Ovaski's going to bowl here. What's happening? He's standing behind Ian Blackwell, the umpire. It's uh, more shin pads yeah. and protection and helmet for an extra close fielder. Is this a sign we are in the final over of the day then if they're just wasting a little bit of time no hurry to try and enforce the extra half hour Van der Hooten is on strike on 7 <coughs> and the other end Salter has 82 Dravaskis two slips and a short leg in place balls to Van der Hooten they've ended Five balls to go. And he comes and balls again, and this is played out to the covers. No run. Oh, I wonder where Mr. Bevan is. I wonder if you can quite believe what's happening here. My half two went well by the window, didn't it? <laughs> that looks like a really bad guess now. Travaskis bowls once again. This is turned to mid wicket. My only defence is I can say two things, and I did say pitches tend to flatten out here as they go on. They certainly have this season. Secondly, at lunch, I said, Will we still be here at tea? <laughs> Question mark ball this time played to the covers once again deficit 73 now Dramaskis to Van der Hooten balls and that's played back along the ground to him is this the last ball of the day? looks like it could well be Vasquez bowls, it's played back to him, it's a dot ball and everybody looks like they're walking off so that's it, we're back for a fourth day. David Benningham looks to the skies. He dropped a catch earlier in the day when uh, Carlson was on Carlson was on six, he only went again on to 14 but he was out there for quite a long time and uh, helped put a partnership together with Rutherford which dug in to time in the middle last thing Durham would have wondered at lunchtime today with uh, well just after lunch really not long after lunch at all Cook went there was still 255 behind then at 151 for 6 and then a partnership of 163 and 58 overs from Douthwaite who was on 96 when he skied one off Liam Travaskis and got himself caught out by Maddie Potts at uh, mid on Durham thought they might have a chance of just edging things at that point. There was 11 overs to go in the day, and it wasn't to be, so they come back tomorrow. Salter has been worth his weight in gold. He's faced 202 balls for his 82. But at 333 for 7, and a de deficit of 73, Glamorgan take this game into an unexpected fourth day. We will be back with you tomorrow at 10.15. It's going to be a lovely day for cricket. And for those who can turn up tomorrow on an expected extra day when perhaps they were thinking this would be their last in Chesty Street this summer. There we are. Glamorgan restore some of their battered pride. Durham victory is uh, by far the probable outcome tomorrow. But uh, Glamorgan at least taking it into a fourth day. And Douthwaite and Salter providing some individual and uh, team consolation for this uh, performance turning it around a, a little bit as on comes the uh, the coverings 333 for seven Glamorgan trail by 73 runs going into day four